Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Trademark. I am here commentating Old Smash Road number 38. We have a larger crowd today right now um, going into this stream. So during this uh, during this tournament, I will be actually mixing it up quite a bit. Since this is, after all, open mic, quote unquote mic, um, I'll be stepping off on and off commentary frequently, just to make sure that I give other up and coming commentators a chance to commentate. After all, everyone needs a chance. For now, though, it shall be me, the lovely trademark that you know and uh, know and love and appreciate and cherish and should donate $10 to you by a cash app. I'll send, I'll shout out my cash app later in the stream. However, getting, uh, getting into this uh, first map right now, we have, have Lots of yelling going on right now. It's not exactly my favorite thing in the world. Although, my, one of my favorite things in the world... Pink. I love pink. I have pink right now. On stream uh, right now. Can we have the bracket? Can we have um, the bracket? Give me one moment, stream. Who's playing right now? It's not full. Lots of people I don't recognize in bracket today. Yes, well we got some uh, out of counter testing. That's who it is. Okay. Can scoot up a little bit at least. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. Um, we're gonna see about trading off a bunch. Um, I might even go off just to one stream. 
make sure that everything's running smoothly. I love I love pain. It's so good. I always bring food to tournaments because I know for a fact that I'm going to need food. It's just a fact of life. I mean, we go. First game of the first two, one, go! Good and going into it. Oh no. This is, this is gonna be a very hard match for uh, for Peptic. I'm just gonna say PC. This is gonna be a very hard match for PC because Luigi loves to eat those heavy characters for breakfast with his grabbing combos. But at the exact same time, this Donkey Kong will be searching for grabs of their own. Am I a little slower than normal? Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. Okay. Uh, this is, this is the, uh, the right there. Yeah. Alright, so, uh, fixed it. Hopefully, I think it's like uh, Back into the match, though. Uh, looks like he's trying to get this go right now, trying to get the berry on against the lead. Good recovery, but not gonna do it for Oh, the spike. The spike, nice there out of DJ. You need to play very carefully, especially off stage with a Luigi. He can just throw out a lot of projectiles to keep off exactly. somebody with a pretty horrible vertical recovery on their hands, but. As long as he can uh, manage to get away from these grabs, oh, getting grabbed and getting comboed, he's gotta be careful. Definitely, that's something D-Gen's going to know real nicely here. He's just going to try and zone out with the plunger a little bit. Try to get the uh, down, the aerial down B into up smash. Not going to connect, though. Uh, Peptikaudi is kind of struggling to kill, even though Donkey Kong's super good at killing. D-Gen making back backstage. Bit. Oh, the coin! <laughs> oh, the coin give. Man, I miss those. Not the coin. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Look, we wow. Had, a lot of game. Yeah, we that... got a lot of game on it. Um, I'm just going to lead back to commentate. Back here is going to seal that stock for Pepsi Coyote. Uh, PC at 42% right now. It looks like he's got some work to do. You can already see DJ wanting to get that grab in, but PC sticking to the, the uh, sticking to the, uh, platform as quick as he can to avoid it. Yeah, but not doing too good of a job. Luigi just very slippery when it comes to his aerial frame data. And he's going to oh, get no. the upbeat punch, and that's going to put it away right then and there. Game one to DJ. Let's see here. I genuinely, like, with all the new players, I have no idea what's going to happen. This is actually going, yeah, this is going to be a very interesting stream. We have a lot of new players that I hadn't watched, let alone heard of. I'm... Yeah, um, uh, actually, in stream really quick, massive shout out to Abilene Christian University for sending out some Smash players this way. Um, really, really happy that we could get more people um, in this tournament. In chat, fill up 13 grands again. <laughs> and maybe we'll see the mix up. We're going to see a lot of new players from Abilene Christian. Very nice that we got some of their players out. I think we're going to see some very interesting matches on stream here. We could see some really interesting matches, new play styles that we don't even know how to commentate yet. And that's what I'm going to love. Like, Past couple weeks, we've had players like Kanan really catch my eye with his inkling that I hadn't really seen before, and I think we're going to be seeing that again with some of these other Christian players. A Bayonetta combo off of stream, but... There's a Bayonetta off stream that was making moves on a K-Rule. Oh, did, oh, did that Bayo make some moves? <laughs> what? Sweet Jesus. Classic Bayo combo. Yeah, we were going off. Yep, there's Z-Gen. Oh. 
Hello, DJ. Luigi. There's Go DJ back. Luigi coming right back. Donkey and of course the Donkey Kong. And Donkey Kong out of PC. Not stairwell. <laughs> Consider this space wallers is a bit wary. We are on into game two. <laughs> Here we go. Into game two. Looks like we're already seeing combos coming up from D Gen, but PC looking to avoid them as best as they can. Trying to play the ledge a little bit. That might backfire though. The plunger and fireball will be really bad against Donkey Kong's huge hitboxes. That is going to be dangerous, but at the same time, I think PC is going to rely a lot on his cargo throw being able to just dominate the stage here. Order spike. Order spike out of PC. Uh, yeah, I think he's going to try his best here to just try and give DJN limited space to work with. It is going to be a risky strategy, but from what we've seen right now, we have a bit of an even match. It could pay off. It very well could pay off. Oh, there's the down, uh, the slap, slap, clap. Not going to get it, though. Uh, DJN looks like he's coming around trying to get this kill. Fully charged uh, uh, big punch on DC right or PC right now. What's he going to do with it? And we'll see what he does. Almost oh, got it off, but he's going to get the whiff, and the dash attack is going to take. Really unfortunate. PC's first stop. Very unfortunate, but DGen at a very solid kill percent. I'm going to have to step off the mic. Stairwell stepping off the mic. Trademark staying on. Uh, good. Everyone in chat wish good luck to Stairwell uh, going into tournament. <laughs> That's not the spirit. Back into the match. Here we go. Uh, looks like DGen and uh, PC are just swinging around at each other, trying to get the lead. Uh, they're really just trading super hard. You. Uh... Ooh, up at the ledge. Also, co-commentator, please introduce yourself. No. Okay, don't introduce yourself. That's fine. Free country. <laughs> Back to the match, though. You already know who it is. Ooh, there's a side beat. <laughs> yeah, chat already knew. <laughs> Oh, and the up is going to get that stock. Uh, pretty good reversal from what we saw in last game. I think uh, PC had to adapt their controls a little bit just to make sure that they were getting it right. Um, whereas DGen had it completely right. Very even game here. Oh, this could be a turning point though. No, not going to extend too much off of the grab. I think uh, Pet the Coyote. Oh, oh no! A raw, a read. And that's going to do it. Uh, this so game goes to D -Gen. for D -Gen. Good lord. Luigi Uppy is just so vicious. It can kill you like 80, depending on the character. Not even 80, it can kill you like 60. Yeah, dying, dying to a Luigi Uppy at 40, honestly, is not a surprise. Uh, we got Pepsi Planet and Alagiri on screen. You know, if I had a nickel for every player at this tournament with Pepsi in their name, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's kind of weird that it happened twice. <laughs> so anyways, here we go. Here comes Pepsi Planet versus Alagiri. Live and on screen. I was just pointing out that there are two players at this tournament with Pepsi in their name. Three? There's three players according to my according to um one of the organizers here. Three players. I didn't manage to um I didn't manage to get a look at the bracket. Uh, before I settled into commentary, so I couldn't exactly tell who was what. But we have three Pepsi players. Oh, hey, Tyler. How's it going? Thank you for explaining me that. Otherwise, I would have never guessed. Okay, so we have Saint Pepsi, Miss Pepsi, and Pepsi Planet. What ha How did you get grounded for two weeks? What did you? Or how did you get grounded? What did you do? 
Oh, bad grades, yeah. See, in college, you don't get grounded for bad grades. You just get deeper in debt because you have to retake the class. <laughs> um, but my grades, as far as I'm aware, are impeccable. I hope. Because I'm graduating next semester and I really need to pass everything. Otherwise, I'm here for another... Yeah, I know. Imagine being an adult. It's complete cringe. Complete and utter cringe to be an adult. We got full bloom on uh, set up next to me. Just doing doing their thing, singing their song. <laughs> Pepsi Planet PP. Who's Pepsi Planet play? Ken. Fascinating. Pepsi Planet the Ken. Hmm. And Allegheny the Violet. Well, this will be my first time seeing Pepsi Planet, and I believe my first time seeing. Alagiri. Yes, I do hope that we see an excellent Ken on screen because good Shoto fighters are always so good to see. Uh, looks like Alagiri already using um, Byla's spacing to their advantage. Uh, Ken will struggle to get in versus the big long sword uh, against Alagiri's Byla. We can already see that Pepsi, uh, Pepsi Planet wants to get right all the way up into into uh, Byla's face, spiking on stage. Not gonna get the, not gonna get the down air. I do believe that Ken wants to get all the way in up into her face. Oh jeez! Up tilt into up, he's gonna kill. It seems like Alagiri's not gonna let it bother him whatsoever. Although this Ken really is struggling to get in against the sword. You can see Alagiri playing very slippery right now, missing that uh, combo, but getting the back air. Not gonna get the neutral beat either. This Ken looks like that. They realize they're in advantage. All they need to do is stick and move. There's no real reason to go in as hard as they need to. Jumping over the neutral beat and getting out of the side beat. Forward throw off stage. It looks like Pepsi Planet just trying to stick back and relax. Not really overcommit to anything right now because they know that overcommitting on Violet could be death. Air dodging to get out of the hairy situation. Ooh, charging it out smash and the down beat. Ooh, up tilt into up. Uh, up he's gonna take it. Pepsi Planet with a commanding lead over Alagiri right now. Oh, when that up beat. Oh, it's not gonna do it just yet. 172.2% on this Ken. We haven't seen a lot of combos coming up from <clears throat> combos coming out from Pepsi Planet, but we have been seeing lots of just good, solid stick and move gameplay, which is really good to use against Violet because you want to get break their zone and then get out of it and not let them even get near you. Alagiri's Violet really struggling to get the kill right now, attacking dangerously on shield instead of using other options to get out of there. Up throw is not going to... I think that's the first time I've ever seen a Violet up throw. 198% on Pepsi... No way. <laughs> I did not think that would kill. Wasn't he, wasn't he at like 70? Yeah, was after some practice. Goodness. Ken is just absolutely bonkers. But there we go. Uh, first game goes to Pepsi Planet. Alagiri right now looking to get um, get a good comeback in. And Full Bloom off stream right now is playing versus a game watch actually with the Jigglypuff. Two very light characters going around. I'm gonna take a cane spray, I'll be right back. Alagiri switching up their uh, game plan right now, going with Roy to try and fight fire with fire. As we know, Roy very fiery and very fiery. Let's see how this will trade off. Oh, you're already using a super armor to get out of that move. Looks like Pepsi Planet may be struggling a little bit up against a sortie that involves being as close as he is. It is, after all, very difficult to get a... Ooh, the greed coming up from Alagiri. Only 18% on, on Alagiri right now. Pepsi Planet really struggling to get in versus this Roy. Using the rising uh, side beat. 
using the rising side B to get back up on stage. Ooh, dangerous counter, not gonna uh, reap any rewards. Looks like Pepsi Planet's just relaxing, trying to find their way in. Although they know they can't go in super hard, otherwise they'll eat the sword. And the sword is strongest when you're right next to Roy. Going back in, trying to find their trying to find their killing move right now, Alagiri. Looks like they're really struggling to get this kill. Up air, or up up tilt into uh side B, not gonna get the kill yet. Alright, Alagiri is a kill percent. Pepsi Planet a kill percent. Managing to get back to the ledge. Both of them looking for that one last hit that they need to get the kill. Back throw's not gonna do it though. Ooh, getting the air dodge in back with another back throw, throwing him and keeping him off stage, trying to exploit him at the ledge. Not gonna get it though. Alagiri safely back in center stage, but the up B out of shield is gonna do it. First stock goes to Pepsi Planet. Oh, but firing right back with Alagiri. Alagiri throwing out a dash attack and getting that kill on Pepsi Planet. Looks like uh, Pepsi Planet is really struggling to get in right now versus this Roy. They know that the stick and move strategy won't work because the closer they get, the harder that the Roy can stick the moves to them. Pepsi Planet just trying to bounce around, use the platform to force him into unsafe options. Not gonna work though. It seems like he has a lot of he doesn't have a lot of experience fighting versus Roy's. Counter not gonna pay off any rewards, 78%. Basically, oh, 99%, he is at kill confirm range right now. It seems like Alligator, oh no, but the up a little premature, it's gonna get uh, Pepsi, Planet, Pepsi Planet that last stop. Alligator looking for the beefy F smash to try and get the kill instantly. Not gonna get it though. It looks like Pepsi Planet trying to stick to some good stick and move strategies. Trying to get it in and get it, uh, stick it to Alligator. Down smash is not gonna work. Forward air into up B. Getting lots of good damage right now. Pepsi Planet just a little bit away from kill, com kill confirm percent with Roy. Although Alagiri right now is one strong hit away from kill confirm percent as well. Up at Smash is not going to take it. 112 on them. Next move is definitely going to get it though. Back throw to send him off stage. Throwing out uh, Hadoukens. Try and get try and get him in an unsafe position. That up B out of shield is not going to get it again. Alagiri trying to throw out the up B to get out of any combat situation. Oh, but the forward tilt on the platform is going to take that stock. Alagiri, 91 versus Pepsi Planet, 0. Alagiri has to play incredibly safe right now or make some extremely bold moves to get up off stage. Oh, Uppy got it. Uppy's not going to get it. Oh, but that up tilt into Uppy is going to get it. 2-0. Pepsi Planet versus Alagiri. Ken versus Violet slash Roy. I knew I'd win. Ha!
All right, I'm back. I had to take a Kane's break and they reassure that reassure Scotty the stream is okay. City song even on the stage like There we go. Hollow back. Much better. And we are playing with Hazard's on, so you will see the stage shift like we did in the last match. Oh, hang on, I gotta. Bass's Rob, Pink Rob, the best Rob. Hello, Stairwell. Hello, we're back on stream. We have Tobo and Little Go. Seabass on stream. Um, Tobo being an ACU representative, and Little Seabass, a uh, bit of an old name here, actually. Yeah, um, although this Rob is new, I don't know. Well, I don't remember seeing their Rob, but I have been asking a little bit. He used to play, I believe, Peach and Daisy, and now he's recently picked up Rob, which has seen a lot of uh, success for him. He won an offline tournament at one point this week. Well, genuinely, Rob is one of the best characters in the game. Probably top five. There is also that, but <laughs> regardless, he is here on stream and actually having a little bit of trouble in the early going, but it looks like he's getting a bit of momentum back. His cheek is being very slippery with his combo game. Looks like Tobo was trying to rely on some up-air juggles, but Will Seabass got out of it thanks to the platform. Good use of the stage by Will Seabass. Both of them just Kind of exchanging exchanges here. That is a weird sound. <laughs> it's totally fine. It's exactly what's happening. Since they're since they don't know each other's play style and possibly don't know, ooh, Diamond Cutter's gonna get that stock. But like I was saying, since they don't know each other's play style and perhaps even the other's character, it's just gonna be stick and move until they figure out what works. Definitely, they're gonna do a lot of feeling each other out here in this first game. Right now, it's over getting a little bit of momentum, but Lil C Bass just trying to put that stock away while he's still can't hurt his match. Lil C Bass is absolutely not a slouch when it comes to um, versus any kind of uh, any kind of Rob. It appears like, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I think I'm crying my throat. Are excused. <coughs> In the meantime, Lil Seabass getting a lot of exchanges trying to get Tobo off stage, not really being able to capitalize off of him. Good situational awareness by Tobo right now. It was a cry. I apologize for you. Here we go. Looks like Lil Seabass trying to get this kill right now, despite despite the fact that Rob has one of the best kill confirms in the game, down throw into up smash. It does seem like Lil Seabass is struggling to get this kill versus a sheep. Tobo is being incredibly slippery right now, knowing that they have to mind their distance and watch out for grabs on grabs out of shield. Definitely, old C Bass trying to throw out some confirms while Tobo is off stage. But right now, he's struggling a little bit to land them. He's going to need to get this kill soon if he wants to try and keep his momentum going towards favor. And he's not going to get that. Tobo's going to take Lil C Bass to second stock here. Tobo really looking good right now with that diamond cutter. Oh, that should be it. Yep, that's gonna be it. But that um that falling up air into diamond cutter uh, 
up smash was really clean, I will admit. Little Seabass looks like he's got quite a hill to fight, um, fight his way up against. Definitely, but Little Seabass can definitely do it with his mob. A lot of these mobs are versatile to try and keep Togo at bay, but right now, not exactly getting the most of it. It looks like Little Seabass really needs to work on the Sheik matchup experience. Trying to get the spike, trying to wild out on him, but couldn't quite like, get it. Tobo trying to get him all the way up in the air, but Lil Seabass managing to make it down safely. Yeah, I'm not sure if that spike was so much wild now, it's just desperation. He wants to put this kill away fast. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, good drag down up air coming up from Tobo. It seems like Tobo's really been mastering this Sheik right now, trying for the style. I respect it. I respected that attempt. Oh yes, Tobo not afraid to go off stage, try something on Lil Seabass here, but the up air is actually going to do it, and Tobo's going to take game one here. Part of this mouse, so I'm gonna have to get up and do it every time. That's annoying. That's okay though. Uh, Steph wants to money match Abilene peeps. Let's show up. Oh, someone did disconnect the pro controller. Ah, wait. Well, we know exactly who it is. Uh, the last people who played on the stream, it's either. Um, Pepsi Perfect or Caligari. There it is. Okay, finally. I think. Wait. Yep, someone. Okay, yeah, they're just they're gonna have to do it the old-fashioned way just to make sure. GameCube controllers are better. <laughs> well, they are good, I will admit, but it, for me, I just I prefer the I prefer the Pro Controller because I get more options out of it. That's um, fair. For me, at least. Um, looking for a new one uh, in between controllers right now, but that's fine. I get to commentate any game. That's fair. I just like not having to be the one to have to disconnect my Pro Controller. <laughs> it stays in my bag. It is wired. It is analog. It feels great, and I love it. And but the future is now. The future is now, but you know what else is now is game two in this winter round two set. <laughs> Excellent segue. 10 out of 10 segue. Anyway. I am so good at this. This is not the same sterile from three weeks ago. Uh, Tobo a little behind in terms of stock. Not stock, percent. Maybe it is the same sterile. <laughs> Regardless though, it looks like Tobo will be struggling a little bit versus all these reaching out platforms. Trying to get the early kill. Not going to get it though. Little Seabass trying to throw out aerials and projectiles to get back to stage safely. Not sure if he's going to make it though. He's really struggling versus Tobo on the ledge. He really is though. Little Seabass just trying to throw out a lot of defensive options in order even so much as get back. And he's, he's, trying, he's working with limited space here against Tobo. Very good aggression out of him. Oh no, is that going to do it? That's going to do it. Unfortunate air dodge. I bet you anything he thought Tobo was going to throw out a fair on stage and trying to get the tech. But unfortunately he died because of it. Oh, it's what we like to call oh, no. your friends. So a little bit of a chain of forward airs, and he's going to answer back with a bouncing, I don't know, bouncing Sheik's, fish. Bouncing, I don't know if Sheik's move set. We never see a Sheik on stream. Well, I think there's only one in the scene, and that's Steph, wherever Steph may be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really do appreciate uh, a Sheik, though. Sheik's are really good to see. Ooh, jab lock into drag down, upper to. Oh my god. Tobo! <laughs> Good lord, man, calm down, you're going off. Tobo really tight with his combo game in these matches here. Little Seabass having a little bit of trouble trying to adapt to it, but doing the best he can. Tobo being so incredibly oppressive with his Sheik right now. This Sheik honestly reminds me a lot of um, of another player in the scene, Shigura. It reminds me of Shigura's prom because you just got left thinking, what is there to do? I can do literally nothing versus this Sheik reverses his prom, and we're seeing that right now with Tobo. You can do literally nothing against him. But definitely, Tobo's just taking advantage of Sheik's speed, just being on you all the time, putting you in a state of helplessness, but Lil Seabass doing an okay job of adapting, especially in the second game. We have a bit of an even stock here, but uh, Lil Seabass just one solid hitter confirm away from being on his last line. Ooh, and that side is gonna do it off stage. Grenade off stage, a very good tool that Sheik has. We got a lot of range and a lot of adaptability to different recoveries. It looks like Lil Seabass is just trying to throw out moves and get a kill right now. Air dodging unsafely, Tobo's gonna get a combo out of that. And that's probably one of Lil Seabass' best options here. Rob has 
not the best frame data when it comes to his aerials, but they're just really huge hitboxes, especially Nair is one of Rob's best approach options. Just trying to take advantage of that in order to get some stage control off the Tobo here. 100%. Oh, and Ooh. the spike! Lil Seabass sending a message saying, I'm down, but I am not out. Not at all. Yes, there it is. That's the spike Lil Seabass was looking for in the first match, and that's really going to help him here if he wants to try and take game two off the Tobo here. He's got to really work around uh, Tobo Sheik and knowledge with his character. There it goes again. Trying to get the bouncing fish, but air dodging out of it. Will Seabass trying to get this kill right now. Throwing out everything they possibly can to get it. Oh, Tobo, is that going to do it? Not going to do it. Just the back air instead of the up air. Not yet, but Little Seabass is still on the outs on the stage. And we've seen how Tobo has been able to edge guard is just that gonna like do that. Is that going to do it? Not yet. Oh, oh my God. that'll do it. Almost having it, but Tobo answering right back with a bouncing fish, and Tobo will take the set 2-0. to zero. Good lord, Tobo is popping off. There are some clippable moments in there, like, honestly. Very much so, and that's what we were talking about. We're going to see a lot of new talent from ACU that we may not have seen before on these old Smash Road streams. Trademark has stepped off the mic momentarily. Another Pepsi tag. We have two Pepsi's on screen. Pepsi man. Somebody missed an opportunity. Uh, Halloween was last week. I will have to step off the mic. Uh, chat, please wish Sarewell luck in their up and coming set. Good luck, Sarewell. I might not actually get green this time. We'll see. Yeah, we're on stream. Well, no, I'm on stream. I'm on commentary. New commentator coming to the mic. Please introduce yourself. Tell us, uh, tell us what your tag is. Hi, my name is Shigura. I am a player. The, le the legendary Shigura commentary. I'm yes. a player. I just do stuff. Shigura is in fact a player. And here comes Atsy. Haven't seen Atsy around here in yeah a like, while. <laughs> no, I mean pretty much every a whole lot of people from uh, Adelaide, specifically from ACU, have just been coming up. I mean we just saw earlier Tobo. Uh, beating Lil Seabass. Really, really impressive. Tobo was going off with that sheet. When when you review the VOD, you have to watch that match. That final stock was honestly really fun. It was really, really cool. Now, uh, I will admit, I am not sure about this match. Yeah. <laughs> the commentator, you do uh... Trademark stepping off mic. Alright. <laughs> All right, we got a new duel on stream right now. Let's go, let's go, let's nationwide go. Sh Shigura. The ultimate duo. All right, let's I, go. Loki, I actually did want to commentate this one with you, just because like, St. Pepsi's new to us, right? New player, kind of been taking names. He's beating, let's see. He's beating Chino. He's beating Chino. Um, He's beating me. Uh, I went Ike, but he beat me. That's why I have a mic game, like all the way up here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. okay, cool. <laughs> That's fine. Also, you can move back. Oh, bet, bet. Nice. Uh, now let's see. He, he's taken some notable names. He's uh, gotten a couple second places here. So he, he's moving. He is moving. But then his oh, opponent is Atsy, you know. We, we all know the trademark that he is. The green mark, the shield break master. Yeah. Let's see if maybe we can see some clips of that on in this match. A lot of people, you know, it's been said time and time again, but a lot of people think Atsy would be undoubtedly West Texas PR if he just changed his ways of wanting the shield break. I know, right? All right but St. Pepsi getting the grab right off the go. Oh, my. And 84% already. This uh, what, 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 you being the sorty kind of expert here in Love It, how do you feel sorties versus Steve? Uh, I think they all do fairly well versus Steve, um, but it can be just a little hard because you have to be really good with your spacing because if you just miss space a tiny bit and just get hit by that up tilt, you know, you're going to get punished super hard as Atsy did right here. Um, specifically in Marth, I, I'm not entirely sure how I'm like, watching this, you know, versus uh, <laughs> Steve after we just see that stop because... Uh, you know, they're a little more floaty. I would assume maybe it's a little hard for Steve to kind of catch up. But 
on the, on the contrary, I think because they're floaty, but who knows, I, I think it's easier to catch them jumping with Steve's like obnoxious up to But Oh, and Ooh, here's the there first you go. shield break. Congratulations, St. Pepsi, going on Atsy's shield break list. <laughs> Atsy has already won and you don't even know it. Yeah, pretty much. It wouldn't even matter if he lost this game right now. But we're, we're back here. Oh, oh, okay. Catching a lot of his jumps. Uh, just noticing that they have oh. that as he seems to have. Mm. You know, he's gone for that setup so many times against me, and I've always wondered, what are you doing? And we finally see it at work. I think that's the first time, personally, I've seen that setup work. And it was beautiful. I didn't know you could do it. Yeah. It's, um, you would require a little more timing. Like, the person getting ledge trapped would be just a little more, like, you have to time your get up. Uh, otherwise, you know, you won't get hit, and Steve is the only one that gets damaged afterwards, so... Um, but still really good by St. Pepsi to get that timing out. And just reacting to Atsy's uh, jump uh, neutral D. St. Pepsi doing a good job at just... Mind like, Atsy's not really pressuring him, so he's giving him free range to mind and get these materials that he needs. That, situation. that is, like, so Atsy on him. And a tip of really? Ab Smash. Yeah, Evening it up. 69 is pretty pretty even, especially since he doesn't have diamond. Once we see that diamond, I think that's when stuff is going to start to get a little more scary. And he hasn't even gotten an opportunity to find that. Like, he's only just been getting higher in him. Did he get a gold? Yeah, he, he just got it. Uh, yeah, I think, I think he just cashed it in. No, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Oh, he did not. Oh, no. Almost got that spike board there. Oh, he, he is at shield break range. I was about to say, <laughs> as soon as that F-Tilt connected. This is really scary. This oh, is that was such a good counter coming out from Etsy. And now the percents are virtually even. All Etsy needs is a tipper or a shield break. And... Oh, missing that punish. Yeah, St. Pepsi really needs to just kind of just stay back. Just continue mining until you get that diamond. Then the tide would just be in his favor. Yeah, he's kind of wanting to play it in this corner, which is a little weird, since, you know, Steve is known for backing up and that. Uh, oh, oh, this should be a three. Yeah. Almost, almost lift that, actually, but that was really good. That just put up a lot of pressure for Atsy. You just got the impression of, like, what what can I do? What What is there to do? I think the play, honestly, there was to get up attack the, the TNT. By him get up attacking, the, the little button is no longer there. And now the TNT is a little bit in the middle. But maybe Atsy a little unfamiliar with that setup. I know I myself, the first time going up against it, I was like, this is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a very terrifying move. It's a lot, just so many setups that Steve can pull up. I mean, you've seen it on Twitter. It's just <laughs> a lot of variety, a lot of creativity. Yeah. All right. Um, did you see what Stacia just put? I did Right, gotta gotta have that fire emblem music. Okay, they're going back to small battlefield. Why do you think uh, he chose to just stay? Those platforms are kind of low, so Steve is on one of those. That new kind of buff up tilt. Maybe he's looking for a kill like that, but honestly, isn't this one of Steve's best stages, especially with that little tech where they could just drop down? I would assume so. And just like the platforms, at least compared to PS2, are actually slightly lower, so. Uh, Steve wouldn't have like much of an issue to just get on there and get some platform pressure going on. Yeah. So, but Etsy, Etsy showing, hey, I'm confident. Yeah, you may have won the first game, but I was there. It was not the stage, it was me. Yeah. Almost getting that tipper down there. If he got that, that would have been death. I like the way Etsy, like, she'll break aside. I like the way Etsy approaches with this. Yeah, it's uh, like not even counting just for a shield break here, right? It's uh, it's just grinding. And if you if you do get that tipper uh, neutral beam, that does a ton of damage. And okay. it man it managed to evade the ledge trap situation, so that's a that's a win. A little too desperate for that neutral beam. Same FC one and I think uh, get that little stage spike off of the block. Yeah. Uh, you have no idea how annoying that, uh, that <laughs> setup is. It's like even if you feel like you tech it, it's like, oh, we're dead. <laughs> oh, almost timing it correctly. I, I used the hubby, I think, expecting the Steve to dash attack or yeah. any sort of first up, but dies. Yeah, that is a really bad angle for almost really any. Uh, that's what makes like the Steve board throw is definitely good. Let's see. 
more damage, more damage. Let's see. Up D, almost Fantastic the kill. DI from Sigma. He was on the bus. I have yeah. no idea how he did it. Uh, how did... Huh? Same Pepsi. Same Pepsi. <laughs> oh and no, that's the a setup. <laughs> he is showing his cards today saying, hey, I got this. Yeah, <laughs> I got this. And right now we're in a situation where Anthony has to make a stock comeback, but he has diamond. He has diamond. This could be really, really bad. It's like your your instinct is that, you, oh, I gotta kill him right now so that he doesn't get diamond, but... He had the shield break. He had it. It's just a little misspaced. Would have been some really good uh, usage of the uh, crafting block. That's him doing a good job of stuffing him out, kind of getting hit by that side B now. But if he manages to stay in his stock, he'll be at the exact same spot he was last time. Let's see, let's see. It's like, what is that? Oh. That's actually another funny stuff that Steve can do. But this, this is probably just a me message from St. Pepsi saying, like, hey, I'm in your head. I can do whatever I want. I can do wh any kind of setup. Wouldn't even matter if it makes sense or not. And we evening got, it up. Evening uh, it up, right there. Oh, go ahead. Oh. The comeback is still very much possible. He just, like, just a couple conversions with Tipper, and maybe, heck, even a good Tipper F smash. And that would be game. It's gonna be really hard when St. Pepsi is just spacing himself out of that range and yeah. the card ending and that that card is a menace. It but was. it's been a joy commentating with for a set. Probably we'll be back, but we maybe, both maybe. have to play our individual sets. So trademark will be back at the mic. See you on the uh, little Steph and Tyler in the chat. <laughs> Yo, Steve a little dumb. <laughs> yeah, they were rooting for you. Um, and Steve was, yes, Steve was in fact a little dumb. Um, also, on mic, uh, back on mic is trademark, but new commentator, um, St. Pepsi, feel free to introduce yourself however you like. <coughs> so, um, the gain is super high on the mic, so you don't have to speak that way. Okay, last time it was super uh, low gain. Though. Yeah, we fixed it. So, uh, yeah, I was the guy that was last. I placed the <laughs> That's about it. Tyler says, hey. Hey, Tyler. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. Hero versus Roy. Three, Beastly two, versus Shigeru. One, Beastly, go. probably the king of, uh, maybe not the king of spaghetti, but perhaps the prince of spaghetti. Um, Who's the king? Uh, stairwell. Stairwell, okay. They play Pac-Man. <laughs> oh, right. <of> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, something about like that. This is like gambling. Yeah. That always bothers me about Hero, that anytime you go wrong for you, 
it's not your, really your fault. But I guess it's like. Also, uh, me and Shigeru are both big shots. Yeah, it's big shots. I mean, you both are. Uh, first, uh, first stock getting going to Shigeru. Beastly trying to make up right now. I think right now Beastly really should focus on just sitting back and letting their spells do the work. Like, you can be side B and you can pick uh, spells from down B. Well, the thing about that is that Hero, um, he's a resource based character and, you know, he drains that mana fast. And if he's not getting hits, camping, he can only camp for so long. He needs to get those hits in so he has plenty of resources. That's true. So it's like a... He's very anti That's why he's often used by top players like to counterpick. Uh, the projectiles are just so strong, but they're not really coming into play here. It seems like he doesn't have enough time to... You know, even get, he's getting completely overwhelmed by Shiro's boy. Uh, Beastly, if you get... Actually, wait, Beastly is isn't watching this. Oh. Beastly, if you ever get on stream again, and if you land a whack or a whack and it kills on stream, I will cash out you five dollars. That's bad. It has to be on stream, though. I think he needs a little bit more than a... More than what, five dollars? More than one of those kill combos. Still got all three of your stocks to deal with. Oh, now I spoke too soon. He got, um, he got the up tilt to get um, Shigeru's last stock. Oh, Shigeru jabbing on shield is oh. so scary. That every time I see him jabbing on shield, I get so terrified because you know that he's going to set something up out of that. Yeah, Roy's terrifying. Uh, and he has constantly him at ledge, and that's a big problem. Because Roy is uh, a young lion. He's a monster. He's got one of the best uh, corner pressure games in the game. Yeah. And uh, like next to like... Oh, okay. oh, Jair's gonna do it. Uh, and also, Shigura, again, knowing every single possible option for um, every single possible possible option for Roy at the ledge. Shigura just at the ledge. Shigura is probably one of the scariest players in the scene. I don't know when you're playing Roy and he's jabbing your shield. It's a very scary thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there's not much you can do. It's pretty, pretty safe. Yeah, I mean you. You get jab on shield, what do you do? You drop it, you get the next jab. You jump, you still get the jab. You gotta time it so the next jab doesn't come out in time. I'm not quite sure. I just sort of mash on him, but whatever. We can talk to Shigura after this son. Uh, see what viable options there are. Uh, actually. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh. Shigeru has already opened up a, a huge lead. He's already taken the stock. That's it. Commentating matches is always just so incredibly hard, especially commentating Shigeru's Chroma Roy, because everything happens at light speed. I mean, you want to talk about the combo he did? He's already got the stock. You have to react accordingly. Um, nice parry from Beast to get out of the Definitely uh, didn't overextend there. Oh. Some players, when they get married, they get excited to go for a some kind of oh, speaker. So. He really tried for it. Um, although he does have a solo auto on. Oh, leaving right in that smash. Unfortunate. This is not going well for Beastly. Really unfortunate coming up from Beastly. Shigura just kind of fighting out right now, um, doing what they do best, just throwing out their combos. Back here, sending him in such a weird right. angle, and the Kaboom guys together. I fucking hate that. Uh, anyway, uh. Four draw of ledge. Oh. Getting with the neutral beam. Oh, tried to get the dunk. Oh, okay. yeah, he definitely missed his double jump there, or he missed a jump and then down there, but he just. What a shame. But I don't think it's gonna. Uh, Shigeru's gonna let him, let it get him down in any way, shape, or form. Although Beastly right now could just hail Mary. Okay, yeah, he's got. Oh well, yeah, right now he's got good on mana. It's not that big of a de deficit. He can totally just pull out like a. No, no, no. Oh, no! Oh, he thought, I mean, he thought it was. He was going for a zoom, but unfortunately he couldn't get it. That's 2 0 to Shigura from Beastly. Not an option. Definitely no trouble there from Shigura. Close enough, Beastly. And I love this real set. God dang it. I'm waiting for it. You have to use pressure. Yeah, Shigura, Shigura's Roy and Krom, like. Literally, what you do. That's literally how it feels when you I play. Like jab actually works better than I thought it would. Might yeah. try that more. Who goes to you? Check her out. 
Oh, oh shit. Sheik is back on. <laughs> Everyone is so excited for Sheik. It will have been momentarily sterile on the mic. Not with trademark. I'm going to be running the, I'm going to be running this. I was supposed to let the new commentators take the and stuff. Same like you can say. Okay, cool. Maybe I should do that too. I'll stay till my next match. That's pretty much what I'm doing. I'm in losers and I already know I'm against Super so I'm just waiting for the net belt. I have no idea. <laughs> oh god. Well, well, one on stream, uh, uh, yeah, if you want to go on stream, I'll kind of just find out. Okay. Like a black one, black, 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 if it's going to just, uh, Oh, I'm not gonna... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think Nation Wide is not going to be guys running this. Uh, that was good. Stop battle! Is this slot? Slot. Yeah, slot. I don't know how to watch this slot, but it's always just the end. I don't mind playing games. I have a, I think I have a four one set. Anyway, Sly versus Tobo, um, Terry versus Sheik. This Sheik, uh, or Tobo, has shown a complete and utter mastery of Sheik's text, whereas Sly has a complete and utter mastery of Terry's text. So this is the ma the master versus the master. We're gonna have to see who's basically who's gonna get the first hit. I think the first that, hit's gonna decide. I think you just mean that these are both high level players. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, I okay, I have an insight on this. I uh, I made sheep the majority of this game's lifetime. So uh, yeah, so I can criticize all of this actually. But he's just doing a pretty good job. Uh, there it is, converting into the up airs. That's very important. Juggle situations are great for Sheik because so fast, really hard, and for up air, seriously, top three up air in the game, so underrated. Um, it's one of the best, uh, it's definitely the best drill up air, and, I mean, yeah, and those are one of the best types of up airs in the game, so. Exactly. Uh, okay. I was not ready for that uh, up That is, that up you gotta watch out for that, that is a spot dodge that kills. <laughs> a spot dodge that kills, nice. Uh, Tobo. Uh, coming in strong right now, getting a good percent lead on Sly. Sly really struggling. Oh, oh but the, the up air did like diamond that. cutter. Nice struggle. Nice try. Yeah. That's gonna take the first stock. Uh, Sly looks like they might be struggling a little bit against Tobo. Although a Terry like this really shouldn't struggle against a Sheik because they can get so many ridiculous kills due to the lightness. So go. As I say that, 45, 54 for 66 nice, nice. percent. Good lord. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Trade didn't even work out. Day, <laughs> that, was so, that, was, that was so funny. <laughs> so, this is a pretty good matchup for Sheik, I would say. Uh, mind you, make sure to keep her distance from Terry. Terry is a menace up close. So, make sure to use the needles. He's, he's doing a great job. Like, perfect spacing on him. He doesn't miss him. Oh my god, the drag down combo is so good. So good. So good. Getting that bouncing fish, avoiding the. Um, Avoiding the go meter on Terry. Uh, Terry firing back with a quick succession of uh, jab, jab, and power drunk. Oh, shit. Cheeks combos are always so tight, so I can't blame anyone for doing that. I know. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, Sheik is a probably a, oh, I have a Sheik expert here. Sheik, incredibly uh, technical character. Yes, very yes. technical. A lot of practice goes into this kind of combo game. Uh, for sure, because. How ultimate switched over from Smash 4 when knows how monster she was in Smash 4. Uh, this game has less hits done, but still better combos because everyone is there. Has like auto L cancels on all their moves so fast. All the moves are so fast. Which means you just have to do things that much quicker. Okay? You have like no time to do things. No time to think. Everything is instinct. With Sheik. All by you. So I think what I think what you're saying is um, when you work Sheik, you have to practice until you get muscle memory, because otherwise you're not gonna be able to get combos on the fly. Right. You, you can't make them up as you go. Well, actually you do, but it's just like what your fingers do. You can't think of that. Yeah, exactly. You just have to let kind of go on autopilot. Great ledge trap. This is a uh, really scary. Thing. This is very scary for Terry, but oh, right. unfortunate. It can slip right past the ledge. I think that one to Tobo. He, he, um, that was supposed to be the heavy. Yeah, that was definitely light. 
They didn't go anywhere. He might have been going for uh, uh, the charge version, the invincible version, so. He thought he had it, he didn't charge long enough for it. Messed up the input. But uh, pretty, uh, pretty clean by Tobo. Um, definitely doing a great job making Terry a pro. Uh, when Terry has good pro, he's out of shape. Terry! That's kind of what he does. Well, it's difficult. It's difficult to get in, especially with such a good projectile as needles. You can just throw it out there and get their approach off. Three, two, be taken out. One, but going to FD go. now, no oh. platforms whatsoever. This may be a mistake by Sly. She loves FD. But needles is going to be such a problem here. While well, at the same time, Sly does love um, FD with the Terry. There's no um, platforms for Sheik or anyone else for that matter, to get him up onto you and have to struggle with uh, Ariel. Oh, looks like it's working so far. Oh, combos. Nice job staying safe after you drop in a combo. That's a big problem I had. Get a big combo and then just get hit after it. Whenever you're shooting, you going to So it all adds up. Trades are not good. The worst character to trade. I mean, I would assume, because she so very light, especially, um, it doesn't matter if you get a combo for six, for like 20%, if the second you get out of it, you get hit for 25. It's, you're always going to be at a deficit, so I will agree that Tobo is incredibly good at staying safe out of whatever combo they throw as Sly. Nice job using the frame uh, speed jab. Okay. Also, good read on the uh, uh, recovery. The uh, grenade was actually very good for that because you can stall with it just long enough to get him right at the explosion. Oh, but the power dunk. Oh, it's not going to do it, though. Good DI coming out from Tobo. All right, that's very important there. Every time he gets knocked off, he gets a free charge. Terry, I mean, I bet he's good at edge guarding, but it's hard to get Exactly, and you have such strong hits coming out. Like, you get the Bouncing Fish, which is super strong. You can throw out aerials with very little lag, which will get him. I mean, it's like our Sheik's difficult. It's, it's hard to pin down the Sheik. She's good on ledge, she's good at game. I mean, her only weakness is really, like, you gotta know how to kill. I mean, it's not about, like, she can't kill, of course she can kill, but it's all about setup strength. And it's, if the opponent knows what you're looking for, it can be a nice But Tobo's not letting that happen. These kills, and that's whenever Sheik works the best. Whenever you get the kills, they're falling right into you. And, uh, yeah, also, <laughs> the needles. The needles again. <laughs> St. Pepsi was the exact right person to have to take this match because they know everything about a Sheik and what good Sheiks do. So, yeah, the falling needles just ensure that you cannot challenge. Basically, you, needles are the most, one of the most utilitarian moves in the entire game. They're useful for so much. I think it's just very difficult to challenge, like, because if you go up, if you try and throw anything out against oh. Sheik off stage charging needles, they just let go. Okay, oh, he went for the, uh, I don't know what that's called. Uh, oh, right. Diamond Cutter up smash, he can take it before Sly gets any chance to use the nice, go meter. Nice frame trap, nice frame trap. There goes the nose again, oh, but the up smash had a shield, that's going to take it. Yeah, that was a poor rising fair on shield, not safe from, like, normal minus two falling one. Uh, so if you do that... Right on top of them. Well, Terry does have a lot of trouble in the air, especially off stage versus someone with excellent aerial mobility like Sheik. Let's guard against Terry. Not actually that difficult once you can get around all the ridiculous hitboxes. Alright, nice. Yeah. He's keeping the lead right now. That's really important. I think he. I don't want to. I just say they. I always say they. Uh, uh, well, she's a girl, so I'm going to say her. But, oh, okay. Uh, Getting the down throw, not going to get anything out of that. Sly very close to getting the go meter online, which could be a massive deciding factor in this set. Now we got the power dunk. Lots of lag on uh, all of Sly's aerial landing options, which is going to be super hard to get. There's the go meter. Needles in the first simple combo. Like needle combo, usually, but you have to use him a lot more. He has to keep him away right now. He has to really keep him away right now. He cannot let um, Sly get anything going. Oh, just dash attack, throwing him out off stage. There goes the uh, power guys. We're not going to get anything out of it, though. Needles just camping around with needles, throwing them out, trying to get as much little uh, bits of damage as possible to get a kill. Tobo, oh my like, god. What, what, uh, that was so meaty. That was so meaty. Sly takes game two, going into game three. Okay. That was so meaty. That's a fighting game term. Terry's a fighting game character. Okay, this is really close, actually. This is incredibly close. 
this is a problem with the matchup. She should be winning the whole time, but that's not humanly possible. That's the thing. Sly is also very, very good at SDI. Um, and, oh, and Togo. Togo's well, getting out of the jet. Yeah, exactly. They're both very good at SDI, so they can both fairly reliably get out of the other's combos. Um, the problem is when Terry gets out of a combo, they don't have a lot of options other than to reset themselves on the ground. Whereas Sheik, with excellent aerials and low landing lag, can do much more out of it. So it's it's really such a give and a take. That, um, this is a, this is an even matchup. Yeah, exactly. This, this is a hundred percent even matchup. This is super dead hey, even. No one got no excuses for this one. <laughs> yeah, no no excuses whatsoever. Uh, going to Hollow Bastion, the big center platform is going to pose some problems for Sly. Sly loving to have center stage control throughout their combos, whereas Sheik loving a platform above them to do more extensions into their combos. Uh, I, I saw the back air coming, and I don't think he's like it. I think he saved himself, actually. So. Uh, usually already a big time. We've seen a lot of, um, I've actually seen a lot of growth and development coming out from Sly. Uh, Sly has actually been more reliably saving their double jump off stage just to make sure that they don't get gimped at such early yeah. events. Ooh, that's, that's gonna do it to side B off stage. Sucks in my head. Really unfortunate, um, but Sly not gonna let it get to him. He's not a slouch about coming back, especially with Terry. Terry, literally, you can never count Ace Terry now. Terry's just terrifying. So, someone needs to create a zone around Sly. He's getting a bit too much. They're getting a bit too close. Uh, as you can see, like, um, I just saw him get there, that shield. Uh, I just think, uh, he should really bounce in and out of the Terry zone. <laughs> Stay exactly. out of the Terry zone. That jab, the most... Well, jab, f tilt, and down throw are the things you need to worry about. I think Tobo right now really needs to work on the stick and move, um, stick and move philosophy versus Terry, especially when the advantage, because if you just stick it and move it as best as you can, Terry can't really do a lot versus that. Right. Ooh! Diamond Cutter on the platform, exactly what, like I was saying in the beginning, the platform's gonna really serve Tobo, but the dash attack from Sly is gonna take that stock, and the go meter is now online. <laughs> yeah, a lot of commentary just comes down to making foul sounds when players do things. I'm making a lot of vowels right now. <laughs> uh, also, uh, in the middle of this heated battle, Up Smash is actually called, it was never named, the players named it Diamond Cutter. In this game, it's one of the flash cards, the floating screen, it's actually called Razor. Razor. I like Diamond Cutter. Yeah, I know, it's cooler. Yeah, Diamond Cutter is cooler. I'll stay with, um, Diamond Cutter for the purpose of commentary. Oh, oh Buster Wolf okay. coming out. Not gonna land, yeah, though. Yeah, he, he fell down from the F tilt. I think he got that down, which was great, because he didn't get Oh, oh you can go. Alright, I got commentary. I'll see you later. Uh, St. Pepsi stepping off commentary. Their match is being called a uh, trademark and a stick on commentary right now. Power guys are coming out. Oh, you can't go this way. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, using that, actually using the um, the grenade to their advantage, Sly. Oh, but Tobo going super deep off stage, trying to get that last kill. Uh, with hazards on, that stage morphed into, uh, morphed into such a beautiful looking uh, surroundings right now. Uh, coming back on mic right now, actually, is Stairwell uh, for this match of Sly versus Tobo. Yes, we're back. Hopefully for real this time. No more matches to get pulled. <laughs> sure. Um, Tobo is, has been really going hard against Sly right now. They are, they both have such mastery over the combos that these characters have, so it really comes down to who can land the combo better. Um, whereas Sly gets very heavy hitting two or three hit combos, Tobo can get like eight hit combos to do the exact same game. Well, it's interesting to see where this is going to go. I'm just close to the set. It's on game three right now. It is on game three, one one to both of them. Very even percent wise here. Just yeah. sounds like it is going to be like you said. Just who's going to get the better combo first? Looks like they are just trying to bait each other out. For that Sly gets one off to almost kill Tobo, but not quite going to get that match for Sly. We've seen some incredibly good SDI coming out for both of these players to get out of each other's combos. <laughs> Particularly Tobo. Tobo is that uh oh. Is that oh. gonna do it? No, that's not gonna do it. I think he was trying to go he knew that the um the up smash wouldn't kill him yet. Oh using the um using the 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 movement of air from the grenade to get back on stage safely. Ooh, nice little adaptability out of slide. Both characters really trying to 
Oh, is that going to be it? That's going to be it. Sly taking it 2-1 to one over Tobo. Incredibly good game coming up. Tobo. I mean, we've seen Tobo on stream already. That is got to be an interesting set. I wish I saw it. We can review the bot. We can review the bot. How's it going, everybody? Welcome. Oh. Okay. Not that much. Oh, really? Nice. So I just need to like talk like this. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Talking normal, talking normal. What's right. up? What's up? How's it going? My name's Noah. I'm here with DJ, and we're about to commentate Cannons versus Thirsty. So a really great matchup. Typically, when these two play, obviously you're going to see the Palu out of Thirsty. But Cannons has a lot of really good characters. He yeah. has. He has the. Uh, Penguin, the Mario, he has the Peach. I was, like I was going to say, it's usually Palutena and Peach for game one. Hundred percent, yeah. I, do, I think Peach definitely does better in the matchup than Inkling yeah. or Mario. I yeah. think the, the, I, the play of the turn up is really good as yeah, far as yeah. like one, working on spacing and stuff. Like that. Especially one, one thing you can do with Peach that's really good against Palutena is you can do that G drop turn up at the ledge, which catches teleport a lot of time. Ooh, really we're, tricky up here to kind of get out of a bad situation. We'll um, call it a bait. We'll yeah, call it a bait. Let, let's, let's call it a bait for now and see what happens. First, we get off to a really good start here, taking 60% before getting hit. We'll see how this one plays out. I know Thirsty has complained a lot to me personally about the Inkling damage, so I'm curious as to whether or not if Thirsty does take this first game, we'll see a character switch. Because I think that's kind of what's on everybody's mind a little bit. It's like, is Peach really the character to do it? Yeah, 100%. Um, I don't know. I know uh, Cannon used to be a hardcore and played Inkling all the time, so I yeah. think the Peach is relatively new. But I know he has been riding on the Peach a lot. So maybe if the first game doesn't go so well, does the comfortability pick of the Inkling come into back? But doing well so far, pretty good. No stocks lost yet. Um, was pretty down pretty early, but brought the percent back up. That yeah, Peach Cannon, combo is really good. Really Cannon has done a very good job of building his percentage back into towards uh, more of his favor than it was previous. But that's the thing is like one down so it can really change the entire momentum of the game. What we see here is probably Thirsty's biggest asset and his biggest skill as a competitor is when he has his opponent off stage or on ledge. I don't think there's anybody better in West Texas than what is it Thirsty. To be honest, his ledge trapping. It's quite good. It's good. The way he uh, threatens with just his presence. He's not necessarily throwing a move out. He's just standing there. Yeah. Just the thought of what move is he going to throw next yeah. is, is good. His reactions to what is going to yeah. But Cannon's also, when you talk about that, he just needs to end this stock. There's, there, there's that turn up you were yeah. talking about, being able to throw it straight down to get the and there's another good character like that ledge trap, that yeah. low cancel bear on the shield can be really tricky. Yep. Peach is really, really scary if you're on the ledge because she has the side B which can cover both sides. She has the down tilt which you don't want to get hit by, the bear, the turn, um, and the grab too. She has a killing back throw so she rolls left Ooh, good right. Good up smash call the approach uh, option. That's a thirsty classic right cool. there. Up smash at the ledge. Yep. Up a read. Sometimes he does it a little too much. But yeah. <laughs> just a little bit. It's funny. Palutena's almost every Palutena I see, they love to throw that up smash out. Just yep. like randomly. Because it's so big, it's such an active hitbox. box. It does really well. But we see the change of the, the stage bringing us to the last sock on cannons here. Can he get a comeback? I, One I do, solid beach combo. Yeah, I do want to point out it. something I thought Cannon did that was really, really good. What he did when he uh, first was off stage is he dipped below the ledge and just floated right at the ledge waiting with a nair. Oh, and yeah. it pushed him further back, which I thought was really, really good. It didn't necessarily result in a stock, but it added a lot of pressure off stage. He it with another... Uh, another really nice peach combo, almost getting back into the driver. I wonder if that was on purpose. I wonder if it might have been reason. Ooh, the up airs though. Peach not very heavy. I know, that's, yeah, that's a really scary position to be in, especially because... Good up smash again. I don't you know. This one comes sometimes he just doesn't do it. Um, but yeah, Peach very light and Palo up air very, very strong. Very strong move. And so you really need to be careful right here if you're cannons. You're getting into that kill percentage. We're back air. And this is what I was talking about earlier with that floating right at the ledge. It's really, really good. 
stock off, it's very much doable. I mean, look at the percent he's yeah. done in just this last stock. It's yeah, like, yeah. He's yeah. really doing well now. Look at that. That's the thing when you play against Peach, it's like, you have the stock lead, but you know, how much is a stock really? It's like, if you get hit on stage, that Peach can really push forward that, that momentum and really turn it into something else. Oh, you know, unfortunate. Yeah. Cut the Paracel a little too early. Yeah, was... Really smart on Thirsty as well. Early. He saw Ken's got a little too comfortable, always yeah. going to the ledge, hovering with yeah. that Nair. Thirsty just went over him. Yeah. And then just because he gave up his stage presence to hold that Nair, now Thirsty's back on stage and now hits back because of his yep. ledge trapping. Yep. Uh, so we'll see what the bands were. Um, We'll see where Cannons decide to go. I think, as far as that matchup goes, I would assume that he's not going to pick Triplats. Any, any kind of Triplats, no, Palutena is just going to up there. If you, if you pick Triplats against uh, Palutena, you are making a mistake. I would assume Thirsty probably banned that beat. It's probably yeah. probably the other one to deal with. Peach is going to carry you across the whole stage. Well, I've had a lot of He hates that beat. It's one of Palutena's worst stages in general. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, largely because her options are very limited. She can't really chain together her aerials like you can on a stage with platforms. Yeah. And also you can't get those ledge cancels with the teleport to really yeah. mix up your recovery 100%. options. And so we're going to go to Hollow Bastion instead. Um, running it back. Uh, if the audio is still um, needs to be adjusted, please let us know in the chat. We thank you guys uh, for... I just, uh, I just did something right now. Let me know. Cool. Here we go. Another strong start here um, for Thirsty. You know, you get, if, if England's not dead, England's not dead, you know? Yeah, so. he, he's going he's gonna to make it back every single time. Something, the jabs are going to become a big factor in this. He's going to catch you if you're spot dodging too much. England, that ink, such a dramatic percent gainer. Yeah. Like, I've, I've seen fully inked up people go from 0 to 110. Yeah. Like that. Very quickly, absolutely. Inkling was one of the best jabs in the game for damage rack. Like Meta Knight and YouTube. Both just insane as far as damage. Also, when, when Thirsty plays a close trying to look for something like an air, it's a really great get off beat tool, but that up air is just going to finish that first stock. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about why we, Thirsty and I, have kind of talked about why this matchup is so frustrating. It's because it's similar to like Pikachu, for example, the pancaking in the smaller hitbox yeah. and the low profiles can make it really, really difficult for Palutena to get anything started. Obviously, Thirsty's doing a good job of playing around it, being able to build up a lot of percentage very quickly on both these stocks. But if you're able to like land like a, like a cross up, what a damn! Wow. Oh, all right. All right. Looks also, like I'll hold down the fort. No worries. Um, here we go. We're moving into the third stock here on the Hollow Bastion transformation. Um, Thirsty has done such a great job of just really not letting Cannon get anything started here. Um, and one thing that I really want to talk about about this matchup is kind of like how these two kind of play as an antithesis of one another. Thirsty is a very, very strong defensive player with a really strong punish game. And Cannon is just a very hyper-aggressive Peach, hyper-aggressive Inkling, really wants to get in and get and start building that percentage. And so um, seeing these two clashes always are a really good treat. You never know um, which way this one's going to go. Fun fact about these two the character matchup. When, uh, when Atta House 3 was in Abilene, we did a Sora-only bracket. Uh, and I gotta say, Cannons kind of gave Thirsty the work and Sora only, but unfortunately that's not what we're seeing here, but Cannons is starting to bring us back with a stock. Although, uh, Inkling, pretty light character, is getting towards that kill percent. Had that explosive point hit. Oh, and the read! What a great read there. Uh, with the forward smash to finish off the set, and that's Thirsty taking the set 2-0. I don't believe we're in best of five yet. So, we're going to be moving on to the next match. Whew, all right, that was a quick one. That was actually a bit faster than I was expecting it to be. Um, that was a really great showing from Thirsty, who's coming into this tournament a little cold. Obviously, he's played through um, the rest of this event, but... We will see what matchup we get next. Thirsty Can has just finished it. That would be a good matchup. All good. Uh, you know what? We'll throw out some uh, some some sponsorships, some, some previews. We can talk about that a little bit. Um, thank you to Contender Esports for letting us hold, host Old Smash Road here um, at slide at the slide location uh, in Lubbock, Texas. It, it's been an awesome. Uh, okay, we're doing a 10 minute break on stream, and then we'll be back with our next match. So we will see you guys in 10 minutes.
What's up, everybody? We are back. We are in a losers match. We have ACU's own Leviathan, their current ranked number six player out there in Abilene, uh, versus Saint Pepsi, who I don't know too much about. If you'll give us a little insight into him, yeah. Um, so Saint Pepsi actually came around when uh, school was back in session, I think, at Tech. I don't know if he's new here, but I hadn't seen him before. Yeah. But he's a really good Steve. Definitely the best Steve in West Texas. He's got wins on the LRL. He's got wins on uh, some pretty. Strong players in West Texas, so yeah, it should be interesting because I know Levi, while he can be a little inconsistent, uh, can also uh, make some really big plays. Yeah, and I think this might be a matchup of matchups because I know there's not a Steve in Abilene, and I, I don't think that there's a, a, a Bayonetta here in Lubbock either. So I think we're gotcha. Yeah. In secondary. So I, I think this is going to be a lot of learning and adaptation. Who can really? Whoever can make the best adaptation last is going to really take it in this one. It's true. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't be surprised to see game three here, but I, I will also wouldn't be surprised to see two on, on yeah. the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think that St. Pepsi does have the better results, but yeah, like I said, Leviathan, he can really get in there. Yeah, I, you know, I have to gas him up because the last tournament I played at, he beat me in bracket, so, you know, I <laughs> gotta gas sense. him up as Makes much sense. as possible. Hey, I mean, this guy's scary. I played him once online and he took me to game three. Yeah, so. <laughs> They, they were scary. He's a very scary character. So we'll see where we take his first stage. How do you feel about the new set, the stage list? The Hazards On? Yeah. yeah. So I got like kind of mixed feelings about it. I feel like at the end of the day, we're going to stick to Hazards Off. Uh, it's probably what everyone's going to revert back to. But like, hey, I'm always down to experiment. This is what weeklies are for, right? I mean, it's really just Smashville and Town and City that have any changes, right? Yeah. Uh, well, we also lose a running. few stages. Right. You know? It just kind of changes a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, but I'm all for Cave. I love Northern Cave. Yeah. I'm glad that that's part of the, yeah. the Hazards On rule set. Uh, I'm glad much we didn't. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm glad we didn't lose that Kalos format with uh, the transition into a Hazards On stage list. So, right. But here we go, moving into picking match music. one. Yeah, doing a little bit of music picking. It's really become a music picking meta in a lot of ways. You know, a, a lot of <laughs> a lot of pre-game music selections have really determined the outcome of a lot of these yeah. sets. I think. I mean, you, you see it at the local level, you see it at the top level. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> There's nobody who's not doing those those song counter picks, that's for sure. I think it's definitely... <laughs> Alright, here we go. Okay, so I'll be honest, I, I don't know what either of these characters are really going to look for. <laughs> I was going to I was gonna say, is Steve going to go more for the camping game or going in? But he starts off the bat, Pretty he aggressive, hasn't done yeah. a single mine yet. It's really going to come down to how much Levi's really able to get started here. Oh. And not much, because he's right going to get started bat, on the SD. Yeah, a really <laughs> unfortunate OC there. Uh, Bayonetta, a lot of resources while in the air, sometimes. Too many to keep track of, in yeah. my opinion. And so, uh, if you're not a Smash 4 vet, it might be a little. Because this char character's rare in this game. Yeah. That's for sure. Oh, well, what a call out, though. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Who does that? Okay. <laughs> We're even. Yep. Zero, SD zero. didn't matter. No, not at all. That's crazy. This is what I was talking about with Levi's inconsistency. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't know about the down tilt at ledge. But that's that's kind of the thing, though. It's like we say that that SD no longer matters, but it might be the deciding factor of this match. Like, it's imagine true. if that was on his first shot. If that just happened without an yeah. SD. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Very true. So. Ooh. <laughs> Murder kicks right into the TNT there. Yeah, there's one thing you don't want to do to the TNT. Yeah, I, I guess that it has a, a fire effect then. Yeah, I would yeah. assume so, because it, it did detonate. So, I never thought about that, actually. There we go. Mining for diamonds here. Yeah. Pepsi uh, going in for the, the ledge traffic, actually, with the stage for it. But uh, I'm surprised oh. with a lead that we're not going to see more mining. He's doing a little bit. Yeah, because I think we've all seen the, the Steve flips on Twitter or on Reddit or whatever with the diamond sword. He wants to get him, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, and see, Pepsi does get those. He, I've seen him. He can touch you once and take you to 70 real quick. Yeah. But definitely a strength of Steve's. That jab is just... You just walk up with it, forward smash it. read. Yeah. Oof. Forward smash, another one of those moves you just kind of just throw out as Steve. Oh, Which time? That's it. Yep, caught him mashing. Oh no, really? But he's, he goes all fine. the way up there. Yep. See that before, Steve. Really creative recovery coming out from Sig Pepsi. No, in creative, he, he just flies around. That was the Elytra, <laughs> so that's why he had to swoop. That's not in this game. Oh, well, if it was, <laughs> he, he, he's about to turn on creative mode right now. Uh, looking for the kill confirm at the edge. The jab finisher is a kill confirm, so this may even finish too at a high not percent. Not center, but yeah, it's definitely a scary option. It's nothing like junior, but it's definitely a jab yeah. you don't want to get hit by. Yeah. 
Oh, good Ooh. back air there to finish it off. Nice little read there at the ledge. For sure. He's got diamond. This is scary, but it's definitely winnable. Bayonetta able to get a lot done very quickly. Barely getting Ooh, out of the TNT, the eye, but... Still dead. Yeah, the wow. magma block's just gonna take it. Alright, that's game one. So, if you're a Leviathan in this situation, what adjustments are you trying to make in game two? Um... If you're Leviathan, yeah. uh, not SDing is a great start. <laughs> yeah, I, like like we talked about a little bit earlier, I think that was the difference maker in that, in that set. A lot of it's mental game too. Like I just, he knows that he can do it. If you watch, then that would be pretty easy to consider. So, yeah, like, you know that he can take a game here. Yeah, uh, you just can't let that SD get to your head and just kind of keep playing the safe way. Don't be bird boost kicking into yeah. TNTs. Like that. You don't it might be either. a matchup on familiarity thing. I, too. I think it 100% is. I mean, I, I can't imagine myself trying to take on a Steve in my first, you know, out of city bracket in, in a hot minute. That's got to be a frustrating feeling to deal with. But for, for, sure. for, for Pepsi, too, it's like, bro, where did this bayonetta come from at the same it's time? It's very you know? true. These are both characters yeah. that, that, as far as local scenes go, these players are not familiar with. Yeah. Uh, I've not seen that no, in that action was, before. That was interesting. Yeah, just using the upbeat to get back to the center stage. Yeah, he's been very creative with the electric. Oh, first that, time, was, yeah. that was that was kind of saucy. Thought. Are we gonna? Ugh, a little early there. Yeah, a little early. But also risky, but no punish. Yeah, I think St. Pepsi thought um, Leviathan was gonna try to continue that combo with one of the side Beezer and upbeat or something. Uh, just goes for the guns, gets a lot of damage, puts him in an off stage situation. He's not able to capitalize it on it as much as he probably like to, but it's a uh, it's a great mix up. Yeah, I agree. You don't typically want to air dodge against Fayo. Close. Just gets a bit risky gun there, but kind of risky. A B, he no goes for a jab. Yeah. I mean, St. Pepsi, I think his lucky starts for that one. He's like, well, I can yeah. just chill behind a block here. That's such a scary. Bait him with the TNT that he clearly doesn't know how to deal with. That's what St. Pepsi's thinking, probably. Yeah. Well, that too. It's like, how do you how do you maneuver around that? Like, with the, with the TNT on the ground and then the magma block above, it's like, Okay, I'll just stay here, yeah. I guess. Bayo doesn't exactly have too many ways to deal with it. But there's a big force match. match. Yeah, taking the first stock in the lead. So this is kind of what game one I imagine would have looked like had that SD not been such an issue with that might be. Yeah, great DI. I was gonna do down in front of Steve. Down down our way in front of Steve. But you Go. hear the SDI? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he gets out. The clicks. Yep. Good job knowing to do that. Because mm -hmm. a lot of players, I don't think. It's really have. crucial against Bayon. Yeah. If you're not trying to get combo to 90 and put off stage in a bad situation. You're still going to take damage, but you're definitely going to take way less than, yeah. than you would if you don't. That's not a smash with yeah. you. Here we go. This is the up air there. Maybe could have gone for a second. Oh, there's a minecart. Actually, see, Pepsi hasn't been using those very much, so that was a it's pretty good, good, yeah, yeah, good mix up. Pretty good mix up there from him. You see big damage here? No, it pops out behind him. Good SDI in. Is that 53 up two attacks? Uh, does he have time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or gold? What does he got running right now? Yeah. He's... That's crazy. Yep. That's Steve pretty, for you. That's pretty insane. But uh, Leviathan's still in this. Yeah, absolutely. It's still in the lead, you know. I, I do feel like St. Pepsi's been controlling the paces to get these games. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Uh, until Levi took that first Ooh. stock, I was actually... I, I hadn't realized he even had the lead because it felt like... St. Pepsi had such was good just, control over the flow yep. of the match. And That's Levi's been card. trying really... Oh Ooh. my goodness! Ugh. Yeah, you can't get hit by that minecart at that percent. The Steves are going to be ready. Yeah. 0-0 zero, zero here. Yep. There's the safe on shield up tilt. Oh. Scatter it out, 64. 0-64 zero to 64 right there, but Bayonetta is a character that can do the exact same thing back. The stone block is really going to interrupt that combo there. Yeah, Levi's got to get something started here. Does here it comes? How much can we get? A little get? bit. I feel like he might have been able to get some more there, but I think probably he just wanted the stage position. Yeah, I didn't want to risk too much. Put himself in too bad of a situation. That card's oh. gonna come close, but not quite do enough. You, do you ever have mental di where you like you yeah. di something when you're not playing? Yeah. I just mentally di that that card terribly. <laughs> so he finds a five. But... I was so scared when he was standing on top of the TNT. Yeah. What a scary character. Yeah, Steve uh, can never count him out, that's for sure. That down there does get punished. The read, the roll in. Nothing here to finish out the game quite yet. Lock. What's he looking for here? Ooh, like he just wants Levi to do it. Oh. Yeah, that up smash nearly caught that. Now scoop SDI's out! 
If that even was STI. I have no idea. It sounded <laughs> like it was. Levi getting very aggressive off stage, trying to find something that can finish this game and push it to a game three. Has him on ledge, but with the diamond, this is still a very scary matchup. Any... What? Yeah. <laughs> Any strong Any hit. Any stray really diamond gonna... hit? That's gonna do yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, that was well played, and honestly, still could have gone either way. But uh, yeah. St. Saint Pepsi really played it safe there. Yeah, uh, played yeah, it smart, yeah. played it safe. Very safe. Didn't make any risks. Uh, and, which is kind of what got, you have to do. Got with much more off of his opening. Yeah, in, in an unfamiliar matchup like that, you know, you kind of have to get a feel for it and just play it slow, play it safe, and then look for your openings where you can get them. So, for sure. All right. Well, I'm gonna go check in with my roommate. Sounds good. <laughs> good luck. So on your team one match. I ought to do this for you. Yeah, no, it's fun, it's fun, it's a good time. Alright, we don't know what match we're getting up next. Oh, never mind, we do got it. We have Atsy versus Tobo. An Abilene showdown here at Contender in Lubbock. So, you've seen Tobo quite a few times on stream already. His Sheik is already making waves here in the West Texas scene. And then Atsy, he's been in the old guard of West Texas players for a long time now with his Marth ever since who knows when, really. Um, you know, it's been a long time for Atsy on this Marth. So um, they're in bands at the moment. I'm going to see if I can listen in and see what, what they get here on stage. I imagine we won't get FD. I imagine we won't get... Okay, Hollow Bastion. Probably the most common starter on this stage list that I've seen so far without PS2 being in the cool. cool. Welcome back. We have Sheik versus Mark. Tobo versus Atsy. Yes, sir. My, not really my friend. I've never met Tobo. But I know Atsy, and I know that he's decent, so this should be... Yeah, should be so right now, these two are ranked fourth and fifth in Abilene. So this is a very, very tight matchup. Uh, Tobo being fourth right now, Nancy being fifth. And Tobo all night has just put together really beautiful strings of, of aerials and, and normal attacks just to really force his opponent into these bad situations where he can look for these drag down up smashes yeah. or these forward smashes or even like the, the explosive off stage. Yeah. So. The, ve the very few ways that Sheik can kill. Tobo seems to have mastered them, yeah. and he seems to find his ways in very well. But Atsy with a good counter, just to say, you know, you can't press buttons for free room. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see um, if Atsy will spam that, because we de he definitely doesn't want to make it like too obvious of a habit to, right. to punish. Ooh, good jab lock. Yeah, great stuff there. Decides to go for damage too. He doesn't want to go for the tipper full yeah. side. He goes for the I, down. You know, I've seen the tipper forward smash kill at 34%. Yeah. So. Um, definitely an option that you Especially with a light character like exactly. Sheik. Exactly. He'll die so fast. And, and one thing about this matchup too, especially when you have a player like Atsy who has a really bad habit of this in a lot of matchups, but Sheik really wants to get up in your face and continue to hit you. Yes. But uh, Marth's up B is such a really great fast oh, out of shield Dolphin option. Slash, man. Atsy is a big fan of that. So it'll be... It gets him punished a lot, but I think it's something that in this matchup can really get him out of a lot of really bad situations. Yeah. It can even kill in a lot yeah, of situations Yeah, it's super well. powerful, so... So we'll see, especially, like, atsy has been doing a lot better, uh, at least in the games that I've played with him. Yeah. His spacing has been a lot better, yeah, and his, absolutely. his burst option is mixed up as far as, like, he used to just, you know, spam the B-reverse shield break. Yeah. But now he doesn't, so he's, like, yeah. he, he's definitely growing as a player. Now he uses his mix-ups as mix-ups. Yes. Is, you know, where you want to Which is what you want to do, yeah. for sure. But now we've got a Marth back at zero with a high percent Sheik, so Sheik... Possibility of losing the stock very soon, but is also could get combo yeah. to avoid it right now. That's just what she does. Tubo, Tubo. <laughs> Tobo is doing such a great job of maneuvering around the strong hitboxes of Mark's sword and making sure to use as many of these sour spots as he can to yeah. really extend the life of this first stock. Which is important for Sheik, because when you have a low perceived character like Mark is right now, you can really get a lot of extra credit. Oh, I thought, I thought he was going to go back yeah. off to, to Gimp him. Mark, not with a great recovery, but it, it, it is decent, but very Gimp him. Yeah. If you go and tap yeah. go and tap him before he can you know, get to that distance of his upbeat. Right. Least. Not a lot of uh, horizontal mobility on stage. So. There's that Dolphin Flash to, yep. to take that first stocks so now. Mark, not the best at racking up damage, especially not on fast characters like this. So it should be interesting to see if he, where he finds his damage. But this combo is continual. Oh, that back goal too early, yeah. For sure, it's the best guy. Drag down, down smash. Sheep. Bread butter. The wind, wind box. box! That's crazy! <laughs> 
Yeah, that's a, oh, that's a tilter. Uh, I, I've never seen the wooden box kill like I've that. never seen it pull away from yeah, those. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's really good for Togo and really bad for Atsy here. Although I definitely wouldn't count Atsy. There's that up yet. Yeah, yeah. They're really punishable. Atsy has a pretty bad habit of doing that. The drag down up there. Beautiful. He did it because he really he really needs Togo off of him in that situation. Because the more percent Togo is able to build before Atsy is able to find something, the worse that this becomes. Yeah, because he can be more reckless off stage with exactly. his stock because he's got a whole nother one. So yeah, like, exactly. if I jump off and can end the stock, but we, I went ahead and lose mine, I still win. Yeah. So I wouldn't Atsy even for mind, sure feeling the pressure right now. I wouldn't now. even mind Togo putting him in a bad spot off stage. Just going like, hey, I got an extra stock. Here's the down air. Uh, Have fun in the blast ooh, zone. But the drag down, down smash. Yeah. And so, ooh. Oh, scares him. Makes him, makes him pop the uppie early. Just the amount of pressure Tobo's able to apply on the leg. Yeah, too, dangerous. Down tilt to up air, not going to take it. That counter is super risky. Man. He's just so nervous. Tobo's just all over him, just smothering him. Yeah. Sheik's going to make that back 10 out of 10 times. There's no way they don't. F tilt to up air, not, not going to connect. I think that wind box kill really destroyed a lot of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that was a low percent go. And of course, that's going to finish it there. A lot of people say... You know, she can't kill, but it went pretty early for yeah, the most part. That's that's true. I'm one of those people that says she can't kill, but I also play characters that yeah. can survive pretty long. But Mantobo definitely showing, like I said, he's mastered those kill components. Yeah. He knows how to do it with a drag down, down smash, drag down. I saw him do a drag down, up air into up smash earlier. He definitely knows what he's doing, and he knows he's very comfortable off stage as we yeah. saw that that up B two ledge after jumping off. Yeah. Not an easy tech. Very, very dangerous. Could SD on accident. He but did earlier. Showing that too, technical yeah. aspect of the comfortability oh. of the character, which is everything. So now it'll be really important for Atsy to make sure to reset his mental. Yes. He'll be like, man, you know that 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 grenade cheesed me with the wind box. I kind of got yeah. ran over, but reestablish my foundation. Reestablish that I'm gonna let you approach me because what is she gonna do if, if he stays back? Right. So I don't know if I like this stage thing. I think. She really wants the long platform yeah. to really extend her combos and really rack up a lot of damage. Um, so I'd be curious to see what the thought process was behind this stage play. Because um, quite frankly, I, I really don't know if I agree with it at all. And you see Atsy 2 panicking right off the start of the game. Hits the Dolphin Slash up. Gets punished. Has 70 damage on him now. Um, and I think, too, Togo's such a great player just in general, but especially when he has the momentum in a match, right? Yeah. And, and I think a character like Sheik really supports that. Um, and so, like, giving up such a lead early can start really working against you very, very yes. quickly. Ooh. Barely gets a shield up in time. That for sure would have sealed the stock. And that, and as far as the momentum goes, that's going to be at the number one thing that he needs to make sure he, he does, is he needs to stuff this momentum as fast as possible. Because toward the end of that first game, Tobo was just running over at him, getting whatever he wanted with hardly any punishes. And the beginning of this game, same kind of thing. He carried that momentum from the other game into this one. Just, so now it's got to be, we got to stop that momentum to put the bleeding on. Yeah, it just looks like Tobo's so hard like, he is, he's so slippery. He's so has, slippery. Atsy hasn't got a single, single really big shot in here that would be difficult to defend against another player. Yeah. Because we even see it saw it on stream earlier when he played against the Steve. So Pepsi is like, he was putting together some really good strings and some really good combos. Got, got a shield break, yeah. but, but Tobo's not shielded. He doesn't no. need to because he's constantly throwing out hitbox. He's yeah. throwing out the air, he's throwing out the bear, he's throwing needles. He's just constantly making Atsy shield. Yeah. And Atsy yeah. being a player that really thrives off forcing you to shield so that you can get that shield breaker. Yeah. But if Tobo never shields, that, that takes a whole aspect yeah. of Axie's game away from him. Goes a little bit lower to avoid yeah. getting uh, the grenade off, the wind box, pulling him back off again. Super smart. But so here's where at this is where Sheik struggles with the yep. killing. He's the percent's too high, he's not gonna land any of the drag downs, it's just yeah. Too much knockback. Nothing, nothing's really gonna combo. Or Fair's gonna take him off the top. There we go. Interesting. I don't know if I've ever... Oh, the tipper Ooh. side B is gonna finish that one. Zero, zero. We're back zero, to zero. Zero. And we're playing Smash 4 again, guys. Welcome. <laughs> Here we go. See that? Hey, I hate that Dolphin Slash. Yeah. It, it, it's a... It just feels like... It feels like he's panicking. It, it, it does know? seem like a panic. It, but it also could be a conditioning play. So where, like, could maybe be. Tobo... He gets Tobo to think, okay, every time I touch a shield, he's immediately going to Dolphin yeah. Slash. So maybe he doesn't Dolphin Slash the third time. Let's hope that's what it is. Yeah, I, I would hope so. That's the whole... That's the mix-up thing. That's what separates the top players from, yeah. the, from the lower players, is that mix-up, that difference of mental... Um, strength. 
but doing go. a lot better this second stop. Yeah. I mean, has his first lead in the set. Um, yeah, for 100%. So, so that's, that's pretty huge. Oh, there's that beautiful shield breaker. <gasps> oh, the tipper forward smash. There it is. Out of here. Now we have a lead, so now Atsy, he can do whatever he wants. He, yeah. can, he can camp so hard on Tobo right now, yeah. force him to approach, but Tobo finding his entrance yeah, That's right something now. I would actually like to see a lot more out of, out of Atsy here in this matchup. It's like a lot more of the disjointed aerials, so we can really start zoning him off me. Like, hey, Throw here. some nares out. Yeah. I haven't seen very many nares in this set at all. The nair, great hitbox with two hits. Yep. Keep him out of the You are not allowed zone. to approach me. Yeah. I am going to hit you if you try. Like, Stay off me. But right now, Tobo, it, it feels like Tobo's still controlling the Yeah, he may be a stock down, but he still feels in charge. Yeah, the, the, exactly. Because, ooh, the read. The roll. The roll. Tip her up here, up to gonna. Yeah, we're back to even. Back to even. This is scary. I, I think if you're Atsy there, you really wanted a, a lot more extra credit. No than you extra credit on that stock. Put it here together. Comes Tobo with a big string. Yeah, huge. And that's just. You really start to feel the pressure of all those shooters, right? Yeah. Even if the damage doesn't add up to as much as you think it should. Yeah, nobody likes getting hit a lot. It's a exactly. Damage, it's a exactly. damage to that mental. Like like playing against a Luigi. It's like, exactly. You get grabbed and you're like, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm going to get hit a million times. Yeah. But Luigi's going to do the damage. Sheik, on the other hand, not going to do that much damage. But the ledge trapping, great right with the falling fair into jabs. Catching them, dropping shield. Close. Yeah, he could have taken it. Ooh, he wanted to end it. He said this has to match the end of this game. One more up here, I'll do it. Oh, Good DI it. from Nancy. Always DI away with that F tilt. You see, Tubbo's just being patient. He's not letting this pressure of Most... the set get to him. Man, one big tipper, though. One big tipper is yeah, going to Yeah, I think that's important to be said. It's like Atsy. Oh, that was a little too low. He's going to lose to Tobo 2 Oh, That is too low. Yeah, you never like to see a set in that way. No, um, 100%. By any means. but Not with the caliber of players we have here. No. You always want to see it go to that last talk. That that uh, that available option to adapt, yeah. to to move on. Yeah. But, uh, uh, what's Good stuff it? from both players, though. Yeah, to Tobo, sure. Tobo's looking really hot tonight. I think that was winners, though. No, I think was that, that, was, that was losers. Was yeah. that losers? Yeah, Tobo, Tobo? Tobo lost to... I know Atsy lost the same Pepsi. Tobo oh, lost to right. Sly in Game 3. Oh, like, last stop, last hit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was a that was an incredible set. Two really, really talented players right there. I don't know who we have coming up next. Uh, looks like Sycamore? Sycamore and Cannons? Sycamore and Cannons. Oh, Ooh, so we got Peach versus Violet. This that seems be, like a hard matchup for It does Violet. sound like... Honestly, I think Peach or Inkling versus Violet does not sound very funny yeah. as Violet. Yeah. That, that sounds like a very, very hard matchup. Yeah. Just like on paper. Oh, for sure. I mean, turn up is better than arrow, so you've got the projectile win. You've I feel got like the better combo game. Yeah, and Peach can just float in all the areas that that uh, Violet struggles covering. Yeah. Very, very linear. Yeah, very boxes. linear. Very and you can just float. Uh, obviously, the side B is really good for like, yeah. hey, get off me. But, but that's a conditioning tool. Right? Exactly. You have to condition him. Hey, I'm going to throw all these fairs out. You don't think Cannons is going to float right in and out of that range and bait you into that? Yeah. Like, Cannons is a really good player, and so mm -hmm. he's going to find ways to bait you into using your bad options. Yeah. So this should, it should be interesting. So maybe he goes Peach, maybe he goes uh, Inkling. It looks like he was hovering Peach, though, if I saw it correctly. Yeah, I got to say, I, I like Peach and Cannons. Yeah, you, you want in? Sure. Yeah, yeah, you got it. My friend, all you need is Oscar. Just say you're signing off. All right. No one DJ out of here. See you guys later. Come to the monthly next week. It's gonna be, it's gonna be hype. Yeah, you're good, you're good to go. All righty. The Dream Team back at it again. Shura Nationwide back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. We're commentating Cannon Sycamore. Okay. I honest to God believe every time Cannons has come, they played each other. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, they did it last week where uh, Cannons kind of like took it pretty convincingly. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is funny because the first ever set they played, Sycamore. Really? So, yeah. I actually never knew that. Yeah. Well, starting off, Owl Bastion. It's, it's becoming like the, the new start of stage, huh? Yeah. yeah it feels like it. Has the hazards on PS2. There you go. I like it, actually. So. Um, 
So let, let's talk about this matchup a little bit. I know Sycamore Percy does not have any Peach experience. Now that Kansas has come uh, to Lubbock tournaments more, it's awesome that we have a Peach, but he does have like four other characters in his uh, arsenal. And right. with Sycamore specifically, he either opts for the Peach or the Inkling. Yeah, so oh oh my nice God. fair catch. That was really good. Oh, so just from what I can get out like just Peach versus Violet, um, Peach is going to have a very easy time edge guarding Violet just because um, she's able to intercept the tether recovery either with turnips or just floating there uh, and just Ooh. bashing there. Nice. So uh, he did reverse up tilt on that approach and then followed him with the up air. And I guess Canada's just. Bad the eye on that, wasn't expecting that. And ends the stock, manages to even the stocks up. If he can maybe get 30 ish percent, they're even. Right. Not much. Ooh. Side B, very annoying move to deal with, especially in the Shrouding Peach. It's just, it's surprisingly just fast and a little annoying. Like, where you only, your only main way of kind of intercepting it is either by reading or hearing that good sound cue. Yeah. Um, let's see. Sycamore holding Sandwich Stage pretty well. Um, that's going to be the main thing that Candace is probably going to struggle with, is just the distance. Um, off stage, let's see. Nice, nice snare to cover his role. Definitely, definitely. So more playing it safe, not going out there. That float is kind of uh, the catalyst for a lot of sharks out there. Oh, a nice, nice. FMS. Hanging there a little too long. Sigmore. Great timing on yeah. that. The Tide now in uh, Sigmore's favor. Let's go. Cannons only really needs like a couple of like good trades though. Um, and and he's turn. dead. Had he snapped instantly, I think he would have gotten it. But I think he was a little too wary of the of the turtle. Yeah. At that point, Sigmore needs to like kind of cool himself because it's it's sometimes in situations like these where like he kind of gets in his own head and he thinks like, oh dang, he's catching up. I gotta make something quick. Just controlling the air right now. Honestly, playing really well. He is. He is. Let's see how uh, Cannons retaliates, if he even can. Yeah, yeah. I notice every time Cannons goes for the back air, he runs up for the grab. Maybe expecting. Oh, oh nice. Almost got that. Now oh, he's on good. optimal shield break range. I, Sycamore loves to opt for these shield breaks when they're at low uh, shield. So just aim it. Let's see if he goes. Opting for the rapid death. Just safe little wet trap situation here. The air on the arrow. Sigmore has to be careful on this ledge. Cannons is proof time and time again. He knows how to work this ledge. That's good in air coverage, covering, covering that roll. Oh, oh, he's got the stitch! The stitch. He, and he still has it! Oh, oh no. he's got it now! And reads the roll, and that was just luck. That's that RNG coming into play for Cannons. Yeah. Oh, man. It would have been it would have been super sick if like somehow Sycamore had like some sort of like stitch play with that. Yeah. Uh, um. So I'm not gonna lie. I didn't look at what he did with the stitch. What did he do? Did he just throw it? Um. Pretty much no. So what happened was just that he got knocked down. I don't think he had an opportunity to like use it. And so because he got knocked down, close in tech situation, and then just read the roll in. So a little unfortunate, but. It's not over yet. But these these are the, the situations that determine the better player for the set. At that, Sycamore should have realized, oh, I, I need to tag. I need to tag. Yeah. And Cannon's able to read the roll in and just capitalize on that comeback. Rolling in is a very common habit, especially, um, I guess, like we would say, our level. Yeah. Um, because we want center stage really badly. And so it, it's our way of control. And so cannons, you know, use that to his advantage and just ended the game there. But now, let's talk about this game. Oh, slightly misspaced. He did drop the shield. Even for sense, though, until, like, now Sycamore got him at ledge again. He's not struggling to get damage. He's struggling, like, like there. He's getting a little antsy for the kill. He, he's, I think he realized, I, doesn't realize that he has this time to work with, and he's just frustrated and trying to get this kill off. And then it opens opportunities for Candace to do this, like just keep that when Sycamore has a, a good 40% lead. Yeah. All right, Candace. Air dodging through, trying to regain the stage. Yeah, Dot Eye almost got hit there, but good timing on Sycamore with his recovery. Oh, that side B catching him twice now, this set. Such a persistent move. Situation got turn of in hand. 
Oh, that air, I mean, that spot dodge was a little... That was a little, like, that, I'm, that was kind of a fierce spot dodge right there. Yeah. Cannon's not being able to capitalize, trying to read off of that up smash. Both just playing the spacing game really, really well. More so on Sycamore side, but now that up tilt taking that stock. Alright, Cannon's just need a pair. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much. To even it up. Nice, nice. Nice. Oh, I know there. Sycamore. Been... Oh, good snipe! Gosh, such an early kill! Showing that he knows how to use that neutral. That neutral piece got like, I know he it's says so it's not good, but. <laughs> Uh, but when he uses it, though. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. All right. Taking first stock. Of course, game's not over. He's got every opportunity to just even this back up. Turnip combo, down tilt, uh, down air, even. And Ken hasn't been dropping those combos either. As it starts right now, noticing he can't get a follow up, so he just opts to fade back. I would say that's more like just uh, poor reaction. Like he oh. almost got it. Oh, good damage still. Sycamore, not scared right now. Not at all. Forcing cannons to shield and he said, like, hey, you shield in front of me? I'm just going, oh my god. Yeah, the idea. Yeah, the idea. I appreciate that. Another dot eye. Cannons is R RNG with turnips today. Yeah. On point. Last at least just from this set. I don't know if we've gotten Wait, that turnip. did only tw 25? I knew it was the second strongest turnip. But... Up tilt, let's drop situation. Let's see how he's doing with this. Pressure with the down tilt, intercepts the side beat, and takes the stop. Wow, recognizing that, hey, you side beat a lot when you're at disadvantage going off the ledge. And it's fair. Nice, uh, just nice cover. Coverage. Nice coverage by Sycamore. Now we're up to game three. Now, I do think Sycamore ba uh, banned FD Battlefield, and they're opting for Smash Bros. This is. An interesting stage choice. By having that platform over, Peach can just kind of camp underneath it. Pretty much, yeah. And because Byleth is just so slow, it's like, what can you really do? Yeah, she can uh, shark from below on that platform with, uh, with up air and then just float underneath it. She's looking like a real. Oh! Really? Getting that. Messing up, though, not realizing that fair is not sure of those 0%. Yeah. Nice to catch it with the uh, B. Nice cover. Really good at just keeping him in the corner, almost getting that F smash. Wouldn't have ended this dog, but definitely would have sent a message. Pretty much. Oh, no Landing. jump. Let's yeah. see how he recovers. That recovery is so good. <laughs> Landing a bit aggressive as well. I feel like Cannon is getting a lot of these confirmed of just Sycamore trying to land with Nair. Uh, it's just a big jump. And Cannon's taking the first stock. Sycamore slowly, like, catching up. Uh, Mr. Put out, I get up. I'm sure he didn't want that. Ooh, almost another consecutive snipe. Now, I'm not gonna lie. Chat. Forgot it was Hazard's on. <laughs> Yeah, you just noticed the moving platform yeah. in the middle. I was gonna say, like, maybe I was curious on how these players are gonna take advantage of that. Specifically, Cannon, just because the Peach is so floaty and can can really like take advantage of that platform really well. It's oh, and snipes yet again, taking advantage of that turn of pool. How does Cannon uh, respond to that? Let's see. He does have the percentage lead. Oh, Sycamore evening it up. Evening it up. Just nice little BNB combos by Violet. Does he F smash? No, no, he's keeping it safe. He, he oh. knows that, like, he's brought the game back, but he can't be too overzealous. Yeah. Weird interaction there. Usually, oh, nice, nice air dodge out. Going for, he got the air dodge read, just not the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the both of them going for these very risky reads uh, while they're both at pretty much kill percent. I don't know how I feel about that, but... That, that F smash by Sigma was just a response to think, like, oh, you're gonna be aggressive? I'm gonna try and do my... I'm gonna try and be aggressive myself, but... Reacting to the side beat, I don't know if you... Oh, the turn up... Oh, he kept his jump! He... That's that's an MK Leo uh, uh, up B right there. The plot armor. Oh! He gets the shield break! Let's go! Carlo taking full control... Holding a lead, barely, but could definitely make some make some waves with this lead. Oh, catching. 35 damage. 35 damage. Nice solid damage. Let's trap situation again. Don't be too overzealous with it. Right, Cannons, it how does Cannons respond? Throws it off stage. Got got the right idea with the fair, just kind of whipped. Um, oh, getting the soft hit of back here. 
Ganon's holding this ledge pretty well, and now... 35%? That's not too bad. That's like, that's a peach combo. Or more. Oh. Uh, even more than that. Ganon's showing. He knows his peach combo. Oh, getting nice. the last hit in there. Oh. This is this is so close. This is really tense. Ooh, this again. Could have gone that up right there. Rolling a lot of rolling to cover cover their moves. Yeah, they're both kind of scared right now. Sycamore just wants this kill, and Cannons is like, please leave me alone. Oh, it gets, gets the kill. The F smash read that he needed. And with that, Sycamore moves on to top eight. 2-1 over Cannons. After Cannons have just has just gotten a consecutive positive record against Sycamore. Yep, I think. Yeah, no, that was especially after that first game, Sycamore kind of not giving in. I know if personally I would have lost that game one because of that stitch face, I would have felt a little bit un uh, discouraged, you know, yeah. going into the next games. Like that was my game. Sycamore not letting him affect. Yeah. Not letting him get himself affected by that and just yeah. Just goes to show just how good his mental is. Yeah. And that's very important as a player. Yep. So now this is our last set uh, commentating. Uh, Shigura and I, we are commentating Shino and DJN. This is also a top eight qualifier. All right. Haven't seen them play. Haven't seen them play either. Shino, he's been kind of going like random characters to my knowledge. Um, but uh, DJN, he is, um, this whole tournament, he's been going mostly like Luigi and uh, Donkey Kong. You know, those two are two, his two mains. Um, if I had to guess, he will probably start off with Luigi. Um, he said himself that like he feels a little rusty because you know he's been playing, he's been streaming a lot recently. He's been playing a lot more online, and so that's kind of been messing with his inputs. But with Luigi, let's be honest, like he's got really high damage output already, so he can take good advantage of that for whatever characters that Chino might have. And if that doesn't work, I mean, his Donkey Kong is good, all, good already. So. Yep. All right. Before the uh, setup happens, I will be right back. Give me okay. All right. This is gonna be. Yeah. No. This is gonna be really interesting. Um, again, I am not sure what Chino is gonna be picking. The last time I saw, he was picking Banjo. Um, I don't know what inspired him to suddenly pick up that character, but eh. you know, this game has 80 plus characters. Why not? Another unfortunate pro controller situation. Uh, I'm dead. Welcome back. Congratulate. <laughs> My dear friend. Yeah. Was that Spark Demon? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it a Brag Demon because he has beaten him, but these past three weeks that Cannon has come by, Cannon has won. Yeah. Um, I think it's a mixture of Cannon's, you know, using. What do you mean? Oh, next. Uh, I mean, we're starting with winners, so let's go ahead and get Phillips set first. Phil Phillips on. Yeah. yeah, later. No, th those they just play. We, we put way too many. <laughs> but as we were saying, uh, so Chino, I do know Chino has a new secondary. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that is uh, Banjo. I don't know if he was trying to keep it... Uh, from others, but it doesn't matter because we're going to find out regardless. Oh, sure. But he has been practicing Banjo, but I don't know if he'll opt for it this set, but I know he's adamant and he's been learning a lot of those egg combos and those uh, grenade combos. Yeah, he and I played a bit of friendlies earlier. I believe I, I don't remember what character I picked, but like he, he was getting some of those combos. He was doing the Banjo game plan. And Chino is opting for the Banjo. Yeah. And, hey, just as uh, I said, he's going to start off with Luigi. Um, I wouldn't imagine. I would say that Luigi's zoning is superior to Banjo's, just because that fireball is really, really good, and um, the zares that he has with Plunger is pretty much lagless. So it's just going to be a, a battle of like who is going to come in first. Yeah. So something that I'm interested personally in seeing uh, Chino's gameplay is we all know him here in Lubbock as the aggressive. He is the aggressive. Yeah. So seeing him play Banjo is a little weird, and I'd like to see how he implements his aggressiveness to this character. He, if I had to guess, it's just going to be a lot of like, if he gets the opportunity to get a bomb, he's just going to try and find some conversion to go with it. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned earlier, he has those egg combos. Um, 
I'm not sure if maybe he has them on deck, but... Ooh, nice little wave land from DJ. Maybe trying to catch, like, a roll in or something. Mm. Let's see. Back air. Nice. nice. Did you get the up B? No. No, too far but away, but... some suspecto DI from Chino. Yeah. Probably didn't expect the last few hits of the down B to hit, but... Banjo is pretty big, so... Oh, does he know he does not know the zero though? Maybe he does and he just dropped it. No. He does, and like I mentioned earlier, like he, he's been saying that like almost gets that conversion there. And just going for it. That like, was such a good play. So so much aggression on that offstage. Alright, Chino with him, grab. What is D Gen's name? Honestly, yes. I, I like this. Just running away. I'm gonna get this grab, get a ton of damage. I have the lead. A ton of damage or Maybe, you know, getting that zero to death. No. Um, he's still at that percent range. Um, that zero to death doesn't work past um, zero to at least 10%. Okay. So, officially now, that's not on the table. But, oh, I thought it was up beat. I'm confident he was going for that. I mean, unless yeah. he has clipped the lore and wanted that <laughs> misfire. Yeah. He's been getting a lot of misfires on Bracket, too. So. Let's see. How does Chino approach this? He is fine. He loses to an up beat and a crack. Bando a big body gets hit by those big It's mostly his focus so far is just to try and maintain center stage. Um, I really like his little offstage play there. Oh, goes for it, yeah. Goes for the up there, manages to live, will not take another any snap there. Almost got that snipe. Did you know that Banjo downs Banjo? I, I did not I did not know until Chino hit me with him. And I was like, really? That is crazy. That's huh. Alright, side B taking the stock. He has three more Wonder Wings. Uh Let's see what Chino does. Uh, coming back from that deficit, that really early stock from Dgen. It's still, yeah, it's still very, very doable. Um, Dgen just needs to keep his composure and not let you know, that stock kind of get in his head. Because uh, so far, right now, he's been losing a lot of neutral interactions. Yeah. Chino, this is where the zoning is kind of taking place. He's not approaching him, kind of stepping back, getting the grenade. That's kind of what you want to do versus Luigi, but. Catches him with that up smash. Yep. Luigi wins. I know Chino is trying to go Banjo, but he does have a wolf in the back. Yes. The usual, the usual strat I see him when he's practicing characters is if I lose game one, time to go to the time to go to the main, the wolf. The so main, do you think yeah. we'll be seeing the wolf? Um, we might be seeing the wolf, or I might even wager uh, to guess that maybe we'll see the cloud. Because um, that's also like both characters win versus Luigi. Um, but I guess it will depend on Chino's own priorities. Would he rather just kind of um, zone, you know, with that laser, or would he want to try and play the spacing game with Luigi and like go with the back airs and such? Yeah. Um, and uh, today's bracket, while uh, some techni technical difficulties are getting uh, sorted out. Today's bracket has been, honestly, I think the most stacked weekly we've had in a, in a while. It we has. had ACU come down. We had a lot of Lubbock sleepers. Most, a couple of our Lubbock PRs missing today, but that means nothing when these hitters are showing up from Odessa and ACU. Providing some good matches for strength. Definitely. I want, yeah, I want to say shout out to ACU just for coming here and like just competing with us. It's, it's been a treat. It's been a really, really nice treat. Okay, getting some new play. Tobo, upcoming in uh, ACU, has been on stream a couple uh, times tonight. The and Sheik. Yeah, and he's in top eight. Yep. So. Nice getting some fresh new faces in our top eights. Damn it, can't believe I missed it. Yeah, Matt, wish you were here. You, you and Roy. Give me a second while I can. Yeah, definitely. Everybody who has a COVID store, check it right now and disconnect it. Luigi. Uh, if NCO catches you, when the COVID store is on, you are the new rule. Stop now, break it. All right. Well, he's actually going back to the banjo. Oh. Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, staying committed, that is also a, a, a sign of, you know, uh, like an ambitious sign of, hey, I want to learn this character. I switch every week, right? I have a flavor. But, hey, no, I genuinely want to learn this. Let's see how it goes. And he wasn't too far off that last uh, game. He, it was an unfortunate, you know, uh, gimp from DJN. But DJN not taking anything away from him. It was, he was smart. He said, I'm at 100. You're dead. You're yeah. dead. And Chino maybe wasn't expecting that aggression, but that's why we have 
multiple games in a set. Let's see how Chino adapts. Oh, is this a upbeat? No, no, not yet, not yet. That'd be too early for set. But oh, I, I got the percent mixed up. I thought uh, Chino was in six. This week. No, no, yeah. Let's see. Oh, definitely wanted that turnaround grab. Um, good spacing by Chino, avoiding that upbeat. Maybe could have uh, opted to use a Wonder Wing there. More knockback and would have gotten closer to the side of the ledge. Maybe that turn. Ooh, beautiful up tilt, very up tilt coming down. Yeah. So I'm not sure in the details regarding like whether up tilt it gets uh, confirmed or not. Do you know anything about that? <laughs> yeah, because there are moments where, like, some banjos I've seen where um, they opt for the up tilt, and other times they're just like, I'm gonna go with the up smash, so. Good roll read by uh, DJ. Again, another just common player habit that people tend to have, especially at high percent, is to roll from ledge. And uh, banjo doesn't really have a, a long roll, so. <laughs> And as Luigi, honestly, just throw out the up smash. Why, Why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's strong. I it doesn't have the same properties as Mario Smash, but it's it's up there. Yeah. DJ, DJ, going. Oh, he's God. not scared to go off, and I love that kind of gameplay. He trusts his character and he trusts his skill. He he goes out there. Oh, nice wait. Norinchino would drop shield. Maybe I was thinking maybe that up tilt could have. Uh, does that confirm the up by uh, yes, it does actually. Maybe he was going for that. Yeah, it's uh, he just has a myriad of ways to get early kills. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Oh, even for, this set's been even pretty much all around. Besides that one game, they always kind of even it out. There we see the up tilt missing. Yeah, that was uh, Dijin's uh, decision to just not mash there. Um, because that up tilt is actually really small. I believe it's only really the foot that's um, the hitbox. And then Chino get, getting his own roll read and opting for the down smash, taking uh, Dijan's second stock. But Dijan, oh, almost closing it out. Is it Wonder Wing? Yes. Nothing you can really do to challenge that. Fully invincible all the way through. Is it a down wing? Let's see how he pours into the platform. Yeah, it's... Ah, uh, here we see, we're see. we seeing Hazard's on, making making its move. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a... It's oh, a... Maybe going for the... the uh, B reverse down being in the uh, Wonder Wing and reading the roll in again. We're back at the second percent. time. Two, two for two now. <laughs> but now is a scary situation. You're at zero. You're, you're at zero against the Luigi. Just one grab and it could be your whole stock. Almost got it there. You see, this is a reason why I kind of appreciate Elegant's approach towards uh, the grab for yeah. this. For this, Elegant does not care about that zero to death, and I also agree that hey, maybe you should up for Elegant. DJ, I think, was a little blinded there, wanting to get the zero to death, and he just got punished for both times that he tried to go for it and just whiffed. And Chino capitalizing on that, reading the neutral get up and side being. Yeah, that the position that Chino was at was also really good because at that position he would have covered roll, he would have covered normal get up, uh, get up attack, and with that timing. For, Pretty sure he would have covered the jump, so he covered a good majority of those options that DJ had. Yeah. So uh, I definitely would like to see DJ, uh, you know, maybe not be too uh, tunnel vision on that on that zero to death. We, he's 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 shown that he can get these stocks without it. Uh, while zero to deathing is an amazing tool. Let's be real. <laughs> yes. Uh, you, you know, showing uh, that you have other tools in your kit. Yeah, definitely. Kind of, kind of throws the opponent off their, off their edge. You know, just saying, oh, he wants this grab and playing around it. Goes to town and city. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, me neither. Um, stick, still sticking to Luigi. Okay, my like, I guess fear was that he was probably gonna switch to Donkey Kong and take advantage of those platforms that way. Yeah. But um, no, still sticking to Luigi. Um, and Chino, you know, still sticking with the banjo. <laughs> Now let's see. With this, I believe the. Oh, he almost got it. I don't think it would have killed by just the town and city uh, pick. The, the ceiling is a lot higher, and Banjo is quite heavy. So he is pretty heavy. Um, but honestly, I think at that percent, just because of how powerful that LP is and the fact that it's just fresh, it might have actually gone to kill. Um, no, the lab is in the chat. Go for it. Lab that out. Let us know. Let us know. Almost oh. getting that upbeat confirmed right there. Uh, Again, 
maybe, maybe using one of those. Oh, is he dead? Not oh. yet. Not yet. Good tech. Wonderful tech by DJN. Recognizing, hey, I don't know. <laughs> but the Wonder Wing taking him out. Oh, he's been. Chino's just been abusing that Wonder Wing a lot more. Kind of taking advantage of the fact that he hasn't really used it at all throughout the set. So now it's time to let's see. Let's see how much I can abuse it until he catches on. Weird up there. I'm not sure if maybe that was a misinput or <laughs> invader. No one wants to elaborate. To you. That's <laughs> the appropriate response. I mean. <laughs> All right, Ejen reading the roll and bet. Oh, Chino! Ambitious. But and getting the Wonder Wing hit on top of that, Ejen looking a little frustrated right now against the Banjo. I do understand like Chino just going off stage and getting that Wonder Wing kill, like attempting to get so. But because of that, he's wasted two of his Wonder Wings on his first stock. So I mean, it's his first stock. He, he's that. Uh, we do that. Perfect percent for if he. If he manages to take the stock right now, he has five fresh new Wonder Wings. No, no not yet. <laughs> <laughs> the down smash coming down from Chino as a punish. Verbally saying, wow, those hazards messed me up. <laughs> Definitely. Let's see. But hey, he's still in the lead. He's still two stocks to one. Um, Steejen. Look at who lost. Honestly, this, this stage, while Chino just verbally said, I don't like it, seems to be against... And it just provides Banjo more space for this. I thought that I thought that was a, a grenade side beat right yeah. there, honestly. I thought that was a spike. He was right there too. <laughs> oh, that, that would have been the saucier option. Yeah, I mean, nice downbeat armor through the grenade. Uh, Dijon just has no like answer for this zoning that Chino's just pulling up. Which is kind of funny how we mentioned that. Oh, the jab lock F smash beat. Chat, we have seen crazier comebacks. Dijen has the skill, and he's shown that he's only been a tad bit off in between the, the zero to death. One zero to death, and he's he's safe. Yeah, he's he's still the percent. He's still that percent. Anything past, oh, never mind. Now he's out. Chino just doing his best to just keep away because he, he doesn't want to get grabbed. He doesn't want to potentially lose his stock right now. Well, Dijen slowing it down a little bit with his approaches. Maybe you maybe notice like, hey, I got some time. I got some time. Let's 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 take it slow. He wants the camp. I got you. Oh, oh Harry, nice smash. Nice smash, but not sure about that side B. Oh, that was a reverse B. Nice. Both, both players are super focused right now and getting caught. In the Wonder Wing still living. The Mario Kart DI. The Mario Kart DI. <laughs> Does he have his jump? Uh, yes, he does. Like any good Luigi nav. Chino running off, side being notice saying, I got iframes, you know. Uh, wonderful sets. Uh, both sets. Worth watching, both sets. Just very, very exciting. Just got got to see a new character from Chino. Uh, we got to see a fantastic set by uh, Sycamore, kind of beating cannons for the first time in a while. Yeah, and I'm excited to see where the future of uh, West Texas Smash takes us. There's a lot of new names, a lot of people improving on their play. I'm excited, but for now, Shiguru and I are signing off because we have our sets to play as well. Yeah. So you'll be greeted by some wonderful new commentators. Uh, stay tuned in. We got a lot more Smash to play. See ya.
uh, test mic. Mic is live. We're good. Oh, actually, yeah. yeah you both from uh, so, it's select set, and then it'll show you every option that you have. You can go to the if I'm bad, then you can okay. You can play zero, zero. If they were in the wrong place, like, it goes to the zero is here and then slide, it's swap players. Cool. Yeah, once you learn. Oh, those are most programs like that, but we are live once again. We are here. We are now. I am not salty. Good game to Chino, but it is your boy DJ along with here with Stairwell. We're super excited to commentate. I think this is the start of top eight. I believe it is. We're in the winner's semifinals with Shigura and Sly. Yes. I can't believe I just and forgot Sly. that after we just saw Trademark set it up. Yeah, it's all good. But here we are. I'm super excited. This should be... Now, Shigura, he's played a few different characters today. He's gone his Krom. He's gone his Roy. Um, I don't think I've seen any Sephiroth today, but I think Krom and Roy both do a really good job against Terry. And Roger's Terry, oh, Sly's Terry, excuse me, Sly's Terry, no joke. That that Terry, as we saw earlier in his game, his set against Tobo, super close, went all the way down to game three, but got the clutch jab jab into the up for the kill. So it should be very interesting to see how they uh, adapt to one another. Absolutely. Which I'm super excited for. Them. Absolutely, and I think they have some very similar play styles in just really being able to get in your face and making you feel helpless. If Sly is able to get these combos off of Terry, then you know, that's a very dangerous setup to be in, and Shigura himself is very good at, like, manning his chair confirms with Krom or Roy, for that mm -hmm. matter. Sephiroth, a little unsure about that, but it looks like he's going to be going towards Roy and Sly with the trademark Terry. Here we go, game one. We should be starting off um, with this new stage list that we're doing to give us um, um, a tournament coming up this weekend. We've got Hazards on, no PS2. Yeah, no PS2. Well, it looks like we are starting off with the substitute PS2 in small battle group. Substitute PS2. Yeah, either way, we are on our way, and Shigeru immediately getting a nice little combo off stage on Sly. He's able to get back though only momentarily. And we are. So here we go with Shigeru with his really good at ledge trapping, especially with any character he has. He's very good at it. Um, but Sly being able to get off, crack shoot right at him. Um, crack shoot's a great. Oh, side B is so strong! <laughs> side B is gonna do it, and Sly is going to lose his first stock very early in these bouts. Shigeru did a really good job of taking advantage of Sly's limited get up off of Terry. 100%. And then the up B out of shield to show him, hey, you can't touch my shield for free. I'm gonna up B out of shield you every time. And man, Shigeru already. Oh! Ooh, the air dodge read out of Shigeru taking Sly's second stock, not even a minute into the match. Can we get it? Can we get it below a minute? Oh, there's no way. <laughs> no, no. There's no way. Almost, though, but there's that up the shield again. What? Just your get off me option. Now, Terry, a character who can for sure bring this back, but Shigeru has just been in his face this whole time. Terry needs that, that minimal amount of space to. Ooh, very Ooh. unfortunate recovery out of slot. We're gonna we're, we're gonna slough that game off. We're gonna slough that game off. Slough Not this. even 90 seconds long, and it goes to Shigura. Very unfortunate out of Sly, but put Shigura in a very good position going forward. Barely For even sure. Had to... I do believe we are in best of fives now. We will be in best of fives, so, so he's got a little bit of room to breathe. But man, barely even had to mess with his controller, and he's game up. I know. It was almost. Was that a button check? <laughs> Does anybody know? But, uh, so we'll see, but yeah, so Terry, he needs that small amount of space, like he needs you close to the end to get those jab confirmed, F tilt confirmed, down tilt confirmed, but with Roy's airspeed and his fantastic aerials, he can just keep oh, airing. Oh, Ooh, Sly is bringing out the Kazuya against Ooh. Shigeru's Roy here. Oh, there's potential here, There is ladies potential and gents, here. there is potential Three, here. Sly's Kazuya can have some patience to it, so this will be interesting to see what he does here, which... Already off to a bit of a start. Two frames with the neutral B? Two frames with neutral B. Already at 80% and he's dead. Not even 20 seconds in. That is a zero to death for Yeet Smash if I ever saw one. Sly's gotta be careful. Like He's barely even spent two minutes collectively against Shigeru. Don't want him to get the 
getting, getting, in, getting, in, getting in everybody's head right now. Ooh, nice little Kazuya confirm reading the jump with the neutral beat. Oh, misses the edge guard. Shigura had to go high, but ended up missing just barely. Oh, jab back air, so good. Let's see, let's see. Now, I haven't seen any electric hits. I know, I know Sly. And gone, and we're down to our last one. Once again, down to his last stock, barely even a minute into this match. Shigura just doing a very good display of aggression against Sly. Sly finally taking Shigura's stock off of him. With the laser, going to take that out. But here we go again. Shigura just keeping him at ledge. Jab, F smash, so much damage. Sly showing us that he does know the electric, but can he optimize them to their fullest potential? That's going to be the big turning point of this if he continues to stay as Kazuya. We'll see but, right now, he's still on the ropes as Kazuya up to 100% on his very last stock against the very clean Shigeru and his voice so far. Now with the Rage mechanic, if he does land this grab, it will take the stock. Oh, I think the Rage just went away. Oh, he just did. That's very unfortunate. That is unfortunate. Very fortunate for Shigeru. We'll see if he can put this away right then and there. He just did. Commentator's blessing. Commentator's blessing. Boy, that was a fierce battle. Damn. Not Damn. so Two games in under four minutes. Two two games, not even four minutes. Man, you gotta. You know what are you thinking if you're a sly right now? That's Man, if, I'm, if I'm sly, I'm I'm taking a second right here. I'm not trying to get into here. Here he is. He's not going straight back into the game. He needs to stop. He needs to think. He's gonna pull out the Ryu. He's showing all the fighting game characters tonight. He's, he's showing all of his sly. Here. A former Ryu main in Smash Four was quite good. Um, was super excited because he can't get put in the game. When Terry got put in, of course, that's the one he put it all into. But Ryu going to be doing a lot, do, have really good options with, with the, the Hadoken. Um, sorry, so many different fighting locations. I'm trying to remember all their different terms. Um, but Hadoken is going to be, especially the Fire Hadoken, is going to be really good. Multi-hitbox, great presence. Doesn't go very fast, but it's a good keep out of my space move. It's a very good zoning option out of Ryu, very good fear of presence, and I think what Sly's gonna try to rely on here is a bit of a baby punish out of Ryu. No shot that <laughs> that caught him. No, my god, once again losing his stock very early in the match. Shigeru just no mercy. This Roy just putting so much damage on And the, the Shoyu from Ryu very much nerfed in this game compared to Smash 4. So... Gosh, Shigura calm down. He wanted the read, but he's not gonna get it. He's, he's gonna, gonna get the read, but he's gonna get that one. Okay. He can Sly can do this. He just needs to keep his composure. Ryu very strong, very good combo game. He just Shigura just keeps landing on him Shigura really is just being very aggressive on Sly right now, but if there's any player Okay, if there's if any regular up the out of shield. Thing. Regular up the out of shield will do it. If there's any player in this scene that is never down until that screen says game, it is Sly. For sure. Shigura just putting on a clean show about how to deal with these fighting game characters. Getting up in their face, getting those stocks so unbelievably early. Not even a chance to take advantage of the rage mechanic in this game. No quite a few counters. Oh, that is a. Dirty way to end the match, but Shigger is gonna get it nonetheless. A 3 0 over Sly. Very quick winner semifinals. I am. Wow. That is just. If I'm Sly, I'm going into losers with the mindset of that happened, how do we do better? Absolutely. That's the yes. only way you get better at this game. Is sometimes you just get your head rocked down. Sometimes they just put those hands on you, slap you around silly, till you don't know if it's Wednesday or Tuesday. <laughs> but you move forward. We have the stream, so he can go back, he can watch the VOD and go, okay, maybe in what area could I get better in for next time? And that's what stream's all about, you know? It's 
Sly is a very talented player in this scene. One of my favorites to really watch with this Terry. Always puts on a show. For sure. And I think with this match, he's really going to be able to have to look back at that set and try and improve from that there. So. I wouldn't call those good matchups by any means. I think Roy does very well against the fighting game characters. So maybe maybe it is just like a, maybe just the matchup isn't great and he was struggling. But still, no matter the matchup, it's a player versus player game. You know, if you can adapt to the player and their play style, you can succeed. I totally agree. But um, moving on to our next set here in winter semifinal, we have Thirsty and Nationwide on stream once again. The former Bowser Jr. never to play again, so remain forever nationwide. Versus the very consistent, so good. Oh, they're going to backwards. Uh, camera, camera needs to backwards. I will break this next set. We will get that taken care of, Art. Camera is just backwards. Not the camera. It's all good, just the names are backwards, but that's okay. We got Nationwide on the Sora, and we got Thirsty on the Palace. That is all we need to know to go into this game. Oh, definitely, and Nationwide Sora, like, he's been very committed to this character and putting on an amazing show with him very quickly in his character's lifespan. And we're seeing it on display right here, very nice, and being able to just try and keep Thirsty at bay, not letting him get an inch with his aerial combo. Sora, man, super, super cheesy on those first couple days. The, that up B was killing people. And way too low of a percent of people were getting hit with all kinds of ridiculous setups that 100% are not true, but those people, like Nationwide, put the time in, found those kill combos. Falling forward air into F smash. You got up air into up B. Such good, up B so strong. And Nair can be so tricky with the loops you can do, just hitting the first two hits, resetting, throwing out the Nair again. Um, but Palutena, Consistent as always. Palutena, Such a good character. Don't need no DLC analysis to put that stock away. Just one forward air, see you later nationwide, but not gonna let that get to him. Still got a stock to take away about a minute and a half into this match. Um, this match significantly slower pace than we the are, last. We are seeing a match longer Whoa. than two minutes. And there we have it there, nationwide getting the up smash on Thirsty, and he's going to even up the stock lead. And see that right there, that was a labbed confirm right there. This man knew if I hit an air right here, I can lead this into an up smash. And Sora's up smash, very good. Very good hitbox, very strong. They got the scoop hitbox as well. So. And those scoop hitboxes are very impressive, especially on a character like Sora with his extended reach with the key blade. And, you know, nationwide, he's going to find that. He's going oh, to take full sure. advantage of it. Very good at ledge trapping as well with the multi-hit uh, floaty nature of Sora's aerials. You can just kind of hover in that get-up attack, uh, standard get-up roll area, and you can react to what they do with still throwing out all three of those moves, but at a different time. Nationwide, losing that first talk so early, but brought this game all the way back. We are very close right now. Up there, gonna sneak through the bottom right there. He did a really good job trying to even this match up. He's oh, down the road, smash, barely missing. He did, now he's back on the roads, but if there's any character that's comfortable offstage, it's Nationwide and his Sora. Oh, know? for sure. One of the best offstage I would say characters. He, I would say he is the best. Hands like, down. Me, I'm a Pac-Man player myself. That's what I initially thought before Sora. Like, I can go as deep as I want. I'm not afraid. Sora just came in to be thrown in. Oh, for sure. One big weakness of Sora right there, though, is the side B can be very inconsistent with snapping to ledge when you recover. And it can get you stocks taken away so early as we just saw. And the old trick, and I think Thirsty is going to have to take advantage of that because Paulo Tana herself has a lot of end guarding options. Oh, great ledge trapping options. A lot of ledge sure. trapping options, so both characters are going to need to play very carefully on stage. Thirsty doing a good job of trying to adapt and just analyzing what few weaknesses the sword has on stage. But that carry that shield is going to take that. Resetting, getting the Blizzard Ga up. Maybe, maybe Nationwide's learned some, uh, maybe he's put some time into the lab. Maybe he's got some few Blizzard got combos that he can, he can set up. Down throw forward air does not work at zero. You do need some percent on you before it will connect. But Thirsty just saying, get away from me, man. I got no interest in playing with your little Keyblade here. I want to keep you as far away from me as possible. Definitely Thirsty taking advantage of a lot of his zoning options on Sora here in order to keep him and his Keyblade at bay, and now he's already got him off stage with a very hefty percent lead over Nationwide, and still play, playing very patiently against Thirsty's range guarding options in order to seal this match away. Very good defense out of Nationwide. 
still winnable, but very, very tough. Oh, is that Nair going to take it? Yeah, yeah. Nair Sora is being take such it. a light character. It, it is going to die. It is so tricky once you get grabbed on by this Palutena. It is... So many different DI mix-ups you could do. Forward throw, down throw into a bear. Mix them up with whatever you want. There's just so much Palutena can do. Once you get grabbed on ledge at a high percent like that, just say your prayers. Pick a god. Alright, looks like we've got the names fixed up, the player spots fixed up. We're moving into game two. I think we're running it back to Hollow Bastion. If I saw correctly. Hollow Bastion slowly becoming a fan favorite, and when you got a Sora main on stream, can you really blame him? Oh, for sure. Very pretty stage, as always. And Arguably the best looking stage that Smash has ever put into a game. Oh, definitely. We've got I mean, look at that water. Besides that water, we've got a very healthy nationwide. Just kidding. Actually, falling out of the Nair confirmed. Very, very rare do you see Thirsty, such a very seasoned Palutena player miss uh miss those confirms might might be the floatiness might be the weight of uh Sora maybe it was great smash the eye out of nationwide um but he's still at a pretty healthy percent and has the lead at the moment playing a little more passively a little more spacing his aerials a little bit better using those specials I think that's what nationwide is really going to have to take advantage of going up here against Thirsty you know, so I think it is a, a lot of those combinations, just nationwide, having a lot of good SDI under his arsenal, and Sora's floatiness, just really slippery when it comes to those combos, so... Ooh, really missing Ooh. that Thunder God, just right under it. Call out with the up smash says, do not jump over me. Nice little call out out of the up smash out of nationwide, taking first blood, and having a, I would have said, a pretty decent lead over 30 here, gonna get... Gonna be in a little tricky situation off stage against Palutena. He is a bit in no man's land here, but a forward air is gonna get him back on stage. Very nice out of nationwide. Is that Thunder Guard gonna hit? Set up a ledge trapping situation again. Just gonna teleport right to center stage. Says, you know what? I'm resetting neutral. Oh, that oh, up smash. The last thing is so long. lingering up smash is gonna take nationwide's first stock. Very. Very precarious situation, but Thirsty once again demonstrating his amazing ability to just ledge trap anybody that's put in front of him. Yeah, and that was really smart by Thirsty too, right there. Getting the grab on a nationwide at zero at ledge. He knows that he's not going to get a bunch of nares out of it, so he just settles for one nair in the back here. Gives him damage, set up the ledge trap again, and then already back in the lead. Goes for the up smash again, says maybe I can get him a second time. Down Ooh, not, throw, not going to. Not in these close matches, not often, but. Nationwide is a fast learner when it comes to these matches. Almost got the kill, Ooh, and he goes up for it. He goes up for it. Almost had it with that up smash, and he pursued it with the up air in order to secure it. Ooh. That side B does such a good job at tricking and setting up for potential uh, like tech chases on platforms. Uh, if you miss the tech, you can get hit with an up smash. If you air dodge, it can just re grab you. Hit you with really whatever you want. So the falling up air almost setting up for some serious damage. Very much so, Sora. Yeah, I, I <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Sometimes we can just watch, man. You don't have to say anything. Sora showing that he can go so deep, though. Oh, definitely. Thirsty almost getting that ledge trap with the Nair, but Sora playing very patiently, just using his depth of recovery to his advantage in order to just try and deny Thirsty of some of his ledge guarding options. And that's probably going to be Nationwide's best bet here. Yeah, I know Nationwide doesn't want to lose this stock. If he can, he wants to end the game right here. He does not want to take it to a last stock situation because Thirsty is, as the level of player that he is, he can bring that comeback. Oh, absolutely. This is going to be very advantageous for Nationwide in game and in set, but he is not going to get it. He's going to have his rage reset. Thirsty still at a solid kill percent if he does slip up against Nationwide and his Sora. Almost had there, but Nationwide going to have to just try and secure something solid and oh! early, but he's not going to get it. The reverse ledge trap wow. with the Palutena Dare going to spike him. He's going to put it away, and suddenly we have a 2-0 in Thirsty's favor. Yeah, I told you. I told you. Thirsty, the caliber of player he is, very capable of making that comeback. And as we saw, he did. Reading the neutral beat. Nationwide had a habit of jumping in, throwing out one of the neutral beats. One of those specials, one of those spells. 
and Thirsty just went above him, knew that he uh, he was on Blizzard Ga, was not gonna hit him throughout that diner attack incredibly early. So here we go, game three back to Hollow Bastion. We are going back to Hollow Bastion for game three, you know. Once again, if I'm nationwide, may not have been as quick as the matches with uh, Shigar and Sly were, but you know, you really have to just shake something like that off. You had that lead. Yeah, great but, uh, adaptation too. From the first game, Nationwide made such a good adaptation in going into the second game. Had the lead the majority of the game. Was so healthy on the beginning of his second stock, Thirsty on his last. He just got, just got the clutch factor of Thirsty just ended that game. It really but here is. we go again. He still is in lead right now. He's he's understanding what he needs to do. It's just a matter of stopping Thirsty from getting in. From, doing what he needs to do. It's, it's very good adaptability and situational awareness out of Nationwide, but you know, Thirsty just very consistent player, always on you, never really, never really out, especially if you're on stage against a Thirsty. Palutena with that, with great aerials, great back air, great forward air, any of those that hits you too deep off stage, she's going to make it back and you're going to lose your spot. Oh, absolutely. Really anything out of Palutena. Thirsty, such a talented player, just really able to recognize what out of his arsenal he's able to in order to put the match away. We saw it there. Getting the back draw nationwide in order to try and keep him off stage. And almost got the misread the counter. Very good patience out of nationwide in order to get back on stage. Down throw into the back air. Another another leg grab out of Thirsty. Just one of the most solid options you could get out of Thirsty. Super smart out of him too, getting hit with the Blizzard God, getting put in the ice cube, but not matching. Nationwide really wanted him to match pass so that that up air would hit. Stayed inside the ice cube, took the damage, but he still has to stop. Yes, yeah, a very good situational awareness out of Thirsty. Just playing, putting his skills on display. He's just playing very patiently. Almost getting another down throw back air, but he's not going to get it that early out of Nationwide. Way too far to do a back throw. Not going to kill with the up Nice little teleport read out of Nationwide, able to secure the first stock out of Thirsty, eating up the game before it can get too far out of his hands. Thirsty does love to teleport to the platform. That's something he does enjoy really to do. Really smart thing to that auto radical. Nationwide has been doing. Charged up the up smash, tried to read him, but Nationwide very quickly recognizing the leg off in order to get back into stage control out of Nationwide. <laughs> I talk too fast, I say wrong words. It happens, it happens. <laughs> good down tilt, good, good length of the keyblade, good spacing options for this character, Palutena. Not necessarily, it doesn't have that same reach. It does have to kind of get in closer, but auto reticle is a great way to close that distance, force them into shield so that they can make their way in. But. You know, the stock's not gone yet, so it's still possible. There's the, there's the, ooh, up, up smash on stage that Nationwide's just gonna walk that's into. That's a crazy read. Nationwide walked up and spot dodged. And Thirsty just walked up slowly and spot dodged? <laughs> Nationwide. Well, here we go. Here we go. Thirsty well, just taking the seat. A bit of a chain of air about Thirsty in order to take the lead, but Nationwide. Ooh, got a nice little Thundaga off stage in order to try and keep Thirsty at bay, but... Ooh, that still... We hit a back air is not going to take that stock. Not going to take the stock, but still going to put Thirsty on the ropes. Uh, Thirsty's going to take it right back with the down throw back air. Not going to kill, but it's going to put Nationwide in a very precarious situation with Thirsty. And another potential 3-0 right here. Almost. Almost. going to take that stock. going to take that stock. The power of 69, it is there. And we're down to last stock in game three, 2 0 na na Nationwide. Thirsty's favor. It's very possible. We saw Thirsty make the comeback. It is very possible for Nationwide to do the same thing. Sora, great, powerful smash attacks. The upbeat could kill so early. Falling forward air into F smash is a confirm. Now it's just all about getting the damage. And Thirsty doing such a good job of playing that distance, saying you have to approach me. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna approach you. You have to come to me. Really nice patience out of Thirsty, really recognizing that Nationwide is going to want to rack up the damage if he wants to take oh, this. Oh, that that side be onto stage is so dangerous. Oh my goodness. Thirsty knowing he's so close to the 3-0, maybe a little button flub. There's that one hit of the side B again, potentially setting up for some good damage, maybe even a kill, but. Yeah, nationwide so just gonna have this. Oh my goodness, it's so tense. You can just feel it. You can cut it with a knife. Oh, good reaction on that teleport behind him. 
But he can't get grabbed. He can't get hit with an F smash. He can't get hit with an up smash. But here we go. Take the damage is here now. A crazy counter. Very much potential to end that game right there. By nationwide, but nationwide, he is he's getting Paul Ten up to a bit of a kill percent here. Nationwide thirsty got nationwide back off stage, no man's land, but oh, just a very patient, very tense game. Oh, Paul Ten is bare as a tangible. It's so difficult to get around. Oh, oh my rolls oh in. My goodness, up tilt. Up till, Chasing oh, him down. With the up air. Nice. Air dodge out of first. Dash Ooh, attack. Dash he attack's gonna, gonna take, take it. 3-0 oh, over Nation Wide. On Thirsty. What a tense game out of both of these players. Excuse me, guys. I was taking a bite of my dinner. Oh, I need dinner. I, I, I have made terrible habits of not eating before I get to these things. Come and take late, and then I'm just starving the I'm, whole time. I'm thinking about food. We want to talk about air bread and butters. I don't even want to hear that. <laughs> like, don't mention bread. <laughs> No. Yeah. Well, here we go yeah, with we're... Chino and Nationwide. Nationwide just gonna stay on, gonna rock right into the loop, just keep his momentum. Um, Chino and I, we just got done playing not too long ago, so he's also still pretty warm. Going Banjo tonight. Uh, I know he typically plays a lot of Pyro and Mithra, maybe, and also a lot of Wolf as well. So the Banjo tonight was a little bit of a, a shock for me. I didn't even know he had, but he played very well. Doing really good, keep the Banjo very much a slow player. You wanna play that grenade? Get those hits. Something into a Wonder Wing eventually. Definitely. I mean, Chino has really just wanted to try and put Banjo on the scene a little bit with his character selection of Wolf and Pyra Mithra. So it's really nice to see these uncommon characters like Banjo being put into the hands of a talented player like Chino and yeah. just really seeing them make waves with them. For sure. Chino uh, plays lots of the cast. He's got lots of different players. I remember he used to play. Uh, Cloud in the beginning stage of this game. Oh, we got some drag down nares into a down smash. Oh, Chino taking the first stock over nationwide. That grenade great interrupt. Just gonna get smacked against the stage though. And now we're playing Smash 4 with two characters <laughs> that wish they were in there. Uh, oh, too was that too soon? But they're in here. They're in the better game. They are in definitely the better game, for sure. Um, depending on what kind of character you played in Smash 4, like myself, I was a DK Luigi main, so I loved the cheese that Smash 4 gave me. Um, but I know a lot of people did not, but that's why this game is so much better, because now we get characters like this who can... Almost got the double egg into the up smash. Almost did, but not quite gonna get it. Gonna get a little bit of a... Bit of a jab out of it, but not much. Oh my gosh, egg into the up tilt. Oh, through that grenade upwards. Good, good way, another not mashing not to get hit with the up tilt. That's a very strategic play out of nationwide. Man, Chino is. Chino is in firm control. He, is, he has been in a lot of control over nationwide so far with his bando, just trying to play patiently with the grenade. He's just playing so slow. He's just, he's just doing what he wants, and it's working. It's, uh, Nationwide just can't find his way in with Sora. What do you do? Just character like Banjo, you never really see. Just what do I do against this guy? Yeah, it's a, with characters that don't get played very often, it can be very hard because you don't know the matchup. Yeah, especially the character so new, like Sora. Um, learning the matchups can be difficult in these early days. Yeah, definitely, it is a double-edged sword on Nationwide's part. Like, you may not know how to play against the Sora, but the Sora may not know how to play against you. Exactly. exactly. That's what made Kazuya such a good character. No one knew what to do, and he was just steamrolling. But throwing that dare out could be a really good thing, but also really bad. Ooh, needing to use the Wonder Wing in order to get back on stage, and he's not even going to get that. Very nice. 
edge guarding options out of Nationwide using the Thundaga to keep Chino at bay, but right now Nationwide is very much uh, just one solid hit and the match is going to be over for him. So Chino really is in full position right now. Just like that, almost got the Dragon back air up smash to end the match. Almost. <laughs> In chat, get this banjo out of here. Tell Chino to go cloud. I wish he would have gone cloud. I wish he could have gone cloud. I heard he's going. He's trying to drift away from cloud a little bit, and I think that's a bit a reason why he wanted to go banjo here. Very much to just see how he could do. I know he's probably been putting some work into the lab with the banjo, so he's wonder winging the wrong way. Wonder wing wrong way. Uh, chill out. And don't get me wrong, he, Sora may be at a high percent, but. Bandra doesn't necessarily have very many confirms besides uh, the do, tried and true back throw. You do have a back throw at the ledge, which will put the match in Chino's favor. So here's here's where we uh, where, where we see the resolve of Nationwide. Will he ever go Bowser Jr. again? Does he value the win more or the character? I've more? seen him. I've seen him pull out his na his Bowser Jr. in and some free tournaments. I haven't really seen it in these old Smash Roads recently, I'll tell you that much. He's been very committed to Sora, and he's had the results to back it up, so can you really blame him? Mm. I mean, making it all the way to winner's semis, and then down here in the loser's quarters. So it should be, it'll be interesting to see exactly uh, how far Nationwide can take this character throughout as the meta develops, as the character develops, because Sora is so new. Um, like Banjo, I mean, early days of Banjo, no one really knew how to play this character, but as we've seen, like with Leon, and now we're like with with Chino, it's like people are adapting this character and finding new confirms, new ways to play him. Everybody's got a different playstyle they like to do, and some people they can work with it. Like like Chino's been working with it, made it all the way here to lose quarters. Same argument can be made for both characters, and they're both really showing their own here. Very even match. We're seeing nationwide amazing and quick adaptability to any character that's in front of him. But, you know, just gonna answer right back, down throw, down smash, in order to even up the game. Once again, a Smash 4 situation that I do not miss. Yeah, I, not great. I was a Pac-Man player. I took I took Ultimate Pac-Man and I never looked back. <laughs> well, the Ultimate Pac-Man is significantly better. Oh my goodness, it feels so good. <laughs> This game going significantly better for Nationwide though. Made the adaptations, took that first game and said, all right, now, now I can know what to do a little bit more. And so, significantly closer game right now. Chino still with the lead, gonna be keeping that space, gonna be shooting those eggs, pulling grenades, throwing grenades. Um, the wannabe snake just throwing all these projectiles all across the, the platform. Wannabe snake. I, I have seen Chad, and it. with the way this is going, depending on how game two goes, maybe Gino should consider going Cloud. Maybe. Well, who knows, oh, that but right Wonder now, Wonder Wing whipped on the shield. Got a very even match. We're seeing Nationwide's adaptability on display here in game two. Very different story. Mm -hmm. Instead of going for a down throw there, it goes for a back throw. Very smart. He's been doing really good on the ledge, ledge trapping. Goes a little crazy with that Wonder Wing. I don't know exactly what that was for. Gonna die to that F2. I mean, I maybe he's recognizing, like, I'm at a pretty high percent. I'm probably gonna die soon anyway. And he's gonna get the Wonder Wing right there, actually. Just that move makes me angry. Throw it out. What have you got to lose? I know. Except uh, for a Wonder Wing use. Yes, that's true. I, but uh, but now he's on his last stock. One Wonder Wing down, four left. Um, but Nationwide played significantly better this game, not getting run over. In the first game, he kind of just let Chino do whatever he wants. Chino back throwing into the grenade with that setup, but only got the grenade after. It wasn't really able to find anything else. No, oh, wasn't able to capitalize. Just Nationwide doing good nair in order to skip the Zaga. Trying to get another back throw into the grenade, not going to get it. Situation. Very even, very tense situation for both players. This is where the games are won and lost mentally. Oh yeah, these are these are. Are you born with the clutch factor, man? Do you have it? Do you have it? Man? Ooh, swinging Kazooie like a baseball bat in order to put the set away. Chino is now up 2-0 in the set. Nationwide definitely made the adaptations though. That game was playing significantly better. So I think this third game. 
Nationwide keeps that mental strength that he do quite well. I think he could. We really did see that match really could have gone either way. Just Chino putting it away sooner than I would have expected. With a crazy read on the side. Yeah, it's very Nationwide nice. has not done that in either set that he's been in, so... I guess he did it a few times for Thursday, but not in this set. That was the first. Yeah, that was so maybe Chino was just waiting for it. Crazy platform read out of Chino, but right now we're going to be going into game three. 2 0 Chino's favor. Right now, getting getting quite a bit of a lead in combos all of Nationwide, but Nationwide going to answer right back with Sora's aerial game. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to stand there, just, watch, watch Kazooie just go to town. Watch Kazooie wild out. Eh, I got Thundaga on my side. I was probably trying to think, if I try to do forward air into F smash, is it going to land? Is it maybe not going to land? Just decides to go for the solid damage of the Thundaga. We saw the, the interesting Wonder Wing out of Chino on the ledge, trying to read the get up option out of Nationwide, but playing patiently. Just... It's been interesting to see Chino's use of the Wonder Wing, especially on ledge, because the Wonder Wing can two frame. Like it's it's got such a lasting hitbox. Sora going so low, but what am I talking about? He's gonna make it at back. Sora is ten not. out of ten times. Sora is oh nine. I actually gave somebody with Sora earlier in bracket, so well maybe, you shouldn't have. Not, they should have made it back. Maybe ninety nine out of a hundred. I got lucky. <laughs> But right now, back to the match, Chino just trying to impress Nationwide off stage with a variety of banjo moves that here. Very good mix up options out of Chino in order to keep Nationwide at bay. Either one, ooh, the up tilt going to take first blood from Chino. From Nationwide, excuse me. But Chino very deep off stage. I almost call him Platinum. Uh, Nationwide. Just needs to end this stock, man. Really he's got, he's got to find a way. But Chino's just gonna run from him. He's, he's just gonna run. Cause what? Why does he need to approach? He can just keep going away, pull grenade, shoot egg. Yeah, just gonna jump over the grenade into a back air. Landing back air is gonna do it. Barely even got a hit on Nationwide. That entire stock just. Chino did a lot of running away that stock Nationwide. Really got the room to even up the match how he wanted. Lots of potential there, potentially for some offstage shenanigans. Um, Gonna pull it back on stage, so just resetting the neutral. Randy forward smash, gonna get thrown out, just, just gonna get shielded, take a few damage for it. Falling up air into another up air, one of the few things that Sora has that can combo into itself, other than just the three bit of fair, three bit of nair. But we have seen Nationwide do two nairs into an up smash, so it, it, I'm interested to see. I wonder if that's a percentage specific thing, or if that's a depending on. At what side that they get hit? The bullet combo. Ooh, he's just gonna down throw into jab. Just a jab. Uh, I wonder if that was supposed to be an edge. I wonder oh, if it was an getting smash. the two frame off on ledge with the Wonder Wing, as you were saying earlier, to put away Nationwide stock. Wow, Chino just you know just really doing a lot of what he wants in this game once again, but Nationwide just cannot let it get to him. He's going to need to take this stock quick and. Quick. He's gonna need to take it quick, and he's gonna need to put a lot of damage on after. He needs to not take a lot of damage already in his 60s. Well, and, and with the lighter character like Sora, you need to be very careful with that. Ooh, the Blizzard huh? on stage! A very interesting ledge option, but it is gonna work out, and Nationwide is going to get that kill on Chino. We may have gotten it, but now we've reset the Wonder Wings. Now we've got five more attempts to that would for sure take the stock in around 100, 110. Yeah, we're really here. Chino's been playing very patiently with the Wonder Wings. As soon as he decides to let it rip, it could just end the set right then and there. Yeah, with another 3-0 right on now, Nationwide. Yeah, you can see Nationwide right now really just trying to zone, play a patient game right now, recognizing that he is in no man play percentage wise. Oh. The Wonder Wing on the ledge. Wanting to hit right with the two frame again. The drag down back air into up bear, gonna miss, gonna eat a forward smash for it. Oh, he wanted Oh, it. Nationwide wants to get him so bad. Oh, Nationwide wanted to put it away with the Blazaga, but back not throw. gonna get it. I feel like so many of Nationwide's games have been so down to the wire like this. Oh, goes for the oh, counter, it's gonna get down throw into down the up tilt. Oh, oh, very unfortunate out of Nationwide, but very fortunate for Chino taking the set 3-0 Nationwide. Wow. Nationwide losing 3-0 to Thirsty and then 3-0 to 
Chino. Very unfortunate out of Very unfortunate. Here. But I very much admire the fact that he stuck with Sora the whole time. I, Continuing to just wanting to learn to get better so that this can be the man and he can take tournaments as Sora. I I totally agree. And we've seen we've seen nationwide put up the results. I mean, mm -hmm. I Correct me if I'm wrong in the past, he has seen a run all the way to losers finals with Sora, to losers semifinals with Sora, like he's put up the results to back up his time with Sora. 100 percent And you really gotta admire that. And with with Chino too, just picking up a banjo pretty recently and yeah. just making these many waves already in loser semis. <laughs> right? Doing such a good job. Really gotta admire that on both characters. Well, that's half of a top eight. Let me go see if there's anybody else who wants to commentate. I want to take more. Is there anybody else who likes to commentate? I can commentate if you want to take a break. I can commentate if you need a break. Yeah, if you want, you can. Sure. Um, I would like to just eat my food. Go <laughs> for it. I mean, you know. Thankfully, I brought my eight-foot charging cord so I can reach nice. a low one out. Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you missed me. Trademark, back on the mic. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, going into St. Pepsi versus Sly. Don't know where St. Pepsi is. Uh, Wherever he is, he's a big shot. There they are. There he is. Alright, here we go. Uh, I think, yeah, this should be this should be best of um, best of five. This is gonna be a very interesting um, game because St. Pepsi just the master of knowing, um, the master of Steve basically knows all the text, knows all the, um, all the various matchups. Uh, but Sly, the master of Terry at the scene, just incredible at um, comeback factor and clutching out sets, getting really good kill confirms and lots of damage really quickly. So we're gonna have to see who can, who can get in and who can do what they what do what their character does the best. It's gonna be. A very interesting set all around. I really do enjoy watching these two uh, characters, watching these two play. Um, but them versus each other, this is going to be one heck of a matchup. Uh, let's see, what are they picking for music? Castlevania. Castlevania. Divine bloodlines on small battlefield. <laughs> interesting. It's very uh, cinematic uh, music. Let's see if they got it right. Oh, we are. Ooh, uh, slide breaking up the. Oh, not breaking up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we thought. Hey, <laughs> no, excuse me. Same Pepsi not breaking out the uh, the the King K roll quite yet. <laughs> uh, here we go into game one on small battlefield. Uh, Terry versus versus uh, versus the Steve, the super vicious Steve. Uh, Saint Pepsi honestly makes uh, Terry combos look weak in, in comparison to the Steve combos. Uh, Saint Pepsi. Really good with the, the Steve combos, and it honestly seems like Terry is struggling to get in right now versus St. Pepsi. That's not, it's, he's not gonna let that deter him whatsoever, though. He knows that he can eventually get in. Good tech off the block, really clutching it out right there. Uh, throwing out aura waves, but uh, all St. Pepsi has to do is short hop minecart to get over them and avoid that little bit of uh, picking away damage. Definitely very smart adaptation out of St. Pepsi, and really, he can put out, he put out a block too, either. And we've seen this man just. He, he can wild out with his block placements. <laughs> exactly, and um, we may we may very well see the Saint Pepsi, um, which is a block at the ledge into back throw, which creates such a such a hairy situation for any player in that position. Uh, if you tech it, you can get F smashed. If you don't tech it, you're dead. So it's very difficult to um, get out of that situation safely. Looks like he's setting some kind of having some kind of setup going on right now with the block directly above him. I bet you he's trying to go in to grab up throw up smash. Uh, Sly, knowing better though, throwing out aura waves to make sure that he doesn't get caught by anything. Oh, is this the same Pepsi? Is it the same Pepsi? It's Ooh, not the same Pepsi. Almost had it, but just barely gonna whip that. Sly with good DI though, getting out of that. Ooh, not barely living. 
Tit for tat, you don't get the back air St. Pepsi, and <laughs> Sly that. doesn't get his. This Sly doesn't get his kill confirmed. No kill confirms for anybody. Oh, here it comes. He's fishing for it, throwing out the fishing rod. Not gonna get it though. Uh, Sly throwing out, ooh, using the extension on the crafting table to get that last final hit on St. Pepsi. Really good situational awareness coming out from Sly. St. Pepsi though, not gonna let that get to him whatsoever. Throwing out the minecart for a little bit of extra damage, trying to set something up at the ledge, but mistiming it just a little bit. Here comes the go meter in full effect. Down tilt at the ledge, really gonna do terrible things to Terry, and there it goes, not even being able to use the go meter. No go meter for Sly, and that's really where we've seen players just like take the, the most advantage out of Sly's Terry, just put away the go moves before he's even able to really take advantage of them. Right now, St. Pepsi how well on that one straight up there. <laughs> he's really trying to get damage. Oh, up there into up B, not gonna get any, um, gonna get a lot of damage. Ooh, set it up. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, the block disappearing. Oh, but it doesn't even matter. St. Pepsi even... gets the four air spike. Just very good situational awareness out of St. Pepsi, just realizing that he's not going to get that, the classic St. Pepsi, so just, you know, plan B. Yeah, plan B, just throw out the forward air and hopefully it'll spike. Uh, St. Pepsi missing the crafting table, trying to get back on stage with the blocks and the minecart. He's got plenty of resources for it, but Sly is really being super oppressive with his on-stage gameplay. Jab, jab into up. Up is going to do it, though. Evening up the stocks. Evening up the stocks and evening up the game, really. Sly is up in percent over St. Pepsi, but not by much. And that's changing very quickly. Good lord. It's really difficult because St. Pepsi right now has their clutch factor of the diamond tools. But at the same time, the second Sly gets enough damage, they'll have their clutch factor. Definitely. Like, both, both of these players can have their clutch factor to them. Exactly. This is clutch factor versus clutch factor right now in this final stock. Just... <laughs> some, of the most in, some of the most interesting sets you can really see here, and right now St. Pepsi with the advantage, just having the better ground to just throw really whatever he wants, but maybe not anymore as Sly gets to his go moves. Yeah, go. Uh, the go meter is in full effect right now. He's setting up for the St. Pepsi. Will St. Pepsi get the St. Pepsi? St. Pepsi's getting the St. Pepsi, but Sly's also setting up for the Sly. Really good tech coming out, but the Buster Wolf, not going to kill just yet. Not going to kill just yet, but putting St. Pepsi at a very even... Oh, that should be it. Ooh, yep, that that's going to be, be it. it. Catching the pop out from the mine car, getting the stock, and getting the game. Game one to St. Pepsi. We love to see these matches. Hello. Also, chat, I'm not sponsored, but I do recommend. Um, in, uh, I know that it's getting colder out for like, for gameplay and that when it gets cold, your hands start locking up and you can't do inputs as well. I bought a Zippo electric hand warmer for about, it's a little expensive, it's about 40 bucks, but it is absolutely 100% saving my hands right now. It's got like a 10 hour battery on its lowest set, or on its highest setting, uh, and it can charge your phone. So if you can, get an electric hand warmer and save yourself the waste of using all those traditional little hand warmers. Those are just, they really don't compare to an electric one because it has so much, so many more uses to it. But regardless, let's get back into the match. Uh, looks like Sly is going to throw out all sorts of combos on St. Pepsi, trying to get the damage in early. Sly versus St. Pepsi, this match is going to be so incredibly explosive with both players truly mastering the combos of their character. Definitely. Right now, Sly, Sly taking advantage <laughs> of Steve's own block. The St. Pepsi classic, it looks like he's... He looks like Sly's recognized that St. Pepsi's gonna go for many things with the blocks and just saying, you know what, I'll use the blocks too. Sly, barely 3% on him versus St. Pepsi down a stock. It's a very dominant first stock out of Sly. St. Pepsi having a lot of room to having to even up this game, but you know, he does have that first match under his belt, so he does have the advantage of being able to play a little more relaxed against Sly here, while Sly is probably going to want to take this match as soon as he possibly can in the playing field. Exactly. It looks like uh, Sly in advantage. This is exactly where you want to be versus... Ooh, oh, no! Shield, shield break! The shield break Oh, with he's the just going to match that. Oh, oh, is this the same Pepsi Classic? Is this the same oh. Pepsi oh, oh, oh! Oh, my <laughs> God! <laughs> Dude, that was insane! Pepsi, what are you doing? You didn't get the kill, but man, I'm still impressed. Absolute madman. Just... Oh my god. It looks like Sly with the go meter now versus St. Pepsi. Uh, see, this go meter could be such a clutch factor, especially if he manages to keep this stock. 
Oh no! Ooh, he's Is that gonna do it? So deep off stage. Barely getting back! Oh, nice! Magnet hands. <laughs> yeah, magnet hands. Really good recovery coming out from Sly though, knowing to not to match super hard. And the Buster Wolf's gonna take the stock. I can hear Gordon Ramsay now. That Buster Wolf may have been raw, but it did the trick. And that one too. And another one. There we go. 27%. Same Pepsi setting up for the same Pepsi. Not gonna get it though. The block breaking just a little too soon. It looks like he's just building blocks on the edge, trying to get more materials, possibly getting a diamond. <laughs> I think that's what he's looking oh, that for should too. be it. Yep. Ooh, that should be it. Almost did get caught in it, Sly, but... Unfortunately getting caught in it. He does have two stocks, though, so he's perfectly fine where he is right now. Downer not going to spike at the ledge. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, not a two-frame situation. Not a two-frame situation. St. Pepsi going to oh, try no. to Scrooge around the stage, but he is not going to get it. And we have an even set Sly versus St. Pepsi. Fist and Chad, a sad face. Uh, it hasn't really been because we've seen a bit of a string of 3 0s so far on stream. We saw. Who was it? We saw Sly himself get yeah, it was, demolished uh, by Shigeru and his boy. And then it was. Then, uh, Chino took it 3 0 over someone. Chino, not Chino. Um, Thirsty versus. Thirsty Nationwide, Nationwide was 3 0. Chino Nationwide was 3 0. Lots of 3-0s on stream right now. A lot of 3-0s on stream, so, you know, nice to get a break. We'll see a game four here. <laughs> yeah, it's good, to, it's good to get lots of um, lots of games on stream. Plus, it gives more uh, more games for the players to go over in VOD and write down their mistakes and, you know, learn and improve. And that's what stream's all about, really. <laughs> here we go. Into game uh, three onto Hollow Bastion. The center platform, very beneficial uh, to... Honestly, it's not really beneficial to either of them. Um, what do you think? Um, I feel like it could go either way. I feel like on my money might be on Sly here in order to better get some reads in order to get a kill off of the top with whether it be like a flying tackle or with the power geyser. While Steve, he probably would be able to get some tech reads out of the line card on Smash himself, but um. It really could go either way for them. It just depends on which one's going to get the better reads on that platform. That's true. I think this like this stage, this that platform in the middle. Oh, oh down a spike! <laughs> really sending a message nice, to St. Pepsi. Nice jump read out of Sly in order to get that spike on St. Pepsi. Oh, but St. Pepsi, not gonna let it bother him whatsoever. Firing back with the quick 86%, getting ready. Honestly, just St. Pepsi. That's all I gotta say. But St. Oh, Pepsi. No. Unfortunately, going to get an SD off stage there. Suddenly, we have an eerily similar situation to the last game where Sly is up three stock and he's got the Go Meter on his hands. The Go Meter is such a clutch factor. There it is, Buster Wolf up to 60. Up to 60 already, St. Pepsi. Jesus. That's in just oh, but that up there should take it. And there's where the platform comes into play. See, Pepsi recognizing that Sly's probably going to have to play a little more patiently. So Sly, so St. Pepsi just taking advantage of a soft, strong up smash in order to take away those go moves as soon as possible. I think that this particular stage, that platform placement for both of these characters is just so incredibly neutral for both of them. Because both of them can get reads off of that platform. Yet at the same time, it provides no real advantage other than that. It really is. So, really, does the platform come Oh, into is that play? gonna do it? That's gonna do it. Never mind, the platform does yeah. come into play. <laughs> <laughs> it do. Okay. Going into game four. A very, same uh, slide. A very quick game four, actually. Not a quick game four. Game very three. quick game three. All right, picking uh, the music counter pick, one of the most important underrated metas in the game right now. Let's see what they can get. Uh, I think they're running it back to uh, Battlefield, it looks like. So here comes the same characters, uh, Sly with the Terry and the Steve on St. Pepsi. Going into this uh, fourth game, let's see what's going to happen. I believe it was Battlefield. Yep, it's Battlefield. It is Battlefield. We're going to see game four in Sly's favor, two to one. This, uh, this particular stage is going to be very beneficial for St. Pepsi. Um, with all of the platforms, they can really extend their reach no matter what happens, and they can get really gritty setups with the extending side platforms. We really did see that hit there. 
to open the match in, almost to close his first stock. Just Saint has a really, really has that string up there is down to a T. This game is incredibly even right now. Both players using just the simplest of combos to get. Oh, try for St. Pepsi. Not going to get it though. Almost have the St. Pepsi, but Sly, very quick little spot dodge in order to avoid that. St. Pepsi just trying to create some room in order to just get his materials up. Exactly. St. Pepsi right now. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Setting up the St. Pepsi again. Jesus. <laughs> it's, such a it's such a good, reliable, unexpected, uh, like, confirm. Or maybe not confirm, but it's a really good, unexpected option coming out from St. Pepsi. That most players just don't even react to it. And if they do, they check it, they get an F smash, and then they have to check that again. There it is! Oh, the same Pepsi! There it goes. Uh, it's not even, Sly, not able to use his go moves, unfortunately, but St. Pepsi, really fortunately, not not having to deal with um, with the go meter whatsoever. Oh, Steve Combos getting up to 62% right off the of zero. Oh, almost got a TNT on Sly in order to put away that stock even earlier, but not going to get it. TNT about to blow up. Oh, but that's going to do it. Very, very good out of Sly here. It's going to throw away. Uh, it's really what evening. What am I saying? He's evening up the playing there field early, and that's what's going to be important in a game. It looks like they're both just <laughs> trying to get get their own combos on each other, to make sure that they don't um, that they can get the lead. And once they get the lead, all they gotta do is sit back. Um, if St. Pepsi is in advantage and he can sit back properly, all he's got to do is mine for materials until he gets the diamond. I think Sly was missing their double jump. Really unfortunate. Oh, uh, very unfortunate. And I think that's really what's going to be the most interesting thing about this matchup really here. These are two very momentum-based characters, so, like, if one of them can get the advantage early, like, that's bad news for the other. Really, really bad news. Exactly. And it looks like, oh, good read coming out from St. Pepsi, but the problem with that gold tool is... It it's so powerful, but it breaks so quickly. It, it do break, but St. Pepsi, if he really wants it, he's got the diamond on deck. Can, <laughs> I think what he tried, to, he, tried, he tried for a Hail Mary. He wanted the Kamikaze, but not today. Unfortunately for St. Pepsi, the tools are broken. Oh, is that going to do it? That's going to do it. Ooh, nice little punish out of slide that he was absolutely going to need, but now St. Pepsi is going to have diamond tools probably for the remainder of the match. Here. Oh, is that going to do it? <laughs> short remainder it was. A very short remainder it was. In <laughs> order to Five. Are they going to run it back to Battlefield or are they going to pick a different stage? Uh, uh, it's Sly's pick, let's see what they'll do. It is Sly's pick. Final Destination, Final I knew destination. it. I knew it. I knew Sly was going to go to Final Destination. That stage is probably the most advantageous um, for Terry just because it's this long, flat playing field and all they got to do is hold center stage. All they got to do is just have that advantage. No platforms to get in the way, especially for Steve. No no platforms to extend aerial combos out of St. Pepsi. 100%. I think it's going to be Sly with the momentum here, but these are momentum-based characters. Let's see what either of them can do here. Exactly. Sly really, right now, just needs to make sure that they can get the advantage and stay in advantage. They need to stay as hard as they can in advantage. That way they don't have to approach versus all of the super powerful moves um, that St. Pepsi has at their disposal. Plus, they can rush in when they try and get um, materials or resources at all, and it'll just really throw off their gameplay. Definitely, it's a mosquito on screen. A mosquito? Almost. almost. <laughs> I saw something in front of me, but back to the match. Right now, we are seeing Sly with a bit of the momentum here, but St. Pepsi just really just trying to play patient. Oh, Not almost had the St. Pepsi. I think he tried to rebound off the side on purpose, trying to get the read for the up smash. Not the read, the confirm for the up smash. Out of the ball. Out of the box. We're, we're like 10 seconds past this interaction. Words. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> That's fine. Um, St. Pepsi still trying to maintain that center stage control. Trying to keep it away from Terry. Although, here comes the go meter. This go meter will be such a deciding factor, and that F smash is going to take it. No more go meter. Deciding factor indeed, and the fact that it's probably not even going to be one. Exactly. And then here comes... Oh, is that going to do it? Oh, just barely... barely not going to do it. Barely St. Pepsi going to live. Very good DI out of him in order to stay alive for as long as he possibly can. Extending his up air combos. Just... Super meaty, 62% going all the way across all the stage. All the way across <laughs> the stage, and he's going to make this Whee! one. Uh, looks like St. Pepsi's got... Both the gold and the diamond tools at his disposal. 
Oh, that's not gonna get the spike though. Really unfortunate. He needed that spike in order to stay in this. Oh, and that up smash is gonna do it. That up smash is gonna do it, and I would say Sly has a bit of working to do here. And he, he does, but he is 4% away from having his go moves. And there there it, is. it is. The go moves will be such a clutch factor. Oh and no! Not anymore. Looks like uh, St. Pepsi, with the diamond tools right now, is looking extremely good to take this set from Sly. Definitely. This time for sure, probably for the remainder of the match, that will hopefully last more than 10 seconds. Exactly. Those diamond <laughs> tools are so durable and so powerful, it really helps St. Pepsi out when it comes when he needs it. Exactly when the clutch factor is needed, he gets the diamond. 110%! 110%, and Sly has not even gotten an inch on St. Pepsi. He's still got a whole stun. Oh no! Is that going to do it? That's going to do it! That St. Pepsi! is going to do it. With the JV3 on Sly, taking it 3-2 to two in a bunch of really close, really well-played games. Absolutely. I know nobody's going to give it, but an F in the chat for the Go Go Juice has gone down. But we really got to admire both of these players here. These really, in chat, these are my favorite kinds of matchups in Ultimate. I, I agree. I it really just comes down to who can get that momentum first. And, you know, Sly had that stage. This is Sheep and Trademark. I need to use, I need to use, she I use Sheep as a tag, people. Old, old thing. Um, that was something Guru coined when I had a questionable Discord profile picture. But, um, but the other thing was too, I used to play Wolf. So instead of being the wolf in sheep's clothing, I'm the sheep in wolf's clothing. <laughs> so it made sense. I like that. I, I, I can appreciate that. Uh, Love our static comp. Thank you, KOP. Always a pleasure. And we're gonna see Thirsty Shigura and Winners. We're gonna see Winners Finals next. Get these two for the monthly. Uh, KOB, that's probably that's gonna be a decision um, made probably by Full Bloom and Nationwide, possibly. Well, we'll um, see what happens. Yeah, I... we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, the the panel. The panel. I'll be back soon, guys. That's where I'm watching. KOB, it's, IRL takes precedent what? over Smash Bros. Why I you gotta promise. apologize for? You're totally fine. Being busy, like. We do love to see KOB here, but... If you can't, then it's totally fine. You can support us through, uh, through the chat and through the Discord. Absolutely. Like. Oh boy, here we go. This match has been happening really quite often. We see uh, Shigura versus Thirsty in winners, and then Shigura takes it over Thirsty, sends it to losers. Thirsty runs it all the way back to get second place versus Shigura. It's occurred quite frequently in the past few weeks. We'll see if Thirsty can break that uh, that dreaded curse of the Shigura. Uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, for I think I actually saw in chat earlier the predicted winner's final against Thirsty and Shigura. Again? But, uh, we'll, but we will see it again, and right now, Shigura has had a lot of momentum with his Roy, just really able to put away matches in entire sets in not even 10 minutes. We saw that in his match against Sly, not even a two-minute match out of any of the games. Exactly. We've seen Shigura, for, like, just out of nowhere, have this, like, this infinite amount of momentum with his characters and with his gameplay. He's just been so momentum focused and so like crazed and just like finding all the momentum in the world in all of his matches. It's insane to watch. I really love to see it, but right now he's going to have to slow down just a little bit against a player like Thirsty. Ooh, Jair's gonna take it. S slow down, what am I talking about? He's gonna get a Jair already. Shigra's got the first stock pretty quickly. Did someone say Jair? Did someone say Jair? <laughs> but right now, Thirsty is got Roy right where he wants him. Off stage, if not just for a moment. Thirsty, I, I think Thirsty versus Shigura in terms of ledge trapping, it's, that would be really difficult to say. Both players are so ridiculously vicious on the ledge, but the back throw is going to take it for Thirsty. Definitely, like that is... The ledge has been a very good friend of Thirsty for this entire bracket, you know. A grab, a down tilt, an up smash, anything really. That's just no man's land for no matter who he's playing against. Exactly. Thirsty, well, I mean, both of these players at the ledge are probably the scariest in the entire scene when right. it comes to being at the ledge. So, seeing them both, like, negotiate each other's options at ledge, 
incredible, incredible things to see. I would believe it. This really is a clash of the titans. Oh, right now, honestly, Shigura, yeah. Shigura, right now, having a little bit of momentum in the early goings. Early, they're both on their second stock, but Shigura really just one jar away from taking away Thirsty's stock. But Thirsty, right now, having Shigura off stage. Ooh, good parry coming out from Thirsty. Nice. Gonna get a grab out of it. Ooh. It looks like Shigura is trying to rush down and get that jab. Really wants this Jer right now. Oh, trying to get the read. Thirsty, really good attempt. Ooh, good situational awareness. Oh, the down air into the spike going to put the stock away on Shigura. Thirsty has the room to play in order to get the momentum back. Just getting the Jer on the platform, setting him all the way across the stage. Not going to kill. Really unfortunate. Shigura looking for a, that last killing move right now. All the confirms aren't going to link up just due to the sheer percent on uh, Thirsty. So Shigura is really exploring their options to try and find something else to get it. Only just Shigura is going to need to take away this stock from Thirsty as soon as he possibly can. But Thirsty just very slippery when it comes to when it comes to options like that. He's going to need to confirm it right now. Thirsty got Roy right where he wants him. Yeah, right on the ledge. This is, again, this is one of the biggest strengths of both these players, getting them on the ledge and keeping them there. Oh, get up attacks actually going to disrupt uh, Shigura's flow right there. Thirsty at 168. Shigura needs to get a tilt, an aerial, anything just if he wants to stay in this game. Just something out of Shigura, but right now he's not getting the Ooh. narrow off stage. Is going to put the the I keep changing <laughs> set and game. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna put the game away. Thirsty takes it 1-0. Massive massive props to Thirsty for being so incredibly patient at the ledge, waiting to throw out the nair until Shigura had no other option. Yes, just very good patience and consistency out of Thirsty. And look, I know Thirsty doesn't want to hear us call it Airbnb, but as soon as I think he's thrown out aerials. He's well, we throwing out Airbnbs, and I'm hungry, so I'm thinking about food. I need to stop this. <laughs> <laughs> I need to stop. Why you eat beforehand or DoorDash something? Uh, I'm poor. Oh, what a shame. I'm poor. I got a limited budget, but right now, back to the game. We're in game two. Here we go. Uh, small battlefield can be really beneficial for Thirsty. Going to be able to get all the teleport cancels in the world as a safer uh, get back option onto the stage to avoid Shigura's um, fast movement. Oh, but Shigura, not a slouch, really throwing all these combos in, trying to get Thirsty in the air. There we go, using that um, teleport cancel as a quick option to get away from Shigura's speedy Roy. Here comes Shigura, once again, trying to get these air the strong hits of the aerials in. Thirsty, looks like Thirsty's been reviewing VODs and practicing against um, Roy's because they're really showing more, uh, more domination over Shigura's Roy. Definitely, like, I... I know, I would like to say that both of these players do have the advantage when it comes to having the other off stage, but right now, I would have to put my money on Thirsty. This is just where he's at his best with any character, really, and right now, he's had the momentum against Shigeru to really take advantage of some options on stage. It seems like right Thirsty's been learning so well versus um, the Roy matchup, especially after losing to him so often in these past few tournaments. He recognized that all he's got to do is watch his VODs and make sure that he's doing it right. There he goes again with the click options to get away from Roy. Here comes the, the aerial strings. An aerial string, but Shigura going to get the upbeat through the stage in order to get back. It looks right like now. Thirsty's really struggling to get, um, struggling against a Shigura who's just throwing out jabs on shield. It is a difficult option to, to, um, to survive. Factor's not going to do it though. Not yet, Shigura is going to need to put away this stock. Classic Sword, just put away the stock as soon as you can. It cannot come soon enough if he wants to even up this game here because a thirsty with momentum is, is a deadly thirsty. Something to be afraid of. Exactly. Uh, the strong hit is the forward tilt, it's not going to come out. Only the mid hit, not going to get that much. Side B, oh, but that. Oh, popping out of it barely! Popped out of it. And up the up throw is going to do it. Up throw is going to do it. Just not even a flashy up throw, just. Just grab, just grab the throw. He didn't, he didn't want stall, he wanted to kill. See you later! <laughs> uh, right, right now, Thirsty almost getting the better out of the exchanges of an uh, Shigura on ledge, but he's going to be able to get back safely. It looks right like now, Shigura... Oh, go ahead. I think right now what Shigura is just going to be looking for most is just trying to play a little patient, but he's going to try to want to get some confirms with his aerial frame data. As we've seen there, just throwing up back air, throwing out the Naircopter. The Naircopter, I like that name for the move. I, that's been a thing since Smash 4, and 
I refuse to call it anything else. I don't remember it being called the Naircopter, but then again, I didn't really watch a lot of sets um, involving Roy. Roy was a relatively rare character back in Smash 4 because he wasn't as good as he was in this game. Maybe it was just maybe it was just my scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could have been your own scene. Uh, returning to the match, though, it looks like uh, Shigeru versus Thirsty, it's actually quite even right now. Which is bad news for Thirsty. Shigura in an even set, all he has to do is throw out one tilt, and this set is basically, it's completely in his favor. Although Dash Attack's not gonna kill, the next one might. Back throw's gonna do it, yep, Back that's gonna do it. do it. A grab from Thirsty on the ledge, just pray. Yeah, exactly. There you know, a... you know if Thirsty grabs you like within six feet of the ledge, it's gonna be a back throw. More likely, it's gonna be the stock. Not only because Excuse me, it's a, it's a good fast back throw, but also Thirsty's ledge trapping and ledge guarding is immaculate. Absolutely. Right now, Thirsty is has got a lot of momentum going for him. He's going to be able to play the more patient game here with the lead in the game and in the set itself. It's going to be Shigeru that's going to need to just throw out whatever he can just to try and secure something in order to even up the set. It looks like Shigeru might be struggling a little bit right now versus Thirsty. They're struggling to get their spacing in order. It, just right there, they didn't get the strong hit of the forward tilt. Their spacing is uh, is weakening a little bit versus Thirsty. Oh, but that forward tilt's gonna take it. Spacing who? He's gonna get the forward tilt. He's gonna even up the match just a little bit. Shigeru still at a decently solid percent. He's got some ground to make up. Ooh, getting, um, getting Roy combos got in a, right now. Got a nice little jab, get, getting a few little Roy combos. Not gonna be able to get that much out of it. Oh, 54! It's getting really close to, um... It's getting really close to landing right now. Oh! Ooh, really good, um, really good situational awareness from Shigura trying to find out what Thirsty's option is going to be so he can try and get more kills. The Ooh, chair's gonna do it? That's gonna do it! The chair will do it. Very good patience out of Shigura through that match. Right back into his favor, my goodness. Really good comeback from Shigura in game two. Very, like, Thirsty barely able to get an inch out of Shigura on his last stock, but right now, it is good news for Shigura at the end of the day. It is going to even up this set, and we are going to be 1-1 in winner's finals. I, I don't know if I should say this in chat in case Shigura hears me, but, uh... In chat, he should go prom. He keeps landing sours that would kill, and that might be... Yeah, Shigura. No, Shigura might, that might be something that's going through Shigura's mind, but right now, he's gonna stick with the Roy momentarily. Wow, and this, uh... Maybe that could be something to think about. Like, if he's landing those sours, maybe he could make that switch to Krom in order to get the more consistent kills. I think Sh is definitely gonna be watching this VOD back. Also, Shigura, if you if you watch this particular moment, I would like you to tag me in Discord and say, um, uh, and say... Hey, trademark, how's it going? <laughs> but yeah, Shigura definitely watches these back to make sure he can analyze the mistakes. And perhaps he could be watching back to see, huh, maybe these things would have killed with Prom, so I should go Prom against Thirsty. But, I mean, so far, it seems like he's doing just fine versus Thirsty with this Roy. Although, Thirsty, not a slouch when it comes to comebacks. He's really throwing out all the aerials he can. Basically, dead even game. And the F-Smash is going to take it. Yeah, I think in chat, now the pilot counter would mess Krom up, and I think that's actually the other thing that Shigeru is going to be thinking about. Like, offstage against a character like Palutena, a player like Thirsty, just loves to have you off the stage, just at the ledge. I think that's what Shigeru is trying to go for here, just has a little more freedom trying to recover, and we've seen that really pay off for Shigeru. I think, honestly, I think that's really true. Up tilt's Ooh, gonna up take tilt. it, though. Um, that's really true versus, um, Characters like Palutena, although Shigura has practiced the uh, has practiced the spacing against. Ooh, barely getting back. It has practiced the spacing versus all sorts of counters with Proms up B, so he can make it back safely. He just has to be extra careful. But I think perhaps he might be sticking with Roy just so that he doesn't have to keep that in his mind when he's recovering. Just one last thing to worry, one less thing to worry about when he's playing. I would agree, and you know. Maybe can't come with cost to confirm. No, missing it entirely. Not even getting the sour spot out of that. No chair for Shigeru, but not oh, gonna get it down. Yeah. He's just gonna... Don't need no aerial confirm. He's just gonna get it right there and then. Throwing out the F-Tilt to get the stock. Uh, Thirsty not gonna let it affect him whatsoever, though. Ooh, barely getting back with the air dodge. Uh, the stage warp coming through. Uh, I, I, I gotta say it. This stage warp is so pretty. I love it so much. <laughs> Yes, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know Kingdom oh, Hearts, I don't want to know, that's going to be it. <laughs> you don't know, you don't know, <laughs> I mean, honestly, 
The only thing I know from Kingdom Hearts are the memes, and the memes from Kingdom Hearts are almost better than Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I, I know Sora's there, I know there's a point where Mickey says the realm of darkness, Stop. and it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but right now we have a match to commentate, so I'm gonna try to do that later. Yes, exactly. Right we'll, um, now, we'll stick with more insightful things, like uh, how Thirsty is really trying to throw out aerials to get enough percent to where a back throw or a down tilt to back air is going to kill up the ledge. Right Ooh! Ooh, that was slick. Insane. That was really slick. Oh, insane read out of Shigura, reading the air dodge in in order to get a very clean kill. Hey, I don't know. Uh, I like to shout out Lubbock. Please, uh, please uh, clip our tournaments more. <laughs> clip, clip, clip that. Clip something. I have seen some amazing things on stream today with ACU coming out. But that was that was clean. That I will was, say that 100. percent That was clean. Here we go, back into game four. Uh, Shigura with one game left, Thirsty with two. Let's see what's gonna happen. Sticking with the same characters, uh, where, I, I didn't even know where to pick the stage. Ah yes, running it right back to uh, Hollow Bastion. Here we go. Uh, right now, running back to Hollow Bastion, very pretty stage to look at. Oh yeah, this that's a that's a follow bot. Let me. Let's, let's take care of a follow bot, like. I got it. Buy followers and viewers when we can get the loyal ones for free? I, I don't think so, but right now, while they take care of that, we have a match to commentate. Uh, Thirsty and Shigura very even in exchanges so far in the opening bout of the match, and very quickly at that, 30 seconds in, and both of them are at solid kill or confirmed percent. Right now, Thirsty with a bit of momentum having Roy off stage, but... Yeah, it's, um... Ooh, very, good, yeah. <laughs> very good out of very good situational awareness out of Shigura, re recognizing that Thirst is gonna pop out of that jair. So it looks like it looks like Shigura right now is just using his situational awareness as best as he can. There goes the there goes the back throw from Thirsty. Oh, not gonna get the kill quite yet. Side B's not gonna connect. Shigura getting back with the, the returning fair to get Thirsty away from his legendary uh, ledge trapping skills. Oh, but the back wait was that, that was, back throw or back air? That was a down throw to forward air, I think. Well, whatever it was, what, it got the stock. Whatever it was, it killed, and that's what matters here. And right now, I'm getting hungry again because Thirsty's <laughs> getting his aerials in order to keep Roy at bay. All right, let's get this going once again. Uh, it looks like Thirsty's keeping Shigura at the ledge exactly where they want them. Uh, Shigura's got to fight his way back up from the depths, trying to two-frame with that neutral B. Not going to get it, though. That shield looking super tiny. Ooh, that shield, he's going to have to be careful. And, I, and there, there we go. go. The Jair is gonna get it. Shigura balancing out this game against Thirsty. I, I kind of thought I'm, I'm calling Thirsty Thirsty, and I'm calling Shigura Roy. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Honestly, <laughs> I just I just go by um, I usually go by characters. Back throw is gonna take it. Not gonna get it just yet though. Thirsty trying to throw out an errant ledge, but Shigura beating it out with the um, with the stronger hitboxes of Roy's upbeat. Air dodging back to avoid a hairy situation. Ooh, and, oh, such excellent patience coming out from Shigura. Back throw, not gonna get it just yet. Not quite. But being back, Thirsty really wants this right now, and that's gonna do it. Okay. All good. Um, possible break in the stream, just letting you know, FYI chat. Um, but anyways, continuing with the, uh, continuing with this, uh, particular, uh, match. It looks like Thirsty's gonna be using the um, using the platforms to cancel and hop around as much as they can, just to make sure that they can get around Shigura's aerials and whatnot, just to make sure that they don't die at like ridiculously low percents. Yes, I had my head down. That's fine. Uh, here we go. Uh, the, the, the words are fun. Um, oh, trying to get the downer, but the, the pop up into the forwarder is gonna take that stock. That is like. Very good situational awareness out of Shigura, recognizing that he's not going to be able to get that spike. Oh, oh, he's going to oh, that oh, one. Oh, okay. Oh, not, <laughs> not quite. Shigura. Good lord. Calm down. Yeah, Shigura was wild and out right there. That was insane to watch. Oh, but, uh, oh another another air dodge read out of Shigura. I don't almost, know what he's doing right now. Almost but putting the set away, but Thirsty... Shit. Just staying alive a very Oh, tail. but the F smash is gonna take it. The F smash will Thirsty, take it. good job in keeping his head level and not panicking in all those scary situations. Just like that, we're going to game five on stream in winners finals. Hazards on. Stop. 
Yes, you are, sir. Okay, for this scene, you are the Steve Master. For this scene, you are the Steve. Should I say we, Steve? we do say it as a compliment. We love to see your Steve Padawan. We love to see your Steve. We like seeing it. It comes from a good place. We love to see it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, St. Pepsi stopping in uh, to give us a little bit of commentary on Steve. But here we go into the match once again, running it right back to Hollow Bastion onto a game five scenario. Ah, absolutely. Right now, it's. I need dinner. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to say strings. That way you don't strings. think of things. You can think I'm, of like crocheting or something. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think of it. <laughs> but right now, back to the match. A very, once again, a very even bout from both players. Just trying to pull each other out through this first stock. Man, very quickly at that. It looks just like uh, Thirsty really wanted that back throw or down throw into back air. Shigura not going to let it happen, though. Barely air dodging in back onto the stage. Thirsty trying to space out these uh, back airs. Oh, but the call out with the F smash. Thirsty's going to take the first stock. Throwing out neutral air, trying to oh, go ahead. <laughs> All right, throwing out, uh, throwing out neutral air. Shigura looks like they're struggling just a little bit. Oh, but the oh couldn't get the couldn't get the back air, so we went with the forward air. Uh, uh, Thirsty throwing out the neutral B at ledge to disrupt the uh, the neutral B of Shigura. Yes, right now, just Thirsty just trying to disrupt Shigura as much as he can in order to try and get the momentum out of Shigura's hands. Like, Right now, the ball is in Shigeru's court in order to even up the match. And Thirsty could just very well deny that right now. Shigeru, right now, in no man's land, off stage against the Palutena. Thirsty Palutena at that. There we have it. Oh, that back air is going to do it. Uh, really, Thirsty really making moves on Shigeru right now, not letting anything get to him. His, he is really trying to be as impenetrable a fortress as possible, but that back air slipping through his defenses and getting that stock. Yeah, that's going to be a very important stock right here. Both percents even, but first he got a whole different stock to play with. Exactly. Uh, Shigura really has to focus on getting back to stage safely and holding center stage, throwing out the combos that they so desperately need. There's the SDIing out of the side B to get out of a hairy situation. Oh, platform read, not gonna go through. Not gonna go through quite yet. Throwing right now, Thirsty, throwing out up airs, just trying to keep Sugar at bay, trying to juggle him. As long as he can get a, um, as long as he can, oh, try to get the read, but got the weak hit. I bet you if he got the strong hit, that would have been dead. Oh, oh getting yeah. the read. Getting the read momentarily just for a one up air. Thirsty really uh, picking the best option right there. Oh, getting back barely, back onto the ledge. Sugar is really trying to get this kill right now to stay into it. Reading the ledge cancel and shielding that back air. Oh, this is really risky for Shigura. He's at the ledge. Ledge trapping is Thirsty's specialty. Oh, but oh, what's gonna happen? Throwing out the side B of the ledge, not gonna get the down tilt. He wouldn't explosive playing the down tilt, but he's gonna get the Jair instead in order for Shigura to even up the stock. Thirsty, right. taking a second to stay on the respawn platform, getting themselves back in order, making sure they can take a deep breath and relax mentally to get this set. Here we go. Shigura at 108% versus Thirsty's Palu. He's really got to focus as hard as he can. All he needs is one good strong hit, but Shigura absolutely no slouch, throwing out all these hits to get up damage. Got, got a bit of a grab. Right now we're seeing him trying to throw this back into his favor in order to take winner's finals here. This is a very tense match. This is incredibly tense right now. This is really a redemption arc for Thirsty. They really want to beat Shigura and not face them again. Oh, is that going to do it? Is that going to do it? That's going to do it. it will. Shigura taking it on Game 5. Last stock coming back all the way from a three-stock deficit. Oh, very nice very nice comeback out of Shigura in order to put away Winner's Finals. A very tense battle out of both players. Really got to admire it. That was so intense. I can feel the, the tension in the venue. Ah, uh, goodness. Right now, we might just have this is, this is, uh, Chino St. Pepsi. Pepsi, a very interesting match we have, actually. Um, yeah. I believe... The Battle of the DLC. The Battle of the DLC. I actually believe we did talk about this a couple weeks ago in the fact that Chino was a bit of a bracket demon of St. Pepsi's, and St. Pepsi himself was actually able to best Chino in bracket. Yeah, exactly. Finally able to get that redemption, and, you know, now... Could Chino want vengeance here? Exactly. If this is just vengeance upon vengeance. They're really going back and forth between each other right now. So we'll have to see who's going to take this set and go into um, losers, uh, losers' final and possibly grands.
definitely. And right now, I mean, you know, these are two players that really have Chino, one of the most one of the most upbeat, fun players to have in this scene. And St. Pepsi just really haven't been making waves with this Steve. Very quickly, the Steve Padawan, we were just corrected. <laughs> yes, the Steve Padawan. He's got many things to learn, but regardless, his skill is still there. Absolutely. I'm, I mean, I'm very impressed by his Steve, whether it be frustrating DLC or not. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. To some, but... <laughs> well, you I... see, um, this is going to be a really good match um, in the Battle of the DLC. Uh, Banjo versus, uh, well, probably Banjo. Banjo versus uh, Steve. I mean, what else could you be expecting right now? It's going to be just completely random. Um, probably one of the most spaghetti matches of this of the stream, just to see who's going to move on to um, losers finals versus thirsty. I think this this could be a very important. Um, this could be a very important match in the tournament. This could be basically the turning point, because I think, uh, in my personal opinion, I think St. Pepsi wins. It's going to be versus Thirsty. Thirsty up against um, up against uh, uh, Shigura, and then Shigura's going to take it. But if it's Chino, Chino versus Thirsty, Chino goes on to Grands, and then Chino wins the tournament. So we could see a huge turning point in this uh, set. You see a turning point at either one. Chino dropping his banjo here to start. He's going to go for the trusty wolf. Here we go into game one. Chino, Wolf, St. Pepsi, Steve. Let's get it going. 3, 2, 1, here we go. Starting off, it looks like St. Pepsi recognizes that Wolf is going to be all up in his business, so he has to make sure that he has the materials and resources to run away if necessary. Yeah, he didn't get too much there to start the bout, though, but right now he doesn't even need materials in order to get a very nice string, a very clean string of off airs and back air. Not going to get the uh, not gonna get the rebound into the up smash. St. Pepsi really wanted that. I'm not even going to get the tech for Chino. Um, honestly, from here in the commentator's booth, we can hear the SDI coming out from Chino, so he knows exactly what to do versus these particular combos. Absolutely. Just the sounds of the game. People's GameCube <laughs> controllers swacking against just the ticks on them. Exactly. If this... Oh! And that's going to take the first stock. Down smash at the ledge. St. Pepsi at 111, though. This could be... Pretty easy for Chino to get uh, make up. Very much so. St. Pepsi right now trying to play a little bit on the oh, ledge. Oh, but that's going to get that two frame. Very good situational awareness out of Chino that he's going to drop down and not going to be able to get that refresh invincibility. Uh, it seems like St. Pepsi is going to have to be really careful if he wants to uh, do any sorts of play at the ledge. Because if he regrabs, that's a wolf down smash. And that's dead at like 80. And maybe even 60, depending on the amount of damage and rage Wolf has. That's a, that's dead at a lot of percentages. Just don't just don't get hit. Oh, forward air to back air. Not going to do it. Uh, uh, St. Pepsi getting back onto the ledge safely. Throwing out the block to try and save him. Made sure that he couldn't get into a hairy situation. Oh, sh random shine from Chino. I think he was expecting an anvil. Oh, but the back air is going to take it. Chino at 95, St. Pepsi at 0. Yes, right now, Chino has, gaining a little bit of momentum back from St. Pepsi. Ooh, Ooh nice. Excellent nice, patience. Nice awareness out of St. Pepsi. The mash out of the line card in order to get the lead into an F smash to even up the match here. A very much unneeded <laughs> very needed um very stock. needed very needed balance of stock in order to kick off semi-files it looks like uh chino is not gonna let that get to him though still holding advantage right now over uh saint pepsi not gonna let it get into his head whatsoever chino a very stable player um when it comes to mental games almost never succumbs to them whatsoever saint pepsi falling onto his own block and getting safely to the ledge it looks like chino's just kind of waiting out to see what he does and try and condition him into getting something. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Just the yeah. I caught, um, I, I, I caught exactly half of that statement. So <laughs> it's we'll, fine. We'll go back into the match here. Sure, back into the match. Um, it looks like they're both kind of prancing around looking for that final hit. Chino. Oh, and uh, what was that going to do? He's going to get back. Very nice out of St. Pepsi. Barely able to get back after... Throwing out the anvil to get out of that up smash, making sure to hold shield on it. Oh, but that F tilt, I think he caught the uh, the double jump. That's going to be game one to Chino. That is going to be game one to Chino. Very, very aggressive out of Chino and his wolf. And I think that's really what he wanted here. Just 
you know, a lot of Steve's options are put into question when you're against the Wolf, really. Exactly. Like, Anvil, that'll kill you. Yeah, because, I mean, like, everything Wolf does is safe. But at the same time, uh, Steve can combo you to death. Oh, Steve, so <laughs> Steve really can. They're going to be counterpicking in Northern Cave here, St. Pepsi. Maybe looking for a bit of platform shenanigans. Could be looking for platforms. Could are, also be looking for resources. Uh, or um, are or, they? Oh, uh, yeah, sick in Northern Cave. Got to, got to do the um, the music counterpick. Genova. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> we'll hear it in the VOD. I, I will trust them. We'll hear it in the VOD. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Um, this could be a stage counterpick for St. Pepsi in materials because St. Pepsi has actually had a conversation with me about how you can counterpick stages to pick materials. Like, for instance, certain stages give you a lot more iron, and certain stages give you a lot more stone. So, you can counterpick a stage specifically for materials, so you have to be very aware of what you can mine on which stage. It's honestly like, Steve has such a meta behind him that I have no idea about, but it's so fascinating to learn. How can you knock that? Like. A lot of the game. That's it's a lot of the game. A lot of the game does revolve around um, counterpicking your opponent. But Steve, there's a, a whole other layer onto counterpicking. It's just it's honestly really fascinating. I love hearing about um, different Minecraft Steve things uh, from St. Pepsi. It's like honestly, he could talk for hours about it with me, and I would be fully enthralled. Oh, but the back air on the anvil is going to take that stock. Yeah, this is Chino putting it away. Pretty early on, actually. Gonna get the anvil, though, to try and even up percent a little bit here. Not Geo. St. Pepsi is going to need to get this. It's yep. the classic tale of get the stock early in order to avoid that momentum. Because a very big mental game that can get in your head. And right now, Chino just not giving St. Pepsi an inch. Exactly. Uh, especially with the wolf. Wolf being so so difficult to fight because you get so scared because like everything connects into everything he's got good kill confirms he's got good moves it's very difficult not to get scared versus wolf especially against such a high level wolf like you know the backer is not going to do it just yet great di coming out from saint pepsi a four tilt trying to put away the stock and get a sour spot out of that not quite going to get it for Chino. A money match, apparently. <laughs> apparently, but, um, there's a money match going on. The oh. money match is not on stream. This is on stream. So, yeah, right exactly. now. Ooh, and up there on the block. Nice little call out by Gino. Seeing that St. Pepsi might want to stall a little bit with some dirt blocks. Uh, St. Pepsi right now. Looks like they're struggling against this wolf. Oh, but as of, right as I say that, they get the back air. St. Pepsi at 0% on their last stock. Uh, Chino's got a whole other stock to play with. So, no matter what, St. Pepsi has to be cautious versus wolf. Absolutely, he's got a lot of ground ooh, to make ooh, up here. Ooh, uh, ooh, oh. Jab, jab across the stage, just take a nice little stroll through the park. Exactly, stroll through the park with the sword. Uh, looks like uh, St. Pepsi really wants to throw out all the Steve combos they can in order to get this going. Getting the uh, soft hit and the hard hit of back air. Throwing out a light trap, really good trapping coming after St. Pepsi, good lord. Yeah, but right now he's got to watch out for his own TNT. Chino, nice little situational Whee! awareness. Oh, oh no, oh, the barely went too far. The elytra giving out on him. Give it and take it what up. up. Not the best way you want to end matches like that, but it is what it is. Yes. Hello, Sky. <laughs> All right. Sky's too famous for us. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe that, maybe that bot was onto something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, game three. Ah! <laughs> that's, my, that's my work line. Um, game three of St. Pepsi versus Chino going on to Town and City. This is going to be a really good stage for Wolf because they can get up air juggles on up air juggles. But at the same time, here we go. We're seeing uh, St. Pepsi using the uh, the large block radius to their advantage. Yeah, Steve can get his own his own block radius here. Just a very big stage. A lot of, for both of these players to play around with here. And this is a town and city with hazards on. So this is actually going to be a very... This is going to be a very different town and city from what we're used to. Exactly. Right? We can see lots of mix-ups on recoveries um, when it comes to getting back on stage, especially if they get possibly stretchered. It could be really risky. They have to be careful. Up throw into... Not going to be able to get anything out of the up throw. Uh, too high percent on St. Pepsi. But I believe Chino's looking for just that last good hit that will get him. 
Just get the dash attack. <laughs> cruising along with Elytra once again. You can right tell. Now. You can tell that Steve. Oh, but the down smash is gonna take it. Sweet. Raw down smash after raw down smash. Oh, can you really blame it? What an amazing move out of Wolf. Just very safe. Just so explosive. Even after an amazing, even after a tremendous nerf early in the game, still one of the most impressive options you can really do as a Wolf. Honestly, yeah, Wolf is probably. You think top five or top eight? I'd say he's top. I could argue top five, but I don't have the place to argue that, so... Yeah, I think, take um... Take that with a pinch of salt. Oh, there we go. Back air into, uh... Back air is gonna take that kill. Chino looking really good to secure this game right now. If it does if it does end up this way, it's gonna be Chino versus Thirsty in Losers Finals. It is, and right now Chino is in a very good position to take a lot here. Already up 2-0 in the set, and he's got St. Pepsi on his last lifeline just... He has no reason to really do anything to overextend. He can just see what St. Pepsi does. He's the one that's got to take advantage of the ball being in his court. Exactly. St. Pepsi. Oh, what the? Just, just like that. Yep, just, there he goes. I'm going to swing my sword. There's probably some Minecraft YouTuber inside joke to that, but I don't <laughs> know it. It's, uh, do you like my sword? Sword. Sword my diamond sword. Sword. You okay. cannot afford for for the... the, the, the the, oh. the old Tabuscus song. Now I remember it. One of my yeah, friends. Yeah, old back here is gonna do it. Yep. Back here will do that. 3 0, St. Pepsi over Chino. Man, I need to stop rambling. A lot of these games are just cutting me off, but. It's like. Oh, always an explosive way to end the match back here, but. The, um, the, like, the, the old Tabuscus songs, I remember them. They were so cringy. That's what I remember. I remember one of my friends annoying the living Jesus out of me at 2 a.m. with it. But, Tobuscus or not, um, our, our Steve Padawan drops in loser semifinals. I believe. Can we update the bracket from here? We can. Yeah, we can. We can do that ourselves. Gino 6 and 1 in the tournament. So let's say we're going to have Thirsty and Chino. Chino. Thirsty just rolling up, Jake taking St. Pepsi's spot in the player one. Chino, no break, and he's gonna go to his wolf once again. No more banjo, it seems. I think the, um, I think the, I think avoiding banjo is a good uh, decision for, for Chino because banjo does rely a lot on um, throwing around grenades, and those throwing around grenades can easily be caught or um, reflected by Palutena. Whereas with Wolf, they only have one projectile, and it's not even really critical to their gameplay. They don't need to throw it out. It's a good it's a good projectile, but they don't need to do it. Plus, it seems like uh, Wolf versus Palutena, you know, picking the highest of tiers for this last uh, this season final. Eh, I mean, can you really blame him? Wolf has just a lot of safe options on him, and maybe I'm biased as a Pac-Man player, but Wolf's Reflector is so scary in combination with his frame data moveset. Yeah, honestly, like, um... If you try to apply a, 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 a plus, I'm just gonna roll with it with <laughs> auto rectile explosive flame, just press a button. Exactly. And I think uh, Chino right now is looking for, just looking at the ledge. This is <laughs> the battle of the ledge guards right here. <laughs> it, it really is, and right now I think Thirsty could still get better in the exchanges because Wolf is going to have a lot of trouble getting back onto the stage if he's back there, so he's gonna have to watch out for it. Just maintain a lot of stage control in order to just completely oppress and deny Thirsty's offense. Exactly. Yeah. Wolf is gonna have to be so careful off stage because all Thirsty has to do is throw out one aerial. Oh, and it doesn't even matter! The up smash is gonna take that stuff. And there we have it. We see Chino doing that to a T. Only at about 60%, 72, and Thirsty's down a stock, but... Thirsty only missed the counter off stage and, oh, and misses, the recovery. misses the recovery. Unfortunate for Thirsty. Can't let that get to him in this loser's final game one here. But oh, he, but the up smash. He will get the up smash read onto the stage. Exactly. Just who who approved such a huge hitbox on an up smash? I mean it could be worse. I don't know how, but it could. <laughs> it could be a, it could be a lot better too, I'm telling you. But back to the game here, Chino. Trying to keep Thirsty at bay off stage here and almost getting the almost getting some down throw grab combos, which a lot of versatility out of Wolf, but not getting much out of it. Looks like uh, Thirsty's really trying to get some aerial strength going on Wolf. Not going to be able to get anything out of these throws right now. Thirsty at too high a percent for the up throw combos. Although Thirsty knows that Chino really has 
will have trouble landing as Wolf unless he throws out a Nair. Oh, F Smash is going to send him all the way across the stage. Anything at ledge. Oh, the back air. A back air. And that's going to do it. Game one to Chino. I would, I would love Whoa. game one. Uh, it is game one. I am, I'm tripping. There you go. I. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we're continuing in this. Uh, Chino, let's see. Will they be sticking with the wolf? Yep, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, definitely not. I, it's the better option here, let's be real. But, you know, Thirsty as well, with his Palutena, could really throw this back. It limits wolf's options to really, like, try to oppress with Blaster. Because Thirsty can throw it right back. Exactly. Maybe not. Ooh, excuse me. You know, wolf... I saw it in Nevada at one point. Wolf plays dirty. You play at his pace, no matter who you are. Pretty much, yeah. Like, that's... I mean, it matches the character, too. Like, in Star Fox, how Wolf is so gritty and, you know, uh, daunting a, a challenge in the games. Definitely. One of my favorite characters in the game. I gotta, I gotta say that here. Yeah, it's, I mean, honestly, yeah. Uh, Wolf is just such a good character overall in whether or not Smash or his home game of Star Fox. I can't talk about, like, Kingdom Hearts or Kingdom Game. I don't got that. I got Star Fox. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't that deep, but I got it. It's the back of the match here. Chino, once again, just being very fresh with the stage control in order to keep Thursday at bay. Got the two frames. Got on the ledge. two frame with the four tilt claws. Just a very oppressive and a very safe option to two frame. Just no reason not to really go for it. It looks like Thirsty's really trying to uh, get him in the air right now. It is difficult to challenge a wolf in the air because all their aerials are, have such great frame data. But then again, Thirsty's aerials are nothing to, nothing to sneeze at. All he's got to do is link a few uh, aerials into it and then that's back throw percent at ledge. Yep. Ooh, almost had the forward smash, but Shino going to call that out again. That, that, that's yeah. the stock. I don't really know what to say there. Just... <laughs> I mean, quite frankly, yep, that's, that's the stock. Um, that's the stock. Just... It looks like Thirsty's going to try and get their own aerial strings in right now. Off Smash, not going to connect, though. No, it is not. We are seeing a very impressive game out of Chino so far right now. Barely. It seems like It seems like we're seeing... Um, Seeing Chino more than more than anything right now, just recognize that he's an advantage and he doesn't have to do much. He has to, you know, stick and move throughout the aerial every now and then. Oh no, with the SD! The SD not gonna get back. Good edge guarding options actually out of Thirsty, throwing out that downer to really keep Wolf at bay, just limiting Chino's options to get back. And that's exactly what Thirsty is going to want in order to get kills on Chino and his Wolf. Let's cancel into into aerials to get Chino off guard. I think that's the first time we've seen Thirsty throw that out in the set. Back air. Throwing out a dash attack to get that intangibility on the hitbox. It looks like Thirsty right now just wants to get an aerial string going. But then again, it will be difficult to keep Wolf in that aerial string because Wolf's aerials are so great. Dash attack's not going to take the kill quite yet. Throwing out an explosive flame. Chino really wants this kill. Oh, but the up tilt on the platform's going to take it. Thirsty taking a deep breath, recognizing that he's got to he's got to play he's got to play a little calmer and uh, pick his pick and choose his battles a little more carefully. Or is Chino just rushing all the way in with Wolf saying, I'm here, I'm Wolf, I'm going to tear you apart? Definitely, that's just, that's what Thirsty's going to have to do best here. Just Chino has the momentum going for him in more ways than one, and it's just going to keep rushing at him. Just, just going to keep throwing hitboxes at him. So Thirsty just, Thirsty knows his character, Thirsty knows his advantages. He's just going to need to find them, and he's going to take advantage of them as soon as he possibly can. Exactly, and Chino is, is really making Thirsty struggle by throwing out all these aerials. Since they have such good frame data on the landing and startup and hitbox and everything, they're just great aerials. Oh, oh is that back air going to do it? That's going to do it. Game two to Chino. Game two to Chino. Back air shoots out like a cannon, as I like to say. But Man, I wish I were better at landing back air myself. I used to play Wolf a lot. but um, I think everyone's trying thanks. out Wolf. I, <laughs> no, I, I started the game like solo hard Wolf. Like, yeah. <laughs> How do you go from, from solo hard Wolf to Pac-Man? I... Felt overshadowed by Chino and Guru. Oh, I wanted to be the Pac Man. That you know, actually, that that makes a lot of and sense. A big thing I found in me personally, I started playing my Wolf like I did my Pac Man. Yeah. Pac Man's frame data and Wolf's frame data on their aerials. They're both very good in their own right, but eh, Pac Man. Yeah. I and mean, honestly, I could make people 
frustrated. I can make this great pack. Ooh, the Ensign. We'll see. Thirsty, <laughs> Thirsty is down 0-2 in the set. He is... This uh, this Throwing is uh, at the wall. <laughs> we're seeing we're seeing the battle of the furries here. Let's get it going. <laughs> no, please. The sheep and wolf's closing. She is crying right now. But um, we're either way. We're in losers finals here against Gino and Thirsty. Uh, Gino and Thirsty, both yeah, they're both gonna be really good against each other, especially because uh, Thirsty's in sin. Such a hard hitter, really good at making such good damage output. Oh, here we come. This is one side B away from like 85% and possibly a stock. Possibly a stock at that if, she, if Thirsty plays this correctly and Thirsty is going to want that. Trying to get another oh. revenge. Oh, the, the, the current revenge has vanished. Oh, holding on to the double jump all the way until the very last second. Good patience. Good patience out of Thirsty right now. Just really trying to analyze that Chino is going to hit hard with his wolf. So let me just... Let me just get a character that can do about the same thing. <laughs> exactly. Um, Chino and Thirsty. Oh, is that Epsilon going to do it? That's going to do it. Despite how heavy Incineroar is, that forward tilt is going to take it. Although it looks like Thirsty does not want to let it um, let it get him off guard. He threw out the revenge. Oh, but he lost his revenge. Getting the up air at the ledge, though. Getting Chino away from it. Not going to get the forward air into down air. Chino, uh, right now, minding his business, just trying to stick out of the uh, out of the line of fire. Quote, unquote, fire, because Incineroar has fire. <laughs> hey, I almost described the St. Pepsi and Steve's so yeah. you, you get the pass. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> oh, right throwing now. out another Nair. I don't know if Thirsty's going to be able to recover. No, oh, he, unfortunate. Did not have a double jump. He did not have his double jump. Chino took that away from him. Very smart offense out of Chino. That back, or that up throw, not gonna do it just yet. Although the next one will. Oh, the next one definitely will. Right now, Chino just getting those down throw combos on Thirsty, just taking advantage of Thirsty's bigger hitbox as opposed to Altana. Ooh, almost had the spike to put it away. Tried not the gonna wild get it. on him, goodness. Oh, and that F tilt's gonna take it. Thirsty at 53, Chino at zero, but with two stocks remaining, trying to get a, a read. Good lord, Chino, calm down. <laughs> He's too all in the set. Can you blame him? I, got, no, I cannot he, blame him whatsoever. He can whatsoever. really do what he wants here. Thirsty's the one that's going to have to play it. And right now, he's getting the revenge boosted. Oh, that's not going to do it just yet. He almost had the revenge boosted on the ropes, but he's not going to get that either. That back is not going to do it quite yet. Really close, though. Thirsty has to watch his back offstage. Going to keep his double jump until the very last second. Getting the side beat, gonna get the even more damage, sending him all the way to the other side of the stage. Weak hit of Nair is gonna put him on the ledge in a bad position. Oh, but that backer is gonna do it! That's gonna do that it. Chino, 3 0 over Thirsty. Oh, he really just another back air to put away the match. Very dominant performance out of Chino. I. Uh... I'm hungry, but this is this is grand finals. I feel like I should stay and commentate. If you need to go eat, go ahead. We can get another commentator. Is there anybody else that wants? Uh, I'll stay. Uh, Lean out the door and ask. Do I have a dollar? I might buy a bag of chips. Uh, I do have a dollar, but I don't wanna. I'll live. Like 15% of my commentary today has just been talking about food. I need I need to eat dinner before these things, but it's early. It's, it's an early dinner. What am I, my dad? <laughs> I wanted, my dad actually showed interest in a stream for once. But now that I said that, I don't know if I can show him this. <laughs> the bridge. You know, Thirsty was talking about a bridge earlier. They were playing. He was playing chess. <laughs> no, don't look. <laughs> don't look. Yes. Hide your shame. Don't play Bowser Dittos. What's wrong with you? This is um this is a grand finals. It's been a long time coming. 
Um, I don't think we've seen Chino versus Shigura in Grand Finals in probably a year or two. Oh, last time, yeah, last time I think I saw this, uh, Thirsty wasn't even in in the OSRs. Yeah, no, it's like... It's been a whoa, very long time. It's really, honestly, it has been a while. Like, yeah, that is... I was never seen. That was, those are some fun days. But right now, we are going to get right into Grand Finals. We're going to see Shigure in his role, and once again, Chino throwing out his wolf. Chino right now having the losers run back. Do we have to run back? Run back? Uh, so if Chino wins the set, do we have to do it again? Yes. Okay. Um, since it's double elimination, it'll go to loser, loser, and the winner of that will finally be the champion. champion. Uh, although, it looks like uh, this is not going to be an easy task for Shigura. Shino, with the Wolf, going in super hard against his Roy. They're both, they both want, want to have their opponent in their zone. The problem is, their zones interlap, so there's going to be a lot of warfare back and forth as to who gets to dominate the zone that they need. And as we can see right now, it looks like so far, it's an incredibly even game. That Jared's not going to get it though, it's going to get the tipper hit, not going to get all the way through it. Gino holding him at the ledge right now, oh but the back air read on the jump, that's going to get the first stock. Oh nice little back air read, but right now Gino having a bit of early momentum to run this match. Although Shigura, for whatever reason, get right there, jab, what? jab into, or the Jer, Jer at ledge. You see Shigura throwing out jabs at ledge, it is a scary situation. Not nearly, it's, honestly, it's about as scary as Thirsty throwing out down tilts at ledge, because you know at that point, you're about to die. <laughs> you're about to die, but right now, it's, it's going to be enough to even up the game. Right now, really, just both players just exchanging hits, just exchanging momentum back in for Chino. Has it right now, a bit of juggles and grabs momentarily. Just that's what's fascinating about this. Shigura can just throw out an aerial, throw out a jab, and he can throw it right back into his favor. Exactly. Both of them can link their aerials into every other aerial. And all, like the kill confirms come from linking aerials. Ooh, Chino uh, air dodging up and out to get onto the platform and out of that situation. Shield looking a little small. Chino's gonna watch his back. Making sure they doesn't get a shield break. Oh, down tilt into the read. Not gonna get it. Oh, but the forward smash out of shield is gonna take it. That will take it. Very nice situational awareness out of Chino, realizing that maybe my shield could break here, but very ballsy move in order to hold it and get that punish on Shigura. Shigura not gonna. Oh. Okay. Oh! oh! Nice. Shigura with the incredible patience right now, throwing out two taunts. Hey, eat snatch. How's it going? <laughs> Here we go, back into it. Chino at his last stock right now versus Shigura at their last stock. We've seen just this endless supply of momentum coming from Shigura's Roy and Krom. Let's see if he can continue it with, with Gino trying to, to siphon off some momentum for their own favor. Throwing out neutral, neutral air on stage, trying to get him into these situations where he can't get out of it. Oh, really? Oh, oh, not gonna get it! Ooh, not gonna get it quite yet. Oh, but the Jair? You will oh, get the Jair. Barely getting it. Shigura, game one. Shigura will take game one out of five here. Lord. Excuse me. Uh, Alright, let's see. Uh, where are they gonna go next? Are they gonna run it back to Small Battlefield? Are they gonna... Take it, because I heard FD and... Oh, yep. Wait, yep, wait, yep, wait, yep. Wait. Okay, they are going to run it back. <laughs> yeah, Chino was, like, hitting A and then B really fast on the stage. So I was like, come on, Chino. Cut me some slack. I'm just a commentator here. <laughs> and here we go. Into game two. Right back onto Small Battlefield. Uh, Chino versus Shigura. Let's get into it. Starting off, Chino really strong with his grab combos into Wolf's, you know, the very basics of Wolf. Uh, just uh, up throw, up air, into uh, uh, down throw, dash attack. Getting all the way up to 74 unanswered, 86 unanswered percent from Shigura. Apparently getting 17% on him. Looks like Shigura's going to be struggling against a very grounded and uh, well-timed Chino. Oh, but Chino, or Shigura, not going to be a slouch whatsoever when it comes to getting him on the platform to get some even more damage. That's, that's going to be the biggest problem here. Either one of them can exchange the ground control on stage in a flash, and right now it seems to be going in Chino's favor. Ooh, recovering high. Oh, good oh, tech! Counter, nice! Such a good tech! 
Nice little tech bounce momentum something. I don't even know if that was a tech, but if he got the stage spike. Oh, that was 100% tech, yeah. Ah. <laughs> that was super, that was a super close tech though. Oh, that, um, I think Chino running it back was a smart decision because he got the narrow stage, uh, but you saw right there, Chino could tech on the platform and get out of the Jer combo that would have cost him the stock otherwise. Chino showing great situational awareness with the platforms and now trying to get the basics of Wolf again, down throw dash attack uh, into jabs. Forward tilting him just to get him all the way around stage. Here we go, looking for any possible opening that he can get. Shigura trying to get these strong hits into a kill, but Chino is not gonna let him. He's really learned when to pick his battles. He's doing incredibly well at doing so. He's throwing out up airs, trying to get him and juggle him into the air, make sure that he can get more damage and get a kill. The problem is he's out of all sorts of kills in front of percent, so what he needs is to get a, either a really good read or throw out a good aerial. Do you need a glass of water? <laughs> I was, I'm sorry, I, I saw you texting and I was like, I'm not gonna, uh, not gonna throw, throw it into the bus. Oh, hey, I'm just gonna take it. Hey, my bad, that's fine, but like, it's the excitement of the match, we love to see it. And Kino right now, with a lot of momentum going on, Shigeru gonna throw it right back with an up air. Gonna at least take the stock away, and he may still be at a disadvantage, but even just that one stock is going to be very important for a momentum-based stage control character like Wolf. It looks like uh, Shigeru is kind of struggling. Oh, Ooh. trying to get the read, not gonna get it though. Barely, barely getting out of that hair situation. It looks like um, Chino right now is just throwing out aerials, trying to condition Shigura into getting something. Who the taunt after the forward throw, Chino? <laughs> oh, that oh, has to take. Gonna, oh, no, he's not, not gonna take it. No, not yet. An amazing DI out of Shigura in order to stay alive just a little bit longer. Not gonna get it. Just yet. throwing out the F tilt to just, beat out that forward smash. Chino throwing out a lot of smash attacks to try to end this game, but. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, that's basically this whole set. It's, by the time you want to commentate something, they just, they're already dead. <laughs> oh, that has been the story of my life through a lot of these commentary sets, but Chino is going to take it with another back there to close the set. You heard it here from Oscar. Watch the set. If you want improvement, watch the VOD. Exactly. If you're here watching this VOD, um, trans rights. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will. I can and will use my position here to say that. Go ahead. I don't For, care. 100%. Go <laughs> right ahead. Um, but yeah, these two players are two of the top players in the scene and in West Texas. Both incredibly good. You can watch all of the amazing strategies that they get and use throughout the set. Ooh, Royer Crom. What are we gonna see? Oh, here we go. What's he doing? What are they doing? Shigura right now. Thinking. What are they gonna do? Oh, and here comes the Crom. The Crom coming out from Shigura going into the next game, game three. Onto Hollow Bastion, which could be beneficial for both players. They can use that central platform to extend their combos. But unfortunately, they won't be able to get any really good kills off of that platform because it's not so close to the ledge where both of these players thrive in killing. Yeah, I, I was saying that he was on his I mean, phone. right now, I mean, we were kind of discussing it when Shigeru was playing against Thirsty and how Shigeru was probably going to struggle off stage against one of the best edge, edge guarders in this entire scene, but now. He doesn't have to worry about that too much. Wolf definitely has his ledge guarding options, but no counter to be afraid of, no, no just Airbnb aerial to throw out. And plus, um, Auto Radical uh, was an incredibly good projectile versus uh, Shigura, because if he didn't hold onto his double jump and got an Auto Radical, he was dead. And Wolf's uh, laser goes in a very straight line and doesn't really linger around for very long, unlike the other move, um, uh, explosive Flame, which could linger at ledge and really make it disadvantageous for Shigura. Definitely, right now, nice old... I, I believe that's a tech called a Tomahawk, so I've heard from a friend called Strider, and Shigura is going to take the first stock here. It looks like, uh, right now, all Shigura wants is to keep his momentum going as much as possible. That infinite supply may not may start becoming finite as, as long as Chino can siphon off enough from Shigura. Uppy on the ledge, getting all the way up to 41, 53%. 361, still going, 69, ooh, the power percent. As <laughs> the power seen, percent, I love that. It, it, it is the power percent, it is always the power percent, but he's going to lose it, unfortunately. unfortunately. Ah! Jinx, you owe me a Dr. Pepper. All right, fine, I'll get you one eventually. Um, continuing in the match, <laughs> Though, it looks like Shigeru is, is um, operating on 
more on patience and conditioning. Recognizing when Chino is going to jump up, when Chino is going to throw out an aerial, what options Chino is going to choose. So he's starting to become a little more patient in these sets to make sure that he can stay in it and get the kills. You can see him just hopping around, throwing out moves, and there's the chair into the stock. Let's see if he can continue this uh, this trend as the stage morphs into the really, really pretty back. I, I don't know what to call it. It reminds me of clockwork, I guess. Just for, for uh, 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 like cathedrals of the olden days. Yeah, just cathedral stained glass. Uh, we're admiring the stage too much when it comes to these commentary matches, but <laughs> don't pick this stage. Yeah, don't pick this. <laughs> we're we're gonna say pretty colors and not what a good nair. <laughs> what a good nair. But regardless, Shigura is throwing out a lot of good options. Here, just trying to throw out jabs in order to keep Chino at bay as Shigura does have a decent lead over Chino here in this game three. You can see that uh, Shigura constantly trying to keep Chino at the ledge and out of center stage where he will thrive. Oh, but the oh, fourth there, on the dash attack. Fourth on the dash attack. There is the tech chase that is so dangerous out of Wolf. Just if you get that forward throw, there's a lot you can do with it no matter what percent you're really at. And Chino doing a really good job of recognizing that with his character and just evening up the stops here where it matters most. Exactly. Uh, oh, getting the, getting the deep. We're going deep for it, but Chino keeping his double jump until the last second. It looks like he's trying to get a Jair going right now or some kind of strong hit. Oh, and back air? Oh, That's going to do it. 2-0. Oh, oh, raw back air is going to do it. It is now 2-1 in Shigura's favor. Shigura just one game away from winning this entire tournament. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see, are there what what stage are we going to for the last? Town and City? Town and City? Town and City. Going into possibly the final game of Shigura vs. Chino Grand Finals on to Town and City. Uh Shigura sticking with the Krom and uh Chino sticking with the wolf. Both of these characters revolve around making you feel like you have literally no option other than to eat the percent that they give you. So it's going to be really fascinating to see how they interact on this huge stage with lots of platforms to extend their reach. And keep in mind, we are once again on hazard on for this rule set in order to prepare for a heartbeat upcoming. So we have a, quite frankly, a very different town and city to deal with for both of these players. Exactly. We've got uh, moving platforms, we've got faster uh, platforms moving off stage. And oh, barely getting back onto that platform. Chino looking to keep him at the ledge and get some kind of option going, but not going to be able to get it. Throwing out the back air. Throwing out back air is with the short hop. Just... Ooh, Chino reading that uh, roll, trying to keep him on the ledge right now. Just trying to gather as much percent as he can and keep him on the ledge until he can get a read into a kill confirm. Wave dashing or wave landing onto the stage. Oh, trying to get the tech read, just barely short of getting it. Throwing him off stage again. Throwing out the up to get back onto the ledge safely. Nice roll, nice roll. Read out of Chino. It looks like Chino really wants this kill right now. You can see him trying to keep him at ledge. Good DI coming out from Shigura. Air dodging back to avoid having to deal with the hairy situation in his recovery. Oh, the chair? No, not quite. Over oh, the back air from Chino's going to take it. Back air from Chino will do a shot out of the cannon. You can, uh, you can see the Shigura getting a little bit unwound right now, trying to keep their head as level as possible. Shigura just hopping around, looking for that one last hit that they need to kill, not trying to go for any style or substance, just needs the kill. It really does just need the kill in order to balance out the set here. The ball is in his court, set-wise, 2-1, so it is very imperative in his mind in order to put this away as early as possible, as to avoid not going to a loser set. And right there, we saw, we got the back air, on Chi in order to even up the stock and 54% 54, 54 difference between these two players and characters means next to nothing. Oh, trying to get the down air, not gonna get it. Shigura wild and out on Chino. Shigura is back in an instant. Yeah, exactly. He's not letting anything get to him right now. He just took a deep breath, leveled his head, and he said, I'm gonna keep going and do what I do best. Oh no! Oh, but not gonna get the side B up not. onto the stage. Very unfortunate to have Shigura getting that SD, but very fortunate for Chino. Chino looks like he's really trying to use this momentum that he got. I'm trying to get the spike, Ooh, not gonna get it Chino. though. Chino! Exchanging uh, spike attempts right now from both players. Neither of them landing, really unfortunate. Un unfortunate, really? 
well, for, for, <laughs> for the clips. More than for the clips, for the player, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Ooh. going super deep to get that. A uh, deep forward air out of Shigeru is going to even up the stock here. And Shigeru right now a bit on the ropes and in Chino. Oh, is that backer going to do it? Oh, it's, barely going to do it. It will. How many matches? Take a... Take a drink every time you see Chino end a match with back air. <laughs> Is that esports safe? I said drink. It's, it, cheers. <laughs> I, it, it, could, apple juice. it could be apple, apple juice, juice, it could be water, it could be a lot of things. It could be grape juice too, I love grape juice. Cranberry juice, cranberry. all sorts of juices. Cranberry juice, it is November. <laughs> oh, I love, I love um, cranberry juice around November time. It gets cold, and you get that like that nice sweet uh, cranberry juice, and then it's like hits a little hard. What? <laughs> I like talking about. <laughs> I talk. Let me speak well, about it, my juice preferences. <laughs> look, it gets late. You talk about food, and I guess drinking now. Yeah, let's let's I'm, um. I'll take a I'll take a I'll take a, a cranberry juice. Actually, I got lemonade when I get home. Let's Ooh, get so back good. into this match here. We are game five in a grand finals here, two two against these two very talented players. It's one game for Shigeru, three games. Wait, three? No, four. Four games for Chino. Chino's really got to fight from the depths right now versus Shigeru. Although Shigeru, with all these up air juggles, is making it so very difficult for Chino to land and get his Wolf game going. Wolf, I almost made this. Almost made a classical musician joke. Shigeru holding on to his double jump until the very end, using his spacing to avoid that F tilt coming out from Wolf. Chino with the good. Chino trying to get. Um, Get anything going on Shigeru right now, but Shigeru recognizing all of Wolf's Oh, getting the read, but not gonna get the back air! And a forward smash is gonna take that stock. Chino at 89%, just one Jer away from death. Oh, not gonna get it again! I mean, he's really trying for these Jers. It's the, he's, it's the best kill confirm he has. There he goes again, <laughs> barely living. I can hear Chino complaining about Jers from the commentary room. Yeah, that's alright. What can you really do about it? I mean, he can't complain too much, he lived! Yeah, he lived, exactly. Uh, forward tilt's not gonna take it just yet. Really good DI coming from Chino. Not gonna get the uh, forward air, not gonna get the spike from Chino. No, not yet. And right now, Chino just taking advantage of as much as he can of having this max rage first stock in order to put Shigura as as best of odds as he can. Oh, but the up air, the landing up air is gonna take that stock. 86% on Shigura. This is just one good kill confirm away from death right now. It is, but it's not going to get a player like Shigeru down one bit. <laughs> nice. up, up B out of shield right now is going to take an e a nice tasty 53% on him uh, right now. It looks like Chino right now is just kind of struggling to get back down. <laughs> uh, Alright, back to the match. <laughs> so I was showing, a, showing memes right now. Travis Scott Burger. <laughs> Travis Scott Burger. It's fine, we're getting back oh, to Oh, back air is going to take the stock. Chino landing the trademark <laughs> back air out of Wolf in order to take Shigeru's second stock away from him. Now one, just one stock away from resetting oh, the grand finals. But the Jer is going to even up the stock. We are now... One stock each, zero zero. This is it. This is really this for Shigeru. This is incredibly close for him. He really wants to win this right now and make sure they doesn't have to play even more games against Chino, who can slowly whittle away on Shigeru's mental uh, mental abilities in this set. Chino missing the punish out of the up B. Really unfortunate for him. He really needed that punish. You can see the, uh, the back air start up, but Shigeru's forward air got uh, got rid of it. Absolutely, very good spacing out of Shigeru in order to avoid that. We've seen how many stocks and games Chino's been able to put away with back air, even in this set alone. You can see that Sh uh, Shigeru himself is Ooh. trying to throw out as many back airs as possible. Oh, trying oh, to get the tech read, but not going to get it! Trying to get a lot of tech reads out of Wolf and his grabs and throws. Very, very dangerous to have a Wolf at... Oh no, is that FTL going to do it? Yeah. We're going to see a bracket reset. It will. We will see a bracket reset from Chino. Very impressive, very unfortunate for Chino. For Shigeru, puts it in question. Having to play more games, having to play more against Chino, who definitely has the momentum right now, but... Exactly. You know, Ch Shigeru, a very talented player in his own right, D goes without saying. There's a sponsor? <laughs> We're not sponsored. Although, are we? God, I wish we were. Are we sponsored by Jairs? Sponsored by Jairs. Jairs, your kill confirmed for there, the average Chrome player. There's a there is <laughs> something out there called Jairs, whether it be spelled. You can look it up, honestly. Many? I've got to send. I'm uh, texting someone something. Stop 
Battle. Hey, we're gonna see Chino's hero coming out. No, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> we're gonna see Chino's <laughs> wolf coming out yet again. And we're going to see. All right, wolf players. I don't play wolf no, much anymore. No, both players, not wolf players. Oh, wolf players, both players. Yes, we maintain yes, a partiality. More importantly, go both players. Yes, go both players. Uh, Sh Shigra immediately rushing Chino in the opening bouts to get a side B confirmed with Chino, but Chino immediately going to even it up with a string of aerial walls. Aerial options. Aerial walls. Aerial walls. <laughs> uh, looks like Shigura is right now is trying to get some juggles in on Chino just to make sure that he can get enough percent to get a Jared kill confirmed, but Chino not going to make it easy throwing out the short hop nares that are so important or they're so important to a, a wolf's gameplay. Oh, trying to get the read uh, up throw, keeping him in the air. Not giving him a lot of options other than air dodge to throw out an attack, and Shigura is prepared for both. Shigura really wants to get back and get this, um, get these, get the set out of the way. He wants to make sure that he can keep his momentum going. And the Jared, the legend, is going to take it at 87. That is amazing. Just really taking advantage of that rage to put away Chino stock very, very early. Exactly. Oh, Shigura already getting the platform reads on Chino. Looks like uh, Chino is going to be really struggling to um, get get out of these uh, these reads. Oh, here he comes again, throwing out the, the forward tilt. Oh, not going to get the tech read that time, but Shigura throwing out aerials, trying to keep at the ledge, trying to get the read again with the F smash. Oh, you can see that Chino is air dodging up on the platform to avoid a hairy situation with Prom. You can see him throwing out jabs at the ledge, trying to get that last option in to get the Jerry in at the ledge again. Oh, is that going to be it? That's going to be it. 1.3, 3, it. 3 to 1. 3 to 1, Shigura is still on his first stop, just really... Really not giving Chino an inch in this game one grand finals reset. Exactly, none whatsoever. Uh, Shigura is really, really trying to rush down and just throw, show the importance of him being all up in your face. But Chino, not going to be a slouch about it, throwing Def out the up smash. Definitely not. It's taking advantage of that up smash who may not be the strongest in the game, but when you're when your opponent's that high percent, it's just one of the best options to throw out with just how much it covers. Yeah, exactly. Chino recognizing that. Exactly. It's really important that um, that Chino keep it head level and just stick to it. Stick to everything. Stick to the wolf basics. Know that you can get easy kill confirms out of certain things. Not try and go for anything fancy or any style. Just to make sure that he can still stay in this. Trying to get the up smash spot dodge out of Chino is going to make him avoid that. It looks like Chino is throwing out uh, throwing out moves. Really desperately trying to get this kill. Back air is not going to do it. Air dodging back to the ledge out of that laser. Back throw is not going to do it quite yet. No. Shigura at the ledge. Ooh, catching Chino in that up the ledge. But Chino oh, going to get an up smash to put that stop away. We are even. But Chino right now at about 120%. Easily put away with a Jair with... Oh, in the F tilt. <laughs> with that. Game one goes to Shigura. Game one does go to Shigura. All right, going into game two of the Grand Finals reset. Uh, on to Town City with Hazards on. Here we go. It looks like uh, Shigura wanting to, or Chino is going to want to try and stay as grounded as possible with this wolf versus Shigura, who loves to be super air happy. Granted, he can get good combos on the ground, but if he can stay grounded and make sure to shield his landing aerials, all he's got to do is get an advantage and let Shigura be unsafe around him. Absolutely. Right now, we're going to be seeing a lot of that. Chino wins in the advantage of his ground combos. Are there new balloon colors? I suppose there are. Maybe I'm just tripping because this is one of the first times I've ever seen Town City in bracket with hazards on. I I think um we're, this is just a practice for the the heartbeat monthly that's coming up in where two weeks in Waco. Okay, there's a, a monthly coming up in two weeks in Waco. And we're trying to get a Lubbock invasion. Jair's gonna take the first stock though. The Jair will do it. And she, yeah, we're seeing really both players taking advantage of their options in the air and on the ground. Shigura still pretty shy of a kill right now as is, but good gonna, parry. Gonna get the good parry into an up the out of shield. 
It looks like uh, Gino knows to DI as far away and out of these Chrom combos to make sure that he doesn't get caught in any more of them. Mixing up his DI as well, just so that Shigura cannot stay in. DIing out as much as possible, but at the same time recognizing uh, he's gonna get conditioned. So mixing it up so Shigura cannot pop properly read him. Looks like Shigura's trying to throw get another Jer, and that's gonna do it! A Jer at ledge again! 3 to 1, exactly like we saw in the first game. Oh, but the board though is going to take it. Shigura finally dying. Shigura finally dying pretty immediately. It's going to be important for Chino if he wants to run this game back in. We've seen him do it before. It looks like Shigura is going to struggle a little bit, especially if Chino plays super grounded. You can see Chino trying not to jump around a lot and uh, making sure that when he does jump, he auto cancels his aerials to get back on the ground as safely as possible. Definitely. We're seeing a lot of those options out of here. Chino taking advantage of just seeing how Shigura is going to approach. Approaching with Bolt's Grab, one of the fastest in the game. He's the fastest in the game. Ooh, good, uh, good roll read from uh, Gino. Throwing out the back here to get him at ledge again. Throwing out jabs at ledge. The Shigura Classic trying to get that Jer at ledge. Really important. Not going to get the read. Ooh, not going to get the read, but Chino's going to throw right back with an F smash of zone. Good punish coming out from Chino. Not going to get the kill dash attack. Not going to get the tech either. Saving his double jump until the very end. Oh, <laughs> oh a sour spot side B could still very well kill on a stage like this. It does not know the size of town and city. Forward throw getting him off the stage. Not going to get the forward tilt. You can see him trying to get that one unsafe option that Chino throws out, but the back air is going to take it. Chino at 127. 127, another very eerily similar situation to what we saw in game one. Can Shigura put this away? Although it's very, it's very vital to know that Chino can easily take this back with Wolf. Wolf combos with Rage can rack up percent like nobody's business, and Wolf with Rage can get a kill like nobody's business. Oh, Wolf with Rage is very dangerous, Ooh, but we're not even going to see gonna that. Do we're going to get an up tilt to have Shigura take game two. I am slow today, but All right. can I be heard? I cannot see the mic output. Um, I think uh, we can be heard. Yeah, we can be heard. Yeah, I know the... Um, I know we boosted the mic. Which, we boosted the game. Thank, thank you for that. I have had some, I have had some trouble. Major shout outs to our lovely stream runner, uh, Bloom, for making sure that uh, our voices can be heard. Yes. I agree, Th Bloom. Thank I you. I completely agree. <laughs> thank you, stream runner. Here we go. Uh, going back into this, uh, are we going back to the same place? We are yep. going back to Town and City for this grand final reset. A very interesting choice out of both players. There's a lot of room for them to play around, but maybe it's the safer option because if you go to something with a smaller blast zone, it can be a high risk, high reward for both characters. Exactly. If you go with the tiny little blast zone, then uh, both of them will get kill confirmed on the other. Uh, but keeping it big and large for lots of room to play around for Chino, it's really good for him to make sure that he won't get killed early. Absolutely. Right now, Chino taking a bit of an early lead here percent-wise. And just Wolf can play at his own pace just at any percent. It's so dangerous to see this out of Chino and his Wolf. Shigeru really recognizing that, trying to play a little more patiently, waiting to throw out his aerials when he can while Chino fishes for the first kill. He's gonna miss two chairs in a row out of Shigura. And the third one will do it. That's, I mean, uh, we, what we can see there uh, from Shigura is that the first jab missed, the second jab missed, but by the time it got to the third one, it was so stale that at that point it would have connected no matter what. Uh, good awareness from Shigura just throwing out jabs until they were stale enough to, to hit. Oh, good parry from Shino, making sure to avoid that damage. Yes, good job out of him, especially now. Shigura's just going to focus right now on racking up as much damage as he can. Maybe could get a kill. Uh, in chat, why do we do hazards on? We are conditioning ourselves for the monthly coming up in Waco in two weeks to make sure that um, we play on their rule set, which is Heartbeat's rule set, and they have hazards on. So it's good practice to make sure that we can play with or without hazards on, no matter what tournament we face. Definitely, and on a stage like this, it is going to be especially important. Town and City, very different when it comes to the dynamics of hazards on and hazards off. But back to the game, Chino already on his last lifeline, last stock. Shigura, 159%, 174%. We're seeing very similar games here. Exactly, all these games are so incredibly similar. We see uh, Shigura get into a three stock lead at very high percent, Chino getting the kill, and then getting it all the way to the last stock situation. Will Chino be able to break this curse and get into the game and continue in this tournament? Or will Shigura continue the trend and get this tournament taken for their very own? 
we will see here right now Chino just trying to play a little safer here, just sticking to his ground options, trying to get that back air in order to secure an early kill off of Shigura, but he's going to miss get punished for it. It looks like uh, Chino really wants to keep Shigura at ledge. Back air is going to get him out on an unsafe option of oh. recovering high. Oh goodness, he is one kill. Ooh, Not is that going to do it? That's going to do it. That Shigura is going to do it. Winning the the weekly Old Smash Road number 38 round of applause for Shigura winning in the bracket reset 3-0. My name is Trademark. I have been one of your commentators for the night. Stairwell, give us a sign off. I am Stairwell. I have been one of your commentators for the night and through this grand finals reset. I will see you next time in Bun Sway, my fellow Lubbock fans. Stay smashing and have a good time. Good night, everybody.